An Introduction to Astrology By William Lilly Preface After a lapse of 205 years since the first publication, in 1647, of Lilly's Introduction to Astrology, there would be no necessity for an apology for its reappearance, were it not for the prevailing fashion of the day. Which is to rail at and vituperate that science, and all who dare to say a word, not in its favor, but in favor of examining into its merits, with a view to ascertain what were the grounds on which our honest ancestors believed. And strictly followed, that which we conceive only fit for ridicule. As I have long outlived the days when I, like many others, thought myself at liberty to laugh at, and condemn, what I did not understand. The world will forgive me if I be bold enough to advise those who value truth, to spend a few days, and but a few days will be necessary, in examining the principles laid down in this work, and applying them to their own individual cases. Before they join the herd of learned and unlearned in pledging their words to a false assertion, viz. That astrology is an unfounded science. If any man will take the trouble to examine for himself, and should find that the prejudices of his education against the science of foreseeing the future, and many other matters which it teaches, are in reality well founded. And that it has no claims to truth, then will he have the proud satisfaction of knowing, that his opinions on a matter of some consequence are based on experiment, and are the result of his own conviction, not of another person's assertion. On the other hand, if he find truth flash with lightning force upon his mind, and convince him that astrology, notwithstanding prejudice and abuse, is founded in nature, and is indeed a noble science. Given by a benevolent creator to enlighten man in his wanderings, and enable him to shun the vice and folly which his passions throw in his path. Then will he, if a spark of piety exist within his breast, offer thanks to that Creator for the blessing he has discovered. In either case, he must admit that I do him a service in putting forth this plain and simple means of discovering the truth. This is, the age of inquiry, and yet prejudice continues to press down her leaden foot upon the neck of examination in this matter. I can only attribute the pitiable fact to the circumstance of there being no recent publications on those parts of astrology which are the most easily acquired. The art of nativities requires many years of patient experimenting before it can be well understood, and practiced with certainty and satisfaction. The art of atmospherical astrology, and also that of mundane astrology, alike demand much time to penetrate their arcana, and a good education to follow their practice. Hence we may account for their comparatively confined study, few have either the abilities or the opportunity to wrestle with their difficulties. But horary astrology, the chief subject in this work, may be speedily learned by any person of even moderate abilities, and may, as far as regards its elementary difficulties, be mastered in a few days' study. It may be well understood, and reduced to constant practice in less than a quarter of a year, and no one will find himself at a loss for occasions to test its reality or its utility. For his own avocations, and the affairs of his friends, will offer these almost daily. If a proposition of any nature be made to any individual, about the result of which he is anxious, and therefore uncertain whether to accede to it or not, let him but note the hour and minute when it was first made. And erect a figure of the heavens, as herein taught, and his doubts will be instantly resolved. He may thus, in five minutes, learn infallibly whether the affair will succeed or not, and, consequently, whether it is prudent to adopt the offer made or not. If he examine the sign on the first house of the figure, the planet therein, or the planet ruling the sign, will exactly describe the party making the offer, both in person and character. And this may at once convince the inquirer for truth of the reality of the principles of the science. Moreover, the descending sign, and will describe his own person and character, a farther proof of the truth of the science, if he require it. Here, then, is a ready test of the truth of astrology. Will its adversaries dare to make its application? It would, methinks, be better than relaxing the broad muscles, which ever denote ignorance and surprise, the feelings which, combined are the undoubted source of laughter, the only argument of the idiot, the ready resource of the ignorant. In editing this work, my chief object has been to render it useful to the student in astrology and so, by forwarding the science, to promote the general interests of humanity.
With this view I have rewritten those parts of the work which modern discoveries in astronomy and astrology have rendered obsolete. Tables for calculating nativities and a grammar of astrology are adjoined, and every ingredient of the science given which the student is likely to require. As regards the deviations I have made from the rules of the author, they are few, and founded on much experience. I have omitted his chapters on nativities, as in that part of the science he was less perfect than in any other. The reason being that he relied on essential dignities, which are, by my experience, of little, if any, avail. The rules for calculating arcs of direction will be found in the grammar. In conclusion, I have no desire to offend any class of men by putting forth this work, I do not know whether I should not respect even prejudice, for the sake of peace. Were it not that I cannot conscientiously consent to abandon truth in the effort. I am callous to the puny efforts of critics who may desire to pour on me the waters of vituperation or ridicule, having already passed through a flood. After many years' experience, I have found the laws of astrology unfailing. And as I can discover no prohibition of its practice in the Word of God, I am prepared to defend it against all the foolish attacks of those who falsely declare that it upholds fatality. Or is opposed to the providence or the revelation of the Deity. And I am contented, with God's blessing, to give up the ghost in the firm persuasion, that, in maintaining what I believe is the truth in this respect, I shall meet, hereafter, through the goodness of God and the merits of my Saviour. With a merciful judgment. I am, reader, your devoted friend and well-wisher in all science which may honour trod and benefit mankind. Sadkiel. How do you find this book? Any thoughts about the book or the author? Any suggestion for improvement? Please take a moment to share your thoughts in a comment. If you like it, share it with your friends who might enjoy it as well. Subscribe to keep in touch. Visit completeaudiobooks.com for more quality content. Life of William Lilly I am offering an abstract of the most valuable of this clever astrologer's works to the notice of the public, I consider myself called upon to make some mention of his personal history. And it fortunately happens that this is not made up of imaginary ideas, founded on a few known facts, and a multiplicity of suppositions, for what we know of this man of extraordinary talent rests on the best evidence. He undertook, in his sixty-sixth year, to write a history of his own life to his worthy friend, Elias Ashmole, E.S.Q., afterwards Sir Elias Ashmole, the founder of the celebrated museum which bears his name. Mr. Ashmole made marginal notes therein, which testify his high opinion of our author, and, fortunately for the cause of astrology, this gentleman verified the correctness of the figures of heaven, which are given in the subsequent pages. For we find the following note at the foot of page 131 I devised the forms and fashions of the several schemes, e, a. This note was made after these observations of Lily. The desire I had to benefit posterity in my country, at last overcame all difficulties, so that what I could not do in one year, I perfected early the next year, 1647, and then in that year, viz. 1647, I finished the third book of Nativities. During the composing whereof, for seven whole weeks, I was shut up of the plague, burying in that time two maid servants thereof, yet, towards November that year, the introduction, called by the name of Christian astrology, was made public. The fact of this work having been chiefly composed under such awful circumstances, with a dreadful death immediately before his eyes, with the pestilence ravaging his own household, might, with unprejudiced men have been taken as a proof that the writer was sincere in what he wrote, and really believed in the truth of that which he taught to others as truth under the solemn appeal to Almighty God, which is so beautifully worded in his introductory epistle. Modern critics, however, can see no force in this argument, but unhesitatingly condemn William Lilly as an accomplished impostor and a knavish fortune-teller. One such, reader, is the force of prejudice. It will not allow men to examine before they condemn, for if it did, then would the literary world speedily acknowledge the reality of those doctrines which our author has so ably set forth in the following pages. William Lilly was born of an honest yeoman family, in the town of Diceworth, seven miles south of the town of Derby, on the first day of May, 1602. 
At eleven years old he was sent to Ashby de la Zook, to be instructed by one Mr. John Brindley. Here he says he learned the following authors, viz., Sententiae Purils, Cato, Corderius, Aesop's Fables, Tully's Offices, Ovid de Tristibus, lastly, Virgil, then Horace, as also Camden's Greek Grammar, Theognis, and Homer's Iliads. And entered Udall's Hebrew Grammar. In the eighteenth year of his age his master was enforced from keeping school, being persecuted by the bishop's officers, and our author was enforced to leave school. He then kept school himself for one quarter of a year. On Monday, April 3, 1620, he left Diceworth and came to London, where he was compelled to accept the humble situation of a footboy, his father being then in Leicester jail for debt and, of course, incapable of doing much for his son. He had only seven shillings and sixpence left when he arrived at London, having footed it all along with the carrier. In 1624 his mistress died, having given him five pounds in old gold. After which he lived, most comfortably, his master having a great affection for him. In 1626 his master married again, having first settled on our author twenty pounds a year, which he enjoyed all through life. In October, 1627, he was made free of the Salter's company. And on the eighth day of September, 1627, married his master's widow, this same lady, and they lived very lovingly until her death, October, 1633. In the year 1632 he began to study astrology, being instructed in the rudiments by one Evans, a Welshman, of indifferent abilities. Lily tells us that he applied himself to these interesting studies many times, twelve, or fifteen, or eighteen hours, day and night, adding, I was curious to discover whether there was any verity in the art or not. By this his first wife he acquired a fortune of, very near to one thousand pounds. In the year 1634 he purchased the moiety of thirteen houses in the Strand, for which he gave five hundred and thirty pounds. The figure of the heavens, erected on this occasion, will be found in the following pages. November the 18th, 1634, he married again, and had five hundred pound portion with that wife. She was of the nature of Mars, and he lived not very lovingly with her, as seems by his observations at her death. He appears to have now practiced horary astrology with success, and to have instructed numerous individuals in the art. Among others he taught John Humphreys, in the year 1640, for which service he received forty pounds. He also wrote, in the year 1639, a treatise on the eclipse of the sun, May 22d, 1639. And appears, about that period, to have turned his attention much to mundane astrology. He says, too, I did carefully, in 1642 and 1643, take notice of every grand action which happened betwixt king and parliament. And did first then incline to believe, that, as all sublunary affairs did depend upon superior causes, so there was a possibility of discovering them by the configurations of the superior bodies. In which way making some essays in those two years, I found encouragement to proceed further, which I did, I perused the writings of the ancients, but therein they were silent, or gave no satisfaction. At last, I framed unto myself that method which then and since I follow, which I hope, in time, may be more perfected by a more penetrating person than myself. He appears to have dabbled a little in magic also, but he soon grew weary of such employment, and burned his books. Lily's better sense led him to perceive which of these studies was worthy of an honest and intelligent man's pursuit, and which not. About April, 1644, he first published Merlinus Anglicus Jr. This work contained some of his most remarkable predictions, and was continued for many years. It attracted much attention, and was the means of adding greatly to the fame of our author as an astrologer. In that year he printed the White King's Prophecy, of which were sold, in three days, 1800, and some other works of like nature, the prophetical Merlin, and. In 1645 he was twice had before a committee of the Parliament, for some observations in his starry messenger, but he escaped, partly by means of his numerous friends, and partly by his own ingenuity. In 1647, when he published the present work, he was introduced to General Fairfax, who paid him and his art some compliments. 
In this year he was consulted by King Charles I, as to a safe place to conceal his royal person. But the king, unfortunately for himself, neglected Lily's advice, and was accordingly ruined. Again, in 1648, the king consulted Lily. But though he promised to take the astrologer's advice, and come up to London with the commissioners, he did not, however, keep his word, and again lost a good opportunity of escaping from his evil destiny. In this year, says Lily, for very great considerations, the Council of State gave me in money fifty pounds, and a pension of one hundred pounds per annum, which for two years I received, but no more. In January 1649 he was present at the trial of King Charles, who spoke, says he, excellently well. In 1651 he published Monarchy or No Monarchy, which contains several hieroglyphics. Among others those of the Great Plague and Fire of London, which the reader will find a copy of in this work. These celebrated predictions were made by means of the motions of the fixed stars, as is evident by the words of Lily. Who says, the asterisms and signs and constellations give greatest light thereunto. The bull's north horn, a star which, Ptolemy says, is, like Mars, was, in the year 1666, when the fire occurred, in Gemini 17 degrees 54, which is the exact ascendant of London. It was, no doubt, by this means Lily judged the city would suffer by fire. For in his almanac for 1666 he states, that the nineteenth degree of Gemini is London's horoscope. Our author was not very nice in his calculations. And it may be observed, that though it may be called the nineteenth degree, being within six minutes of it, yet, in reality, Gemini seventeen degrees fifty-four foot is the true ascendant of London. It was that which ascended at the moment of driving the first pile of the new London Bridge. The longitude of the bull's north horn, January 1, 1834. Gemini 20 degrees 15 foot. Longitude of London's Ascendant. Gemini 1754. Difference. 221. This difference of 2 degrees 21 foot is equal to 8,460 seconds of longitude, which divided by 51 third inch, the rate at which the fixed stars proceed yearly, gives 168. From the year. 1834. Take away. 168. 1666. It gives the year when that evil star was crossing the ascending sign of London. And as it is of the fiery nature of Mars, we need not be surprised that it produced such terrific results. The celebrated Nostradamus had predicted the same event in that year, about 111 years previously, as follows. Le sang du just à Londres faire faute. Brussels par fou, de vingt et trois, les six. The blood of the just, which has peen spilt in London, requires it to be burned with fire in sixty-six. He states that he made this prediction by astronomical affections. In 1651 Lilly was again had before the Parliament, on a C count of his predictions, and was thirteen days in the custody of the sergeant-at-arms. But the prediction which gave offence, viz. That the, Parliament stood upon a tottering foundation, and that the commonalty and soldiery would join together against them, was amply fulfilled by the members being turned out of doors by Oliver Cromwell. In February, 1654, his second wife died, and in October following he married a third, signified, in his nativity, by Jupiter in Libra, and, says he, she is so totally in her conditions. To my great comfort. In 1655 he was indicted at Hicks's Hall by a half-witted young woman. The cause of the indictment was, that he had given judgment upon stolen goods, and received two shillings and sixpence, contrary to an act made in King James's time. I owned, says he, the taking of half a crown for my judgment of the theft, but said, that I gave no other judgment but that the goods would not be recovered, being that was all which was required of me. I spoke for myself, and introduced my own introduction into court, saying, that I had some years before emitted that book for the benefit of this and other nations. That it was allowed by authority, and had found good acceptance in both universities, that the study of astrology was lawful, and not contradicted by any scripture. 
that I neither had, or ever did, use any charms, sorceries, or enchantments, related in the bill of indictment, and the jury, who went not from the bar, brought in, no true bill. In 1666 happened, says our author, that miraculous conflagration in the city of London, whereby, in four days, the most part thereof was consumed by fire. He then gives an account of his being brought before the House of Commons by the following summons. Monday, October 22, 1666. At the committee appointed to inquire after the causes of the late fires. Ordered. That Mr. Lily do attend this committee on Friday next, being the 25th of October, 1666, at two of the clock in the afternoon, in the Speaker's chamber, to answer such questions as shall be then and there asked him. Robert Brooke. In remarking on the circumstance, he says, I conceive there was never more civility used unto any than unto myself, and you know there was no small number of Parliament men appeared, when they heard I was to be there. Sir Robert Brooke spoke to this purpose. Mr. Lilly, this committee thought fit to summon you to appear before them this day, to know, if you can say anything as to the cause of the late fire, or whether there might be any design therein. You are called the rather hither, because, in a book of yours long since printed, you hinted some such thing by one of your hieroglyphics. Unto which I replied. May it please your honours. After the beheading of the late king, considering that in the three subsequent years the Parliament acted nothing which concerned the settlement of the nation's peace. And seeing the generality of the people dissatisfied, the citizens of London discontented, the soldiery prone to mutiny, I was desirous, according to the best knowledge God had given me, to make inquiry by the art I studied, what might. From that time, happen unto the Parliament and nation in general. At last, having satisfied myself as well as I could, and perfected my judgment therein, I thought it most convenient to signify my intentions and conceptions thereof in forms, shapes, types, hieroglyphics, and without any commentary, that so my judgment might be concealed from the vulgar, and made manifest only unto the wise, I herein imitating the examples of many wise philosophers who had done the like. Having found, sir, that the city of London should be sadly afflicted with a great plague, and not long after with an exorbitant fire, I frame these two hieroglyphics, as represented in the book, which, in effect, have proved very true. Did you foresee the year? said one. L. did not, said I, or was desirous, of that I made no scrutiny. I proceeded, now, sir, whether there was any design of burning the city, or any employed to that purpose, I must deal ingenuously with you. That, since the fire, I have taken much pains in the search thereof, but cannot, or could not, give myself any the least satisfaction therein. I conclude that it was the finger of God only, but what instruments he used thereunto I am ignorant. The committee seemed well pleased with what I spoke, and dismissed me with great civility. After this, nothing very remarkable happened to our author. He left London, having acquired an independence, and settled at Hersham, in the year of the Great Plague, 1665. He then applied himself diligently to the study of physic, and on the October 11, 1670, he received a license to practice as a physician. He continued to practice with much success, no doubt by applying his astrological science thereto. And he gave his advice and prescriptions freely, without money. His skill and his charity gained him extraordinary credit and estimation. He continued generally in good health till August, 1674. But his health and his eyesight remained very weak afterwards. He still continued to write his monthly observations and astrological judgments, though latterly by aid of an amanuensis, Mr. Henry Colley, who succeeded him as an astrologer, even until the year 1682. In the beginning of 1681 he was seized with a flux, which he recovered from, but then became totally blind. The 30th of May of that year he was seized with a dead palsy. And, after some days of severe suffering, he died about three o'clock on the morning of the 9th of June, 1681, without any shoe of trouble or pangs. He was buried in the chancel of Walton Church, his friend, Sir Elias Ashmole, assisting at the laying him in his grave, 
which was, on the left side of the communion table. A black marble stone was afterwards placed thereon by Inn's friend. With the following inscription. Ne oblivion contariterena. Gulielmi lilii. Astrologi peritissimi. Ca fatis sesit. Quinto idus junii anno Christo Juliano. MDCLXXXI. Hoc ili posuit amoris monumentum. Elias Ashmole. Armiger. An epistle to the student in astrology. My friend, whoever thou art, that with so much ease shalt receive the benefit of my hard studies, and doest intend to proceed in this heavenly knowledge of the stars. In the first place, consider and admire thy Creator, be thankful, unto Him, and be humble, and let no natural knowledge, how profound or transcendent soever it be, elate thy mind to neglect that divine providence. By whose all-seeing order and appointment all things heavenly and earthly have their constant motion, the more thy knowledge is enlarged, the more do thou magnify the power and wisdom of Almighty God, strive to preserve thyself in His favour. For the more holy thou art, and more near to God, the purer judgment thou shalt give. Beware of pride and self-conceit, remember how that long ago no irrational creature thirst offend man the macrocosm, but did faithfully serve and obey him. So long as he was master of his own reason and passions, or until he subjected his will to the unreasonable part. But, alas! When iniquity abounded, and man gave the reins to his own affection, and deserted reason, then every beast, creature, and outward harmful thing, became rebellious to his command. Stand fast, O man, to thy God, then consider thy own nobleness. How all created things, both present and to come, were for thy sake created, nay, for thy sake God became man, thou art that creature, who, being conversant with Christ, livest and reignest above the heavens, and sits above all power and authority. How many preeminences, privileges, advantages, hath God bestowed on thee, thou rangest above the heavens by contemplation, conceivest the motion and magnitude of the stars, thou talkest with angels, yea. With God himself, thou hast all creatures within thy dominion, and keepest the devils in subjection. Do not, then, for shame deface thy nature, or make thyself unworthy of such gifts, or deprive thyself of that great power, glory, and blessedness, God hath allotted thee. By casting from thee his favour for possession of a few imperfect pleasures. Having considered thy God, and what thyself art, during thy being God's servant, now receive instruction how in thy practice I would have thee carry thyself. As thou daily conversest with the heavens, so instruct and form thy mind according to the image of divinity, learn all the ornaments of virtue, be sufficiently instructed therein, be humane, courteous, familiar to all. Easy of excess, afflict not the miserable with terror of a harsh judgment. Direct such to call on God to divert his judgments impending over them, be civil, sober, covet not an estate. Give freely to the poor, both money and judgment, let no worldly wealth procure an erroneous judgment from thee, or such as may dishonour the art. Be sparing in delivering judgment against the commonwealth thou livest in. Avoid law and controversy, in thy study be totus in illus, that thou mayest be singulus in arte. Be not extravagant, or desirous to learn every science, be not aliquid in omnibus, be faithful, tenacious, betray no one's secrets. Instruct all men to live well, be a good example thyself, love thy own native country, be not dismayed if ill spoken of, conscientia mil testes. God suffers no sin unpunished, no lie unrevenged. Pray for the nobility, honour the gentry and yeomanry of England, stand firme to the commands of this Parliament. Have a reverent opinion of our worthy lawyers, for without their learned pains, and the mutual assistance of some true spirited gentlemen, we might yet be made slaves, but we will not, we now see light as well as many of the clergy. Pray, if it stand with God's will, that monarchy in this kingdom may continue, his majesty and posterity reign, forget not the Scottish nation, their mutual assistance in our necessity, their honourable departure. God preserve the illustrious Fairfax, and his whole army, and let the famous city of London be ever blessed, and all her worthy citizens. Point 3. William Lilly
Chapter 1 There are in the heavens several bodies which appear to shed their light directly on this earth. And also some others which, having no light of themselves, serve to reflect that of the sun, and thereby become visible to our organs of sight. The former are termed fixed stars, because they appear to retain the same situation, or to be fixed in the same place, but the latter, being observed to wander, are termed planets. The number and distance of the former are so extensive, that I shall take no further notice of them here, than to observe, that they are not much used in that portion of astrology which is denominated horary. And that those persons who desire to make use of them in nativities, will find their right ascensions and declinations given with great accuracy in the nautical almanac for each year. In the appendix to this work, I shall give rules, to ascertain their latitude and longitude by, trigonometry, for the benefit of such persons as may be curious to make experiments as to their influence. Though I do not, in general, pay much attention to them when judging a nativity. Of the planets. These are Herschel, Saturn, Jupiter, male sign Mars. Sol, the Sun, for female sign Venus, Mercury, and Luna, Moon. These characters have been always in use, and may, with the exception of, be traced to the remotest antiquity, and their origin found among the hieroglyphics of Egypt. But as the object of this work is practical utility, no more need be said on the subject. The Signs of the Zodiac They are twelve, each containing thirty degrees, thus making three hundred and sixty degrees, into which every great circle is divided. The first six are Northern Signs Aries Aries, Taurus Taurus, Gemini Gemini, Cancer Cancer, Leo Leo, Virgo Virgo. Southern Signs Libra Libra, Scorpio Scorpio, Sagittarius Sagittary, Capricorn Capricorn, Aquarius Aquarius, Pisces Pisces. The first sign, Aries, commences the zodiac, its beginning being that spot in the heavens where the sun is when crossing the equator in spring. And the latter sign, Pisces, finishes the circle of the zodiac, the latter end of it being that spot in the heavens where the sun is when he has gone his round, and is again about to enter Aries. By referring to the annex diagram, the student will perceive, that when the sun enters Aries, about the 21st of March, he proceeds northward, and increases in declination until he reaches the Tropic of Cancer Cancer, about the 21st of June. When he speedily begins to return to the south. And when he reaches Libra, he again crosses the equator, about the 23d of September, where, having no declination, he causes equal day and night all over the world. He then declines away to the south. Shortening our days in the northern hemisphere, until he reaches the southern tropic Capricorn, Capricorn. At length he returns towards the equator, and crosses it by entering the sign Aries, about the 21st of March, where again he has no declination, and gives equal days and nights. Diagram of the Sun's Motion in the Zodiac Explanation The space between the two outer circles may be considered as the line of the Sun's motion, and then the sign opposite the name of each month will shew where the Sun is about the 21st of each month. The globe in the center may be taken for the Earth, the northern parts of which receive the greater portion of the Sun's light in summer, and the southern parts in winter. These signs are divided into Northern signs Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo. Southern signs Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces. Tropical signs Cancer, and Capricorn. Equinoctial signs Aries, and Libra. Double-bodied signs Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius, Pisces. They are again divided into Movable Aries, Cancer, Libra, Capricorn. Common Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius. Pisces. Fixed Taurus, Leo, 6, Aquarius. Also into. Fiery Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Earthy Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Airy Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Watery Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. The student must become well acquainted with the above particulars, but especially so with the northern and southern signs, the former being opposite to the latter. 
By attending to this, he will readily come to understand the figure of the heavens, and the relative situations of the planets. NB. The movable, common, and fixed signs are always in square aspect to each other, three signs apart. And the fiery, earthy, airy, and watery signs are always in trine aspect to each other, four signs apart. The dragon's head and tail. The moon's north node is known by the character, termed the dragon's head. And her south node by this, termed the dragon's tail. The former of these in horror questions denotes good, and is considered of the character of. And increases the good qualities of a benefic, with which it may be found. And diminishes the evil of a malefic planet. The latter is of the nature of, and does the reverse. In nativities these characters have no avail, and are not to be considered, except with regard to the moon, who is found to produce good or evil when she reaches them by direction. 5. The part of fortune. This is that spot in the heavens which is equally distant from the degree ascending that the moon is from the sun. It is found by the following rule. To find the, circle plus, part of fortune in a nativity. Add 90 degrees to the right ascension of the meridian, and it will give the oblique ascension of the ascendant. From the oblique ascension of the ascendant subtract the oblique ascension of the sun, having first added 360 degrees to the former, if necessary. To the remainder add the right ascension of the moon, the sun will be the right ascension of circle plus. The circle plus is always under the horizon before the full moon, and above the horizon after the full moon. Having found its right ascension, take it from that of the meridian above or below the earth, according as it may be situated. Or, take that of the meridian from it, and the sum or difference will shew the distance of circle plus from the cusp of the tenth or fourth house. Example. A, R, of midheaven, 221 degrees 5. Add thereto, 90 zero. Oblique ASC. Of the ascendant, 311 5. Subtract oblique ASC. Of circle plus, 1734. 293 31. Add right ascension of the, 345 34. 639 5. Take away, 360 0. It leaves right ascension of circle plus 279 5. Then, as the birth took place after full moon, and the circle plus will be above the earth. Find the difference of right ascension between it and the meridian above the earth. Thus, right ascension of circle plus, 279 degrees 5. Right ascension of the midheaven, 221 5. Distance of circle plus from the tenth house, 58 0. If the circle plus be in the same hemisphere as the. That is, if both be above or below the earth, it will have the semi-arc of the, but if otherwise, it will have the opposite semi-arc, which may be found by taking the s from 180 degrees. In this nativity, which is that of the Duke of Wellington, the semi-arc of the moon is 90 degrees 57 foot, which taken from 180 degrees leaves the semi-arc of circle plus 89 degrees 3, two-thirds of which are 59 degrees 22. And it appears that circle plus is just 1 degree 22 foot outside the cusp of the 12th house point 6. The circle plus has no influence on the health or life of the native, but it influences the pecuniary affairs very powerfully, and also, in some degree, the profession or employment. 7. To find the place of circle plus in the figure of a horary question. In horary astrology circle plus is merely a symbol, and has much to do with all questions regarding property, loss or gain, and In this case it is found by a more simple rule, as follows. Add together the longitude of the ascendant and longitude of the, from which subtract the longitude of the, the remainder will be the longitude of circle plus. Example, where was the circle plus at 3h? 20m, pm 28th of December, 1644. 8. Signs degree. Min. The ascendant was Cancer 11 degrees 33, or 3 11 33. The was in Taurus, 16 degrees 49 foot, or 1 16 49. For 28 22. For subtraction add 12 00. 
1628-22. The circle plus in Capricorn, 17 degrees 54, or 9 17 54. Place of in the figure or Scorpio 10 degrees 28 foot. 72 10 8. Chapter 2. Figure 1. Explanation, in the above figure the angles and the succedent and cadent houses appear at one view. The first house embraces 24 degrees of longitude in the zodiac, viz. From Libra 0 degrees 0 foot to Libra 24 degree, the second house contains 30 degrees, viz. From Libra 24 degrees to Scorpio 240, the 3D house contains 36 degrees, viz. From Scorpio 24 degrees to Capricorn 0 degrees 0 foot, being 6 degrees of Scorpio and the whole of Sagittarius, the fourth house contains 36 degrees, viz. The whole of Capricorn and 6 degrees of Aquarius, the fifth house contains 30 degrees, viz. From Aquarius 6 degrees to Pisces 6 degree. And the sixth house contains 24 degrees, viz. From Pisces 6 degrees to the end of that sign, or Aries 0 degrees 0 foot to end dot B. The other six houses will be found to embrace exactly the same number of degrees of the opposite signs of the zodiac. The seventh being opposite to the first, the eighth to the 2D, and K. If the student look for Cancer 0 degrees 0 foot on the tenth house in the table of houses for London, he will find the longitude of the six eastern houses, as here noted. And, of course, the six opposite or western houses have the same degrees of the opposite signs on their cusps. Of erecting a figure of the heavens. This is merely a map to represent the heavens at any particular moment, such as when a child is born, or a question asked, and. In the first place, draw three circles, as in figure one. And then draw lines to represent the horizon, and others, at right angles with them, to represent the meridian. Thus will be shown, the natural divisions formed by the rising and setting of the sun. And by his passing the meridian at noon and midnight. Each of these quarters or quadrants is to be again divided into three equal parts, forming the twelve houses. These are marked from number one to number twelve. And it will be observed, that the double lines one and seven, which represent the eastern and western horizons, and those marked four and ten, which represent the meridians below and above the earth, are the cusps or commencement of the angles. Those lines numbered 2, 5, 8, and 1 L, are the cusps of the succedents, so called because they follow or succeed to the angles. These houses are next in power to the angles. Those lines marked 3, 6, 9, and 12, are the cusps or beginnings of the cadent houses, so called because they are cadent, that is, falling from the angles, these are the weakest of all the houses. Thus the student will perceive, that if a planet, and k, be in one of the angles, it is powerful, if in a succedent house, it is less powerful, and if in a cadent house, it is weak and incapable of affecting much either good or evil. Rule to erect the figure of the heavens at any time. 1. Learn in an ephemeris 9 for the year what was the right ascension of at the noon previous to the required time, in hours, minutes, and seconds. To this right ascension add the number of hours and minutes which have elapsed since that noon, 10 the sum will be the right ascension in time of the meridian above the earth, the mid-heaven, at the required time. 2. Find the longitude answering to this right ascension, in the column marked 10th house in the table of houses, which longitude is to be marked over the line which denotes the mid-heaven or 10th house. 3. In a line with this will be found the longitude on the cusps of the 11th, 12th, 1st, 2D, and 3D houses, which copy out from the table, and enter over the lines which denote those respective houses. 4. Having thus completed the six eastern houses, find the signs and degrees exactly opposite to each of them, and enter it over the cusps of the opposite or western houses, in the following order. Tenth house opposite fourth house. Eleventh do. Fifth. Twelfth opposite sixth house. First or ascendant do. Seventh. Two d do. Eighth. Three d do. Ninth. 5. Having thus completed the figure, 
As far as regards the signs of the zodiac, it now remains to place in the planets as they may be situated. The most distant from the is, whose longitude is generally given in the ephemeris for each ten days, and if the time of the figure fall between it, it must be found by proportion. When his longitude is found, write it in the figure, thus, 13 degrees 19 foot, just by the cusp of the house, which falls in the same sign. In which is found. If the cusp be farther on than the planet in the sign, place the planet outside the cusp. But if the planet be the farthest advanced in the sign, place it inside the cusp. After having entered, enter in the same way, then, male sign, female sign and the. To find the exact longitude of these seven, which is usually given for the noon of each day, find the distance they travel in longitude between the two noons preceding and succeeding the time of erecting the figure. And then take the proportional part for the time after the previous noon, and add it to, or if the planet be retrograde subtracted from, the planet's longitude for the previous noon. 6. Find the longitude of in the same manner, and enter it accordingly, and place in the sign and degree and minute exactly opposite thereto. 7. If it be a horror question, calculate the place of circle plus, and enter it accordingly. When the figure of heaven will be complete. But if it be a nativity, you must calculate the circle plus according to the rule given, first having prepared a speculum, or table of data, as taught in chapter 9 of the Grammar of Astrology. Chapter 3. Of the Aspects. The figure of the heavens being erected, it now remains to observe how the planets are situated as regards each other, or, in other words, how they are aspect. And, first. Of zodiacal aspects. These are as follow. Semi, a semi-sextal, or 30 degrees. Semi, a semi-square, or 45 degrees. A sextal, or 60 degrees. A quintile, or distance of 72 degrees. A square, or quartile, 90 degrees. A trine, or distance of 120 degrees. A sesquiquadrate, or square and a half, 135 degrees. A biquintile, or double quintile, 144 degrees. An opposition, 180 degrees. Good aspects are the semisextal, sextal, quintile, trine, and biquintile. Evil aspects are the semi-square, square, sesquiquadrate, and opposition, n.b. The conjunction, marked thus, is when two planets are in the same degree in minute of the zodiac, when it is exact, it is very powerful, and is called a partile. But if within the planet's orbs, it is called a platic conjunction, and is less powerful. To know whether it should be considered at all, the orbs of the two planets should be added together, and one half the sum taken. If the planets be beyond that distance, they are not even in platic. The same holds good with regard to other aspects. The orbs of the cusps of the houses are 5 degrees, so that if a planet be one half its orb and 5 degrees more distant from a house, it is not in aspect to that house. The same if the aspect of the planet fall beyond that distance from the cusp of any other house. Orbs of the planets. 9 degree, 9 degree, male sign, 7 degree, 15, female sign, 7 degrees, 7 degrees, 12 degree, n.b has had no orb of operation discovered. But I think it may safely be considered as 7 degrees in all horror figures, and of mundane aspects. These are formed by the houses in horary astrology, and by the semi-arcs of the planets in nativities. Thus, a semi is one house, a semi, one one half. A, two houses, a, three houses, a, four houses, a sesqui, four and a half houses, and then, six houses. The one third of a semi arc is a semi, the one half of a semi arc is a semi, the two thirds of a semi arc is a, the whole semi arc is a. And one dash five th less than the semi arc is a quintile, the whole semi arc and one third more is a, the whole semi arc and one half more is a sesqui the one-tenth part of a semi-arc added to a sesqui, is a biquintile, n.b. The entire arc of a planet, or double the semi-arc, will not give the measure of its distance from the opposite point of its place. 
But if the two semi-arcs of a planet, both diurnal and nocturnal, be added together, they make 180 degrees, an opposition aspect. Of parallels. The zodiacal parallel is when two planets have the same amount of declination from the equator. It is the most powerful of all aspects, but is not generally used in horary astrology. The mundane parallel is an equal distance from the meridian. It is used by some horary astrologers. When any of the above aspects are formed between the planets, they are found to have a mutual influence or action on each other, according to the nature of the aspect. For example, if the be 60 degrees, from in any figure, it denotes that the person signified by the sun is under the benefit influence of the benevolent, and shews success according to the nature of the question. In nativities it causes good health and good fortune in life. But if be 90 degrees, uh, from, it shews discredit, a failure of hopes, and in a question. And in a nativity it produces much sickness to the native, and also misfortunes to his father. This was verified in the nativity of Napoleon Bonaparte's son, who was born at 9 h. 15 m. a.m. March 20, 1811, when was in 28 degrees 53 foot degree of Pisces, and was in 26 degrees 28 of Sagittarius, just 92 degrees 25 distant from each other. This very close aspect of and caused great trouble to the native, through his father's misfortunes. And, was the high leg, produced a consumptive disease, an early death. It is remarkable, that his father's troubles began immediately after his birth. And it will always be found in the nativity of a child, that the fortune of its parents may be ascertained thereby until the birth of another child. If, for example, the child have evil planets in the fourth house, its father will be more or less unfortunate until the birth of another child. When, if that other have an female sign in the fourth house, the father's affairs will become more fortunate, so very beautifully do the nativities of parents and their children sympathize together. Chapter 4 Of the Twelve Houses, Their Nature and Signification As before we have said there are twelve signs, and also twelve houses of heaven. So now we are come to relate the nature of these twelve houses, the exact knowledge of which is so requisite, that he who learns the nature of the planets and signs without exact judgment of the houses, is like an improvident man. That furnishes himself with a variety of household stuff, having no place wherein to bestow them. There is nothing appertaining to the life of man in this world which, in one way or other, hath no relation to one of the twelve houses of heaven. And as the twelve signs are appropriate to the particular members of man's body, so also do the twelve houses represent, not only the several parts of man, but his actions, quality of life, and living. And the curiosity and judgment of our forefathers in astrology was such, that they have allotted to every house a particular signification, and so distinguished human accidents eleven throughout the whole twelve houses. He that understands the questions appertaining to each of them, shall not want sufficient grounds whereon to judge or give a rational answer upon any contingent accident, and success thereof. Of the first house, and its signification. 12. The first house contains all that part of heaven from the line where the figure 1 stands unto the figure 2, where the second house begins, it is one third of the distance between the horizon and meridian below the earth. It has signification of the life of man, of the stature, color, complexion, form, and shape of him that propounds the question, or is born, in eclipses and great conjunctions, and upon the sun his annual ingress into Aries. It signifies the common people, or general state of that kingdom where the figure is erected. And as it is the first house, it represents the head and face of man. So that if either or male sign be in this house, either at the time of a question or at the time of birth, you may observe some blemish in the face, thirteen or in that member appropriated to the sign that is then upon the cusp of the house. As, if Aries be in the ascendant, the mark, mole, or scar is, without fail, in the head or face, and if few degrees of the sign ascend, the mark is in the upper part of the head. If the middle of the sign be on the cusp, the mole, mark, or scar is in the middle of the face, or near it, if the latter degrees ascend, the face is blemished near the chin, towards the neck, this I have found true in hundreds of examples. 
Of colors, it hath the white, that is, if a planet be in this house that has signification of white, the complexion of the party is more pale or wan. Or, if you inquire after the color of the clothes of any man, if his significator be in the first house, and in a sign corresponding, the party's apparel is white or gray, or somewhat near that color, so also if the question be regarding cattle. When their significators are found in this house, it denotes them to be of that color, or near it, the house is masculine. The consignificators of this house are Aries and, for as this house is the first house, so is Aries the first sign, and the first of the planets. And therefore, when is but moderately well fortified in this house, and in any benevolent aspect of, female sign, or, it promises a good sober constitution of body, and usually long life. Doth also joy in this house, because it represents the head, and he the tongue, fancy, and memory, when he is well dignified and posited in this house, he produces good orators. 14 It is called the ascendant, because when then planets come to the cusp of this house, they ascend, or then arise, and are visible in our horizon. Questions concerning the second house. From this house is required judgment concerning the estate or fortune of him that asks the question, of his wealth of property, of all movable goods, money lent, of profit or gain, loss or damage. In suits of law, it signifies a man's friends or assistants, in private duels, the querent second. In an eclipse or great conjunction, the poverty or wealth of the people, in the sun his entrance into Aries, it represents the ammunition, allies, and support the commonwealth shall have, it imports their magazines. It represents, in man, the neck and hinder part of it towards the shoulders, of colors, the green. It is a feminine house, and succeedent. It has consignificators, and Taurus. For if be placed in this house, or be lord hereof, it is an argument of an estate or fortune. And male sign are never well placed in this house, either of them shew dispersion of substance, according to the capacity and quality of him that is either born or asks the question 15. The third house has signification of brethren, sisters, cousins, or kindred, neighbors, small journeys, or inland journeys, often removing from one place to another. Epistles, letters, rumors, messengers, it rules the shoulders, arms, hands, and fingers. Of colors, it governs the red and yellow, or sorrel color. It has consignificators, Gemini and male sign, which is one reason why male sign in this house, unless joined with, is not very unfortunate it is a cadent house, and is the joy of the. For if she be posited therein, especially in a movable sign, it is an argument of much travel, trotting, and trudging, or of being seldom quiet, the house is masculine. The fourth house. Gives judgment of fathers in general, or ever of his father that inquires, or that is born, of lands, houses, tenements, inheritance, tillage of the earth, treasures hidden, the determination or end of anything. Towns, cities, or castles besieged or not besieged, all ancient dwellings, gardens, fields, pastures, orchards the quality in nature of the grounds one purchases, whether vineyards, cornfields, and and shoes whether the ground be woody, stony, or barren. The sign of the fourth denotes the town, the lord thereof, the governor, sixteen it rules the breast and lungs. And of colors, the red, its consignificators are cancer, and the, we call it the angle of the earth, or imum sealy, it is feminine, and the north angle. In nativities or questions this fourth house represents fathers. So does the by day, and by night, yet if the be here placed, he is not ill, but rather shows the father to be of a noble disposition, and the fifth house. By this house we judge of children, of ambassadors, of the state of a woman with child, of banquets, of alehouses, taverns, plays, messengers or agents for republics, of the wealth of the father, the ammunition of a town besieged. If the woman with child shall bring forth male or female, of the health or sickness of his son or daughter that asks the question. It rules the stomach, liver, heart, sides, and back, and is masculine. Of colors, black and white, or honey color. And is a succeedent house, its consignificators are Leo and female sign, who does joy in this house, 
in regard it is the house of pleasure, delight and merriment, it is wholly unfortunate by male sign or, and they therein shew disobedient children, and untoward. The sixth house. It concerns men and maid servants, galley slaves, hogs, sheep, goats, hares, conies, all manner of lesser cattle, and profit or loss got thereby, sickness, its quality and cause. The principal humor offending, curable or not curable, whether the disease be short or long, day laborers, tenants, farmers, shepherds, hog herds, neat herds, warreners, and it signifies uncles, or the father's brothers and sisters. It rules the inferior part of the belly and intestines, even to the rectum. The house is a feminine and cadent house, unfortunate as having no aspect to the ascendant. Of colors, black. Male sign rejoices in this house, but its consignificators are the sign Virgo and planet female sign, we usually find that male sign and female sign in conjunction in this house are arguments of a good physician. Point seventeen. The seventh house. It gives judgment of marriage. And describes the person inquired after, whether it be a man or woman, all manner of love questions, or public enemies, the defendant in a lawsuit, in war, the opposing party, all quarrels, duels, lawsuits, in astrology, the artist himself. In physic, the physician, thieves and thefts, the person stealing, whether man or woman, wives, sweethearts, their shape, description, condition, nobly or ignobly born, in an annual ingress, whether war or peace may be expected. Of victory, who overcomes and who is worsted fugitives or runaways, banished or outlawed men. It has consignificators Libra and, or male sign unfortunate herein, Shuil in marriage.18 of color, a dark black. It rules the haunches, and the navel, to the buttocks, is called the angle of the west, and is masculine. The eighth house. The estate of men deceased, death, its quality and nature, the wills, legacies, and testaments of men deceased. Dowry of the wife, portion of the maid, whether much or little, easy to be obtained or with difficulty. In duels, it represents the adversary's second, in lawsuits, the defendant's friends, what kind of death a man shall die. It signifies fear and anguish of mind, nineteen also who shall be heir to the deceased. It rules the privy parts. Of colors, the green and black. Of signs, it has Scorpio for consignificator n. The hemorrhoids, the stone, strangury, and bladder, are ruled by this house, also poisons, it is a succedent house, and feminine. The ninth house. By this house we give judgment of voyages or long journeys beyond seas, of religious men, or clergy of any kind, whether bishops or inferior ministers. Dreams, visions, foreign countries, books, learning, church livings or benefices, and of the kindred of one's wife or husband. Of colors, it has the green and white, of man's body, it rules the fundament, the hips, and thighs. And male sign are consignificators of this house, for if be herein placed, it naturally signifies a devout man in his religion, or one modestly given. I have often observed when the dragon's tail, or male sign have been unfortunately placed in this house, the K rent has either been little better than an atheist or a desperate sectarian. Point twenty rejoices to be in this house, which is masculine and cadent. The tenth house. Commonly it personates kings, princes, dukes, earls, judges, prime officers, commanders in chief, whether in armies or towns, all sorts of magistracy and officers in authority, also mothers. Honor, preferment, dignity, office, lawyers, professions or trade, it also signifies kingdoms, empires, dukedoms, counties, it has of colors red or white, and rules the knees and thighs. It is called the medium sealy, or mid-heaven, and is feminine. Its consignificators are Capricorn and male sign. Either or though are very fortunate in this house, especially when they are placed together, or usually deny honor as to persons of quality, and to the vulgar little prosperity in profession or trade. The eleventh house. It does naturally represent friends and friendship, hope, trust, confidence, the praise or dispraise of any one, the fidelity or falseness of friends. 
As to kings, it personates their favorites, counselors, servants, their associates or allies, their money, exchequer or treasure, in war, ammunition and soldiery, it represents courtiers, and in a commonwealth, governed by a few of the nobles and commons, it personates their assistants in council, as, in London, the tenth house represents the Lord Mayor. The eleventh, the common council, the ascendant the generality of the commoners of the said city. Of members, it rules the legs to the ankles, of colors, saffron or yellow. It has and Aquarius four consignificators, especially rejoices in this house. It is a succeedant house, and masculine, and in virtue is nearly equivalent either to the seventh or fourth house. The twelfth house. It has signification of private enemies, great cattle, or horses, oxen, elephants, and sorrow, tribulation, imprisonment, all manner of affliction, self-undoing, and and of such men as maliciously undermine their neighbors, or inform secretly against them. It has consignificators Pisces and female sign. Saturn does much delight in that house, for he is naturally the author of mischief. It rules, in man's body, the feet. In color it represents the green. It is a cadent house, and feminine. This is the true character of the several houses, according to the Ptolemyan doctrine, and the experience I have had myself for many years. I must confess the Arabians have made several other divisions of the houses. But I could never, in my practice, find any verity in them, therefore I will say nothing of them. Chapter 5 Of Saturn, and His Signification H.S. is the supremest or highest of all the planets 21 and is placed between Jupiter and the firmament. He is not very bright or glorious, nor does he twinkle or sparkle, but is of a pale or wan ashy color, slow in motion, finishing his course through the twelve signs of the zodiac in twenty-nine years, one hundred and sixty-seven days, and five hours, or thereabouts. His mean motion is two minutes and one second, his diurnal motion sometimes is three, four, five, or six minutes, seldom more, his greatest north latitude from the ecliptic is two degrees forty-eight minutes. His greatest south latitude is 2 degrees 49 minutes. In the zodiac he has two of the twelve signs for his houses, viz. Capricorn Capricorn, his night house, Aquarius Aquarius, his day house. He is exalted in Libra, receives his fall in Aries, and rejoices in the sign Aquarius, Aquarius. He governs the airy triplicity by day, which is composed of Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. If in any question he be in any degree wherein he has a term, he cannot be said to be peregrine, or void of essential dignities. Or if he be in any of those degrees allotted him for his face or decanate, he cannot then be said to be peregrine, understand this in all the other planets. Point 22. He continues retrograde 140 days. Is five days in his first stage before retrogradation, and so many in his second station before becoming direct. He is cold and dry, being far removed from the sun, melancholy, earthy, masculine. And the greater in fortune, author of solitariness, malevolent, and when well dignified, he is profound in imagination, in his acts severe, in words reserved, in speaking and giving very spare. In labor patient, in arguing or disputing grave, in obtaining the goods of this life studious and solicitous, in all manner of actions austere. Point 23. When ill dignified, he is envious, covetous, jealous, and mistrustful. Timorous, sordid, outwardly dissembling, sluggish, auspicious, stubborn, a contemner of women, a liar, malicious, murmuring, never contented, and ever repining. Corporature, most part of his body cold and dry. Of a middle stature, his complexion pale, swarthy or muddy, his eyes little and black, looking downward, a broad forehead, black or sad hair, and it hard or rugged, great ears, hanging, lowering eyebrows, thick lips and nose. A rare or thin beard, a lumpish, unpleasant countenance, either holding his head forward or stooping, his shoulders broad and large, and many times crooked, his belly somewhat short and lank, his thighs spare, lean, and not long. His knees and feet ill-made, and frequently striking against each other, 
with a shuffling gait. Saturn Oriental, you must observe, if Saturn be Oriental of the Sun, the stature is more short, but decent and well composed. Saturn Occidental. The man is more black and lean, and fewer hairs, and again, if he wants latitude, the body is more lean, if he have great latitude, the body is more fat or fleshy, if the latitude be south, more fleshy, but quick in motion. If north, hairy and much flesh. In his first station, a little fat, in his second station, fat, ill-favored bodies, and weak, and this observe constantly in all the other planets. Quality of men. In general signifies husbandmen, clowns, beggars, day laborers, old men, fathers, grandfather, monks, Jesuits, sectarians. Employment. Kayas, night farmers, miners underground, tinners, potters, broom men, plumbers, brickmakers, maltsters, chimney sweepers, sextons of churches, bearers of corpses, scavengers, hostlers, colliers, carters, gardeners, ditchers, chandlers. Dyers of black cloth, and herdsmen, shepherds, or cowkeepers. Sicknesses, all impediments in the right ear, or teeth. All quartan agues proceeding from cold, dry and melancholy distempers, leprosies, consumptions, black jaundice, palsies, tremblings, vain fears, fantasies, dropsy, the hand and foot gout, apoplexies, too much flux of the hemorrhoids. And ruptures, if in Scorpio or Leo, in any ill aspect with Venus. Orb, his orb is nine degrees before and after. That is, his influence begins to work when either he applies or any planet applies to him, and is within the half of nine degrees added to the half of that planet's orb, and continues in force until he is separate an equal distance. Years. The greatest years he signifies is 465. His greater 57, his medium years 43 one half, his least 30. The meaning whereof is this, admit we frame a new building, erect a town or city, or a family, or principality is begun when Saturn is essentially and occidentally strong, the astrologer may probably conjecture the family, principality, and may continue 465 years in honor, and without any sensible alteration. As to age, he relates to decrepit old men, fathers, grandfathers, the like in plants, trees, and all living creatures. Places. He delights in deserts, woods, obscure veins, caves, dens, holes, mountains, or where men have been buried, churchyards, and ruinous buildings, coal mines, sinks, dirty and stinking places, houses of office, and countries. Late authors say he rules over Bavaria, Saxony, Styria, Romandiola, Ravenna. Constantia, in Goldstadt. Chapter 6. Of the planet Jupiter, and his signification. Jupiter is placed next to Saturn. He is the greatest in appearance to our eyes, of all the planets, the, and female sign accepted in his color he is bright, clear, and of an azure hue. In his motion he exceeds Saturn, finishing his course through the twelve signs, in fourteen years, three hundred and fourteen days, and twelve hours, his middle motion is four minutes fifty-two seconds. His greatest north latitude is one degree thirty-eight foot. His greatest south latitude is one degree forty foot. He is retrograde about one hundred and twenty days, is five days in his first station before retrogradation, and four days stationary before direction. Nature, he is a masculine planet, temperately hot and moist, and the greater fortune. Author of Temperance, Modesty, Sobriety, Justice. Manners and actions when well placed, then he is magnanimous, faithful, bashful, aspiring in an honorable way at high matters. In all his actions a lover of fair dealing, desiring to benefit all men, doing glorious actions. Honorable and religious, of sweet and affable conversation, wonderfully indulgent to his wife and children, reverencing aged men, a great reliever of the poor, full of charity and godliness, liberal, hating all sordid actions. Just, wise, prudent, grateful and virtuous, so that when you find the significator of any man in question, and well dignified, you may judge him well qualified as aforesaid.
when ill-dignified. When is unfortunate, then he wastes his patrimony, suffers everyone to cousin him, is hypocritically religious, tenacious, and obstinate in maintaining false tenets in religion. He is ignorant, careless, nothing caring for the love of his friends, of a gross. Dull capacity, systematical, abasing himself in all companies, insinuating and stooping where no necessity is. Corporature. He signifies an upright, straight, and tall stature, brown, ruddy, and lovely complexion, of an oval or long visage, and full or fleshy, high forehead, large gray eyes, hair soft, and a kind of auburn brown, much beard, a large deep belly. Strong proportion thighs and legs, his feet long, being the most uncomely parts of his body, in his speech he is sober, and of grave discourse. Oriental. The skin more clear, his complexion honey color, or between a white and red, sanguine, ruddy color, great eyes, the body more fleshy, generally some mole or scar on the right foot. Occidental. A pure and lovely complexion, the stature more short, the hair a light brown, or near a dark flaxen, and smooth, bald about the temple or forehead. Quality in general. He signifies judges, senators, counselors, ecclesiastical men, bishops, priests, ministers, cardinals, chancellors, doctors of the civil law, young scholars and students in an university or college, lawyers, clothiers, wool and drapers. Diseases. Pleurisies, all infirmities in the liver, apoplexies, inflammation of the lungs, palpitation and trembling of the heart, cramps, pain in the backbone, all diseases lying in the veins or ribs, and proceeding from corruption of blood. Quinzies, flatulence, all putrefaction in the blood, or fevers proceeding from too great abundance thereof. Places, he delights in being near altars of churches, in public conventions, synods, convocations, in places neat and sweet. In wardrobes, courts of justice, and oratories. Point twenty four. His greatest years are four hundred and twenty eight, his greater, seventy nine, his mean, forty five, least, twelve. Men of middle age, or of a full judgment and discretion, are described by him. Babylon, Persia, Hungary, Spain, Cullen, are ruled by him. Point twenty five. Chapter seven. Of the planet Mars, and his several significations. Mars does in order succeed Jupiter, is less in body, and appears to our sight of a shining, fiery, sparkling color, he finishes his course in the zodiac in one year, 321 days. And 22 hours, his greatest latitude north is about 4 degrees 31 foot. His south, 6 degrees 47 foot, and is retrograde 80 days, stationary 2 or 3. He governs wholly the watery triplicity, viz. Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. Nature, he is a masculine, nocturnal planet, in nature hot and dry, choleric and fiery. The lesser in fortune, author of quarrels, strifes, and contentions. Manners when well dignified, in feats of war and courage invincible, scorning that any should exceed him. Subject to no reason, bold, confident, immovable, contentious, challenging all honor to themselves, valiant, lovers of war and things pertaining thereto, hazarding himself in all perils, unwilling to obey or submit to anybody. A boaster of his own acts, one that slights all things in comparison of victory, and yet of prudent behavior in his own affairs. When ill-dignified, then he is a prattler, without modesty or honesty. A lover of slaughter and quarrels, murder, thievery, a promoter of sedition, frays, and commotions, an highway thief, as wavering as the wind, a traitor, of turbulent spirit, perjured, obscene, rash, inhuman, neither fearing God nor caring for man. Unthankful, treacherous, oppressors, ravenous, cheaters, furious, and violent. Point 26. Corporature, generally martialists have this form, they are but of middle stature, their bodies strong, and their bones large, rather lean than fat. Their complexion of a brown, ruddy color, their visage round, their hair red or sandy, and many times crisping or curling, sharp, hazel, piercing eyes, a bold confident countenance, and they are active and fearless. Oriental. He signifies valiant men, 
some white mixed with their redness, inclined to be tall, and of a hairy body. Occidental, very ruddy complexion, but low stature, little head, smooth body, and not hairy. Yellow hair, stiff, and the natural humors generally more dry. Qualities of men in their professions, generals of armies, colonels, captains, or any soldiers having command in armies. All manner of soldiers, physicians, apothecaries, surgeons, chemists, gunners, butchers, marshals, sergeants, bailiffs, hangmen, thieves, smiths, bakers, armorers, watchmakers, tailors, cutlers of swords and knives, barbers, dyers, cooks, carpenters, gamesters, bearwards, tanners, and kayas, according as male sign may be strong or weak. Diseases, the gall, tertian fevers, pestilent burning fevers, megrims in the head, carbuncles, the plague, and all plague sores, burnings, ringworms, blisters, frenzies, mad sudden distempers in the head, yellow jaundice, bloody flux, fistulas. All wounds and diseases in men's genitals, the stone both in the reins and bladder, scars or smallpox in the face. Point 27. Mars causes all hurts by iron, the shingles, and such other diseases as arise by too much choler, anger, or passion. Places. Smith shops, furnaces, slaughterhouses, places where bricks or charcoal are burned, or have been burned, chimneys, and forges. Point 28. His orb is only seven degrees. Years, in man he governs the flourishing time of youth, and from forty-one to fifty-six. His greatest year is two hundred and sixty-four, greater sixty-six, lower forty, and least fifteen. Countries, Saramacia, Lombardy, Batavia, Ferraria, Gothland. Chapter 8 Of the Sun, His General and Particular Significations the sun is placed in the middle of all the planets, continually visible to all mortal men. He passes through all the twelve signs of the zodiac in one year, his mean motion is 59 minutes 8 seconds, yet his diurnal motion is sometimes 57 minutes 16 seconds, sometimes more, but never exceeding 61 minutes and 6 seconds. He always moves in the ecliptic, and is ever void of latitude. He has only the sign Leo for his house, and Aquarius for his detriment. He is exalted in the nineteenth degree of Aries, and receives his fall in nineteen degrees Libra. The sun governs the fiery triplicity, viz. Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, by day. He is always direct, and never can be considered retrograde. In nature, he is naturally hot and dry, but more temperate than male sign, is a masculine, diurnal planet, and equivalent if well dignified to a fortune. Manners when well dignified, very faithful, keeping their promises with the greatest punctuality, a kind of itching desire to rule and sway wherever he comes. Prudent, and of incomparable judgment. Of great majesty and stateliness, industrious to acquire honor and a large patrimony, yet as willing to spend it again. The solar man usually speaks with gravity, but not many words, and these with great confidence and command of his own feelings. Full of thought, secret, trusty, speaks deliberately, and, notwithstanding his great heart, he is affable, tractable, and very humane to all people, one loving sumptuousness and magnificence, and whatever is honorable. No sordid thoughts can enter his heart. When ill-dignified, then the solar man is arrogant and proud, disdaining all men, boasting of his pedigree. He is purblind in sight and judgment, restless, troublesome, domineering, a mere vapor, expensive, foolish, endowed with no gravity in words, or soberness. In actions, a spendthrift, wasting his patrimony, and hanging on other men's charity. Yet he thinks all men are bound to him, because a gentleman born. Corporature, usually the presents a man of a good, large, and strong corporature, a yellow, saffron complexion, a round large forehead, large goggle eyes, sharp and piercing. A body strong and well composed, not so beautiful as lovely, full of heat, with hair yellowish, and therefore quickly bald, much hair on their beard, and usually in high ruddy complexion, their bodies fleshy. In disposition they are very bountiful, honest, sincere, well-minded, of good heart, healthful constitution, very humane, 
yet sufficiently spirited, and not loquacious. Oriental. We can only say that is oriental in the figure, or in an oriental quarter of the figure, or occidental, and point twenty-nine the planets are oriental when they rise, or appear before him in the morning, and occidental when they set after him. Quality of men, and their professions, he signifies, kings, princes, emperors, and dukes, marquises, earls, barons, lieutenants, deputy lieutenants of counties, magistrates, gentlemen in general, courtiers, desirers of honor and preferment. Justices of peace, mayors, high sheriffs, high constables, stewards of noblemen's houses, the principal magistrate of any city, town, castle, or country village, yeah, even a petty constable, where no better is. Goldsmiths, braziers, pewterers, coppersmiths, and minters of money. Sicknesses. Pimples in the face, palpitation or trembling, diseases of the brain and heart, infirmities of the eyes, cramps, sudden swoonings, diseases of the mouth and impure breath, catars, putrid fevers. Principally in man he governs the heart and the brain, in women, the vital spirit and denotes hysterics. Places, houses or courts of princes, palaces, theaters, all magnificent structures, being clean and decent, halls and dining rooms. Orb. Is fifteen degrees. Years, in age he rules youth, or when one is at the strongest, his greatest years are 1460, 30 greater 120, lesser 69 and least 19. Countries, Italy, Sicily, Bohemia, Phoenicia, and Chaldea. Chapter 9. Of the planet Venus, and her several signification and nature. Name, after the sun succeedeth Venus. Color in the element, she is of a bright, shining color, and is well known by the name of the evening star, or Hesperus. And that is when she appears after the sun is set, she is commonly called the morning star, but by the learned Lucifer, when she is seen long before the rising of the sun. Her mean motion is 59 minutes and 8 seconds. Her diurnal motion is sometimes 62 minutes a day, and 82 minutes she never exceeds. Her greatest latitude is 9 degrees 2 foot. She is retrograde 42 days, and stationary 2. Her year is 224 days and 7 hours. Element. She is a feminine planet, temperately cold and moist, nocturnal, the lesser fortune, author of mirth and cheerfulness. Manners and quality when well dignified, she signifies a quiet man, not given to law, quarrel, or wrangling, not vicious. Pleasant, neat and spruce, loving mirth in his words and actions, cleanly in apparel, rather drinking much than gluttonous. Prone to veneery, often entangled in love matters, zealous in their affections, musical, delighting in baths and all honest merry meetings, or amusements and theatricals, easy of belief, and not given to labor, or take any pains. A company keeper, cheerful, nothing mistrustful, a right virtuous man or woman, often jealous, yet without cause. When ill-dignified. Then he is riotous, expensive, wholly given to dissipation and lewd companies of women, nothing regarding his reputation, coveting unlawful beds, incestuous, an adulterer, fantastical, a mere skipjack, of no faith, no repute, no credit. Spending his means in alehouses, taverns, and among scandalous loose people. A mere lazy companion, nothing careful of the things of this life, or anything religious. Corporature. A man of fair but not tall stature, his complexion being white, tending to a little darkness 31 which makes him more lovely, very fair, lovely eyes, and sometimes black. A round face and not large, fair hair, smooth and plenty of it, and it is usually of a light brown color, a lovely mouth and cherry lips, the face pretty fleshy, a rolling wandering eye, a body very delightful, lovely, and exceedingly well shaped. One desirous of trimming and making himself neat and complete both in clothes and body, a love dimple in his cheeks, thirty-two a steadfast eye, and full of amorous enticements. Oriental When oriental, the body inclines to tallness or a kind of upright straightness in person, not corpulent or very tall, but neatly composed, a right Venus person is a pretty, complete, handsome man or woman. Occidental 
When she is occidental, the man is more short in stature, yet very decent and comely in shape and form, well liked of all. Quality of persons, and employments. Musicians, gamesters, silk men, mercers, linen drapers, painters, jewelers, players, lapidaries, embroiderers, woman tailors, wives, mothers, virgins, choristers, fiddlers, pipers, when joined with the Y. Ballad singers, perfumers, seamstresses, picture drawers, engravers, upholsterers, limners, glovers, and such as sell those commodities which adorn women either in body, as clothes, or in face, as complexion waters. Sicknesses Diseases by her signified are principally in the matrix and members of generation, in the reins, belly, back, navel, and those parts. The gonorrhea or running of the reins, Louis venerea or any disease arising from inordinate lust, priapism, impotency in generation, hernias, and, the diabetes, or an involuntary discharge of urine. Orb, her orb is seven degrees. Years. Her greatest years are 151, her greater 82, her mean 45, her least 8. In man she governs youth from 14 to 28. Countries, Arabia, Austria, Campania, Vienna, Polonia the Greater, Turin, Parthia, Media, Cyprus.33. Chapter 10. Of Mercury, and his signification, nature, and property. Mercury is the least of all the planets, never distant from the sun above 28 degrees, by which reason he is seldom visible to our sight. Color and Motion He is of a dusky silver color, his mean motion is 59 minutes and 8 seconds, but he is sometimes so swift, that he moves above 1 degree and 40 minutes in one day. He is stationary one day, retrograde 24 days. His year is 87 days and 23 hours. Latitude His greatest south latitude is 3 degrees 35 minutes, greatest north latitude 3 degrees 33 minutes. Nature We may not call him either masculine or feminine, for he is either the one or the other as joined to any planet, for if in with a masculine planet, he becomes masculine 34 if with a feminine, then feminine. But of his own nature he is cold and dry, and therefore melancholy, with the good he is good, with the evil planets, ill, he is author of subtlety, tricks, devices, perjury, and manners when well dignified. Being well dignified, he represents a man of a subtle and political brain and intellect, an excellent disputant or logician, arguing with learning and discretion, and using much eloquence in his speech. A searcher into all kinds of mysteries and learning, sharp and witty, learning almost anything without a teacher, ambitious of being exquisite in every science, desirous naturally to travel and see foreign parts. A man of an unwearied fancy, curious in the search of any occult knowledge, able by his own genius to produce wonders, given to divination and the more secret knowledge. If he turn merchant, no man exceeds him in way of trade, or invention of new ways whereby to obtain wealth. Manners when ill-dignified a troublesome wit, a kind of frenetic man, his tongue and pen against every man. Wholly bent to fool his estate and time in loquacity in trying nice conclusions to no purpose, a great liar, boaster, prattler, busybody, false, a tale carrier, addicted to wicked arts, as necromancy, and such like ungodly knowledges. Easy of belief, an ass or very idiot, constant in no place or opinion, cheating and thieving everywhere, a newsmonger, pretending all manner of knowledge, but void of true or solid learning, a trifler, a mere frantic fellow. If he prove a divine, then a mere verbal fellow, frothy, of no judgment, easily perverted, constant in nothing but idle words and bragging. Corporature, generally he denotes one of an high stature, and straight, thin, spare body. A high forehead, and somewhat narrow long face, long nose, fair eyes, neither perfectly black nor grey, thin lips and nose, little hair on the chin, but much on his head, and of a sad brown inclining to blackness, long arms, fingers, and hands. His complexion like an olive or chestnut color. You must observe more than all the planets, for having any aspect to a planet, he partakes more of the influence of that planet than any other does, if with, then heavy, with, more temperate. 
with male sign, more rash, with, more genteel, with female sign, more jesting, with, more changeable. Oriental, when he is oriental, his complexion is honey color, or like one sunburnt, in the stature of his body not very high, but well jointed. Small eyes, not much hair, in very truth, according to the height of body, very well composed, but still a defect in the complexion, swarthy brown, and in the tongue all for his own interest. Occidental. When occidental, a tawny visage, lank body, small slender limbs, hollow eyes, either sparkling, red or fiery, the whole frame of body inclining to dryness. Quality of men and professions. He generally signifies all literary men, philosophers, mathematicians, astrologians, thirty-five merchants, secretaries, writers, sculptors, poets, orators, advocates, schoolmasters, stationers, printers, exchangers of money, attorneys, ambassadors. Commissioners, clerks, artificers, generally accountants, solicitors. Sometimes thieves, prattling ministers, busy secretaries, and they unlearned, grammarians, tailors, carriers, messengers, footmen, usurers. Sickness, all vertigos, lethargies, or giddiness in the head. Madness, either lightness or any disease of the brain, physic. All stammering and imperfection in the tongue, vain and fond imaginations, all defects in the memory, hoarseness, dry coughs, too great abundance of spittle, all snaffling and snuffling in the head or nose. The hand and feet gout, dumbness, foul or diseased tongue, all evils in the fancy in intellectual parts. Orb, his orb is seven degrees. Years, his greatest years are four hundred and fifty, his greater seventy-six, his mean forty-eight, his little or least twenty. Countries. He has Grecia, Flanders, Egypt. Of towns, Paris. Chapter 11. Of the moon, her properties and significations. Name, the moon we find called by the ancients Lucina, Cynthia, Diana, Phoebe, Latona, Noctiluca, Proserpina. 36 She is nearest to the earth of all the planets. Motion. She terminates her course through the whole twelve signs in twenty-seven days, seven hours, forty-three minutes, five seconds, her mean motion is thirteen degrees, ten minutes, and thirty-six seconds. But she moves sometimes less and sometimes more, never exceeding fifteen degrees and twelve minutes in twenty-four hours, time. Latitude, her greatest north latitude is five degrees and seventeen minutes. Her greatest south latitude 5 degrees and 12 minutes. She is never retrograde, but when she is slow in motion, and goes less in 24 hours than 13 degrees and 11 minutes, she is then equivalent to a retrograde planet. Nature, she is a feminine, nocturnal planet, cold, moist, and phlegmatic. Manners when well placed or dignified, she signifies one of composed manners, a soft tender creature, a lover of all honest and ingenious sciences, a searcher of and delighter in novelties, naturally inclined to flit and shift his habitation. Unsteadfast, wholly caring for the present times, timorous prodigal, and easily frightened, loving peace, however, and to live free from the cares of this life. If a mechanic, the man learns many occupations, and frequently will be tampering with many ways to trade in. When ill, a mere vagabond, idle person, hating labor. A drunkard, a sot, one of no spirit or forecast, delighting to live beggarly and carelessly, one content in no condition of life, either good or ill. Corporature, she generally presents a man of fair stature, whitely colored. The face round, gray eyes, and a little lowering, much hair both on the head, face, and other parts, usually one eye a little larger than the other, short hands and fleshy, the whole body inclining to be fleshy, plump, corpulent, and phlegmatic. If she be impeditive of the in a nativity or question, she usually signifies some blemish in or near the eye, a blemish near the eye, if she be impeditive in succeedent houses. In the sight, if she be unfortunate in angles, and with fixed stars called nebulae. Qualities of men and women. She signifies queens, countesses, ladies, all manner of women, as also the common people, travelers, pilgrims, sailors, fishermen, fishmongers, 
brewers, tapsters, publicans, letter carriers, coachmen, huntsmen, messengers, mariners, millers. Maltsters, drunkards, oyster wives, fishwomen, charwomen, tripe women, and generally such women as carry commodities in the streets. As also midwives, nurses, and hackney men, watermen, water bearers. Point 37. Sickness, apoplexies, palsy, the colic, the stomach ache, diseases in the left side, the bladder, and members of generation. The menstrues and liver in women, dropsies, fluxes of the belly, all cold rheumatic diseases, cold stomach, the gout in the wrists and feet. Sciatica, worms, hurts in the eyes, surfeits, rotten coughs, convulsive fits, the falling sickness, king's evil, abscess, smallpox, and measles. Orb, is 12 degrees. Years, her greatest years are 320, greater 108, mean 66, least 25. Countries. Holland, Zealand, Denmark, Nuremberg, Flanders. Chapter 12. The head of the dragon, the head of the dragon is masculine, of the nature of and female sign, and of himself a fortune. Point thirty-eight. The tail of the dragon, the tail of the dragon by nature is quite contrary to the head, for he is evil. I ever found the equivalent to either of the fortunes, and, when joined with the evil planets, to lessen their malevolent signification, when joined with the good, to increase the good promised by them. The tail of the dragon I always, in thy practice, found, when he was joined by the evil planets, their malice or the evil intended thereby was doubled and trebled, or extremely augmented, and and when he chanced to be in conjunction with any of the fortunes who were significators in the question, though the matter by the principal significator was fairly promised and likely to be perfected in a small time. Yet did there ever fall out many rubs and disturbances, much wrangling and controversy, that the business was many times given over for desperate before a perfect conclusion could be had. And unless the principal significators were angular, and well fortified with essential dignities, many times unexpectedly the whole matter came to nothing. Chapter 13 Another Brief Description of the Shapes and Forms of the Planets Herschel, this is the most distant planet from the Sun, his motion is very slow, as he takes 83 years 151 days to go through the twelve signs. The nature of is extremely evil. If he ascend or be with the chief significator in any figure, he denotes an eccentric person, far from fortunate, always abrupt, and often violent in his manners. If well aspect, he gives sudden and unexpected benefits, and if afflicted, he will cause remarkable and unlooked for losses and misfortunes. He is not so powerful as Saturn or Mars, yet can do much evil. Persons under his influence are partial to antiquity, astrology, and and all uncommon studies, especially if Mercury and the Moon be in aspect to him. They are likely to strike out novelties, and to be remarkable for an inventive faculty. They are generally unfortunate in marriage, especially if he afflict female sign, the, or the seventh house, either at nativities or questions. Saturn signifies one of a swarthy color, palish like lead, or of a black earthly brown. One of rough skin, thick and very hairy on the body, small eyes, many times his complexion is between black and yellow, or as if he had an affection of the black or yellow jaundice, he is lean, crooked, or beetle-browed, a thin weak beard. Great lips, like negroes, he looks to the ground, thirty-nine is slow in motion, either is bow-legged or hits one leg or knee against another, most part a disagreeable breath, seldom free from a cough. He is crafty for his own interest, seducing people to his opinion, full of revenge and malice, little caring for religion, is a foul, nasty, slovenly knave, or a harlot, a great eater and glutton, a brawling fellow, has broad, great shoulders. Is covetous, and yet seldom rich, and point forty. Jupiter, we must describe an a jovialist to be one of a comely stature, full-faced, full-eyed, a sanguine complexion, or mixture of white and red, a large space between his eyebrows. Usually his beard is of a flaxen or sandy flaxen color, sometimes also, when is combust, very sad or black, his hair thick, his eyes not black. Good broad, well-set teeth, 
but usually some mark of difference in the two four teeth, either by their standing awry, or some blackness or imperfection in them, his hair gently curls, if he be in a fiery sign. A man well spoken, religious, or at least a good moral honest man, a person comely, and somewhat fat, if be in moist signs, fleshy, if in airy signs, large and strong, if in earthly signs, a man usually well descended. But if he be significator, if an ordinary clown, as sometimes he may be, then is he of more humanity than usual in such kind of men. Mars. A martial man is many times full-faced, with a lively, high color, like sunburnt, or like raw tanned leather, a fierce countenance, his eyes being sparkling or sharp and darting, and of yellow color. His hair, both of head and beard, being reddish, but herein you must vary according to the sign. In fiery signs, and airy, where male sign falls to be with fixed stars of his own nature, there shews a deep sandy red color. But in watery signs, being with fixed stars of his own nature, he is of a flaxen or whitish bright hair, if in earthy signs, the hair is like a sad brown, or of a chestnut color. He has a mark or scar on his face. Is broad-shouldered, a sturdy, strong body, being bold and proud, given to mockery and scorn, to quarrel, drink, game, and wench, which you may easily know by the sign he is in, if in the house of female sign, he wenches, in that of, he steals. But if he be in his own house, he quarrels, in that of, is dogged, in the s, is lordly, in the s, is a drunkard. The sun, the sun generally denotes one of an obscure white color, mixed with red. A round face, and short chin, a fair stature, and one of a comely body, his color sometimes between yellow and black, but for the most part more sanguine than otherwise, a bold man, and resolute, his hair curling, he has a white and tender skin. One desirous of praise, fame, and estimation among men, he has a clear voice, and great head, his teeth somewhat distorted or obliquely set, of slow speech, but of a composed judgment. Using outwardly a great decorum in his actions, but privately he is lascivious and prone to many vices. Venus. Whoever is signified by Venus, whether man or woman, has a good and fair round visage, a full eye, usually we say goggle-eyed, red ruddy lips, the nether more thick or longer than the upper, the eyelids black, yet lovely and graceful. The hair of lovely color, but most part according to the sign as before repeated, in some it is coal black, in others a light brown, a soft smooth hair, and the body extremely well shaped, even rather inclining to shortness than tallness. 41. Mercury, we describe Mercury to be a man neither black nor white, but between both, of a sad brown or dark yellow color, long visaged, high forehead, black or gray eyes, a thin, long, sharp nose. Thin spare beard, many times none at all, of an auburn sad color, next to black, slender of body, small legs, a prattling, busy fellow, and in walking he goes nimbly, and always would be thought to be full of action. The moon. She, by reason of her swiftness, varies her shape very often, but, in general, she personates one having a round visage and full face, in whose complexion you may perceive a mixture of white and red. But paleness overcomes, if she be in fiery signs, the man or woman speaks hastily. In watery signs, he or she has some freckles in his or her face, or is blub-cheeked, not a handsome body, but a muddling creature, and unless very well dignified, she ever signifies an ordinary vulgar person. Point 42. Chapter 14. The Colors of the Planets and Signs. Gives black color, a color mixed with red and green, male sign red, or iron color, yellow or yellow purple, female sign white or purple color. Sky color, or bluish, a color spotted with white, and other mixed colors. Aries white mixed with red, Taurus white mixed with lemon, Gemini white mixed with red, Cancer green or russet, Leo red or green, Virgo black speckled with blue. Libra black or dark crimson, or tawny color, Scorpio brown, Sagittarius yellow, or a green sanguine, Capricorn black or russet, or a swarthy brown. Aquarius a sky color with blue, Pisces white, glistening color point 43. Chapter 15. The nature, 
place, countries, general description, and diseases signified by the twelve signs. Aries is a masculine, diurnal sign, movable, cardinal, equinoctial. In nature fiery, hot and dry, choleric, bestial, luxurious, intemperate, and violent, the diurnal house of male sign, of the fiery triplicity, and of the east. Diseases All gumboils, swellings, pimples in the face, smallpox, hair lips, polypus, ringworms, falling sickness, apoplexies, megrims, toothache, headache, and baldness. Places Aries signifies where sheep and cattle do feed, sandy or hilly grounds. A place of refuge for thieves, as unfrequented places, in houses, the covering, ceiling, or plastering, a stable for small beasts, lands newly taken in or recently plowed, or where bricks or lime has been burnt. Description of the body or shape Aries represents, a dry body, not exceeding in height, lean or spare, but lusty bones, and his limbs strong, the visage long, black eyebrows, a long scraggy neck, thick shoulders. The complexion dusky, brown or swarthy. Countries ruled by Aries. England, Germany, Denmark, Lesser Poland, Palestine, Syria, Naples, Towns, Florence, Verona, Padua, Marseilles, Burgundy, Saragossa, Bergamo. Taurus. Qualities of the sign Taurus. It is an earthy, cold, dry, melancholy, feminine, nocturnal, fixed, bestial sign, of the earthy triplicity, and south, the night house of Venus. Diseases. The king's evil, sore throats, wens, fluxes of rooms falling into the throat, quinzies, abscesses in those parts. Places, stables where horses are, low houses, houses where the implements of cattle are laid up. Pasture or feeding grounds, where no houses are near, plain grounds, or where bushes have lately been eradicated, and wherein wheat and corn are substituted, some little trees not far off, in houses, cellars, low rooms. Shape and Description It represents one of a short, but full, strong and well-set stature, a broad forehead, great eyes, large swarthy face, and broad strong shoulders, great mouth, and thick lips, gross hands, black, rugged hair. Countries ruled by Taurus. Ireland, Persia, Great Poland, Asia Minor, the Archipelago, and the southern parts of Russia, towns, Dublin, Mantua, Leipzig, Parma, Franconia, Lorraine, also the islands of Cyprus and Samos, and the port and vicinity of Navarino. Gemini. Quality and property of Gemini. It is an aerial, hot, moist, sanguine, diurnal, common or double-bodied human sign, the diurnal house of, of the airy triplicity, western, masculine. Diseases. It signifies all diseases, accidents or infirmities in the arms, shoulders, or hands, corrupted blood, windiness in the veins, distempered fancies, and nervous diseases. Places, wainscot of rooms, plastering, and walls of houses. The halls, or where play is used, hills and mountains, barns, storehouses for corn, coffers, chests and high places. Countries ruled by Gemini de North America, Lower Egypt, Lombardy, Sardinia, Brabant, Belgium, west of England. Towns, London, especially Gemini 17 degrees 54 foot, Versailles, Mentz, Bruges, Louvain, Cordova, New York, and Nuremberg. Description An upright, tall, straight body, either in man or woman, the complexion sanguine, not clear, but obscure and dark. Long arms, yet many times the hands and feet short, and very fleshy, a dark hair, forty-four almost black, a strong, active body, a good piercing hazel eye, and wanton, and of perfect and quick sight. Of excellent understanding, and judicious in worldly affairs. Cancer. Quality and property of cancer to, it is the only house of the moon, and is the first sign of the watery triplicity. Is a watery, cold, moist, phlegmatic, feminine, nocturnal, movable sign, mute, and slow of voice, fruitful, northern. Diseases, it signifies imperfections all over, or in the breast, stomach, and paps. Weak digestion, cold stomach, thysic, 
salt phlegms, rotten coughs, dropsical humors, imposthumations in the stomach, cancers 45 which are mostly in the breast. Places, the sea, great rivers, navigable rivers. But in inland countries it denotes places near rivers, brooks, springs, wells, cellars and houses, washhouses, marsh grounds, ditches with rushes, sedges, sea banks, trenches, cisterns. Shape and description. Generally a low and small stature, the upper parts larger than the lower, a round visage, sickly, pale, and white complexion, the hair a sad brown, little eyes, prone to have many children, if a woman. Countries ruled by cancer. Holland, Scotland, Zealand, Georgia, and all Africa, towns, Constantinople, Tunis, Algiers, Amsterdam, Cadiz, Venice, Genoa, York, St. Andrews, Manchester, New York, Bern, Lübeck, Milan, and Vicentia. Leo. Quality and property of Leo. It is the only house of the sun, by nature, fiery, hot, dry, choleric, diurnal, commanding, bestial, 46 baron, of the east, and fiery triplicity, masculine. Diseases. All sicknesses in the ribs and sides, as pleurisies, convulsions, pains in the back, trembling or dot passion of the heart, violent burning fevers, all weakness or diseases in the heart, sore eyes, the plague, the pestilence, the yellow jaundice. Places, a place where wild beasts frequent, woods, forests, desert, steep, rocky, and inaccessible places, king's palaces, castles, forts, parks, in houses where fire is kept, near a chimney. Shape and form, great round head. Large prominent eyes, as if staring out, or goggle eyes, quick-sighted, a full and large body, and more than of middle stature, broad shoulders, narrow sides, yellow or dark flaxen hair, and it curling or turning up. A fierce countenance, but ruddy high sanguine complexion, strong, valiant, and active, step firm, and mind courteous. Countries ruled by Leo. France, Italy, Bohemia, Sicily, Rome. Towns, Rome, Bath, Bristol, Taunton, Cremona, Prague, Apulia, Ravenna, and Philadelphia, also the Alps and the ancient Chaldea, as far as Basora. Virgo. Property and quality of Virgo. It is an earthy, cold, melancholy, barren, feminine, nocturnal, southern sign, the house and exaltation of, of the earthy triplicity. Places, it signifies a study, where books are kept. A closet, a dairy house, cornfields, granaries, malt houses, hay, barley, wheat or peas ricks, and, or a place where cheese and butter is preserved and stored up. Diseases, the worms, wind, colic. All obstructions and croaking of the bowels, infirmities in the testicles, any disease in the belly. Countries ruled by Virgo. Turkey in Europe and Asia, Switzerland, Mesopotamia, or Diarbet. All the country between the Tigris and the Euphrates, the land of the Turkomans, and, and the West Indies, towns, Paris, Lyons, Toulouse, Saint Etienne, Basel, Heidelberg, Reading. Also Jerusalem, Candia, Lower Cilicia, Croatia or Liburnia, Babylon or Baghdad, Thessaly, Corinth, and the Moria. Also the trade and government of Liverpool, which are ruled especially by the ninth degree. Shape and form. A slender body, rather tall, but well composed, a ruddy, brown complexion, black hair, 47 well favored or lovely, but not a beautiful creature, a small, shrill voice, all members inclining to brevity. 48 a witty, discreet soul, judicious, and exceedingly well spoken, studious, and given to history, whether man or woman. It produces a rare understanding, if be in this sign, and in cancer, but somewhat unstable. Libra. Nature and property of Libra. This sign is hot and moist, sanguine, masculine, movable, equinoctial, cardinal, humane, diurnal, of the airy triplicity, and western, the chief house of female sign. Diseases, all diseases, or the stone and gravel, in the reins of the back and kidneys. Heats and diseases in the loins or haunches, impostums or ulcers in the reins, kidneys, 
or bladder, weakness in the back, corruption of blood. Places. In the fields it represents ground near windmills, or some straggling barn or outhouse, or soppets, or where coopers work, or wood is cut, sides of hills, tops of mountains, trees, grounds where hawking and hunting is used, sandy and gravel fields. Pure clear air, and sharp, the upper rooms in houses, chambers, garrets, one chamber within another, tops of chests of drawers, wardrobes, and shape and form. It personates a well-framed body, straight, tall, and more subtle or slender than gross, a round, lovely, and beautiful visage, a pure sanguine color, in youth, no abundance or excess in either red or white. But in age, pimples, or a very high color, the hair yellowish, smooth, and long, eyes generally blue, and temper even. Countries ruled by Libra. China, Japan, parts of India near them, Austria, Uzbek in Persia, towards India. Upper Egypt, Livonia, the vicinity of the Caspian Sea, towns, Lisbon, Vienna, Antwerp, Frankfurt, Spires, Fribourg, Charlestown in America, and its vicinity. Scorpio. Nature and property of Scorpio. It is a cold, watery, nocturnal, phlegmatic, northern, feminine sign, of the watery triplicity, the house and joy of Mars, usually it represents subtle, deceitful men. Diseases, gravel, the stone in the secret parts or bladder. Ruptures, fistulas, or the piles, priapisms, all afflictions in the private parts either of men or women, defects in the matrix, and its diseases, injuries, and to the spermatic cord, the groin, and places. Places where all kinds of creeping beasts use, as beetles, and or such as be without wings and are poisonous, gardens, vineyards, orchards, ruinous houses near waters, muddy, moorish grounds. Stagnant lakes, quagmires, ponds, sinks, the kitchen or larder, wash house, and form and description, a corpulent, strong, able body, somewhat a broad or square face, a dusky, muddy complexion, and sad dark hair, much and crisping. A hairy body, somewhat bow-legged, short-necked, a squat, well-trust fellow. Countries ruled by Scorpio, Barbary, Morocco, Norway, Valais the Catalonia, Bavaria, and the ancient Cappadocia. Towns, Frankfurt on the Oder, Messina, Ghent, Liverpool, which is especially ruled by the 19th degree. Sagittarius. Quality in nature of Sagittarius, it is of the fiery triplicity, east, in nature hot, dry, masculine, choleric. Diurnal, common, bicorporal or double body, the house and joy of. Diseases, it rules the thighs and buttocks, and all fistulous tumors or hurts falling in those members. And generally denotes heated blood, fevers, pestilence, falls from horses, or hurts from them or four-footed beasts, also prejudiced by fire, heat, and intemperateness in sports. Places. A stable for war horses, or a house where great four-footed beasts are usually kept, it represents in the fields, hills, and the highest land, also grounds that rise a little above the rest. In houses, upper rooms and places near the fire. Shape and form of body. It represents a well-favored countenance, somewhat long visage, but full and ruddy, or almost like sunburnt, the hair light chestnut color, the stature somewhat above the middle size, a conformity in the members, and a strong, able body. Inclined to baldness, and one fond of horses. Countries ruled by Sagittarius de Arabia Felix, Spain, Hungary, parts of France near Cape Finisterre, Dalmatia, Istria, Tuscany, Moravia, Sclavonia, Towns, Cologne, Buda, Avignon, Narbonne, Toledo. Capricorn. Quality in nature of Capricorn that it is the house of Saturn, and is nocturnal, cold, dry, melancholy, earthy, feminine, cardinal, movable. Four-footed, southern, the exaltation of male sign. Diseases. It has government of the knees, and all diseases incident to those places, either by strains or fractures, it denotes leprosy, itch, and cutaneous complaints. Places. It shows an ox house or cow house, or where calves are kept, 
or tools for husbandry, or old wood is laid up, or where sails for ships and such materials are stored, also sheep pens, and grounds where sheep feed. Fallow grounds, barren fields, bushy and thorny, dunghills and fields, or where soil is laid in low houses, dark places, near the ground or threshold. Corporature, usually dry bodies, not high of stature, long, lean, and slender visage. Thin beard, and black hair, a narrow chin, long small neck, and narrow chest. I have found many times, Capricorn ascending, the party to have white hair, but in the seventh ever black point forty nine. Countries ruled by Capricorn India, Greece, parts of Persia about Sirkin, Makran, and Karasin, Lithuania, Saxony, Albania, Bulgaria, Styria, Mexico, and parts about the Isthmus of Darien, Santa Martha, Popeyan, Pasta, and K Towns, Mecklenburg, Hesse, Oxford and also the Orkney Islands. Aquarius Nature and property of Aquarius. This is an airy, hot, and moist sign, diurnal, sanguine, fixed, humane, masculine, the principal house of, western. Sickness It governs the legs, ankles, and all manner of infirmities incident to those members, spasmodic and nervous diseases, cramps, wind, and Places, hilly and uneven places. Spots newly dug or plowed, or where quarries of stone are, or any minerals have been dug up, in houses, the roofs, eaves or upper parts, vineyards, or near some little spring or conduit head. Shape and form. It represents a squat, thick corporature, or one of a strong, plump, well-composed body, not tall, a long visage, sanguine complexion. If, who is lord of this house, be in Capricorn or Aquarius, the party is black in hair, and in complexion sanguine, with prominent teeth. Otherwise I have observed the party is of clear, white, or fair complexion, and of sandy-colored hair, or very flaxen, and a very pure skin. Point fifty. Countries ruled by Aquarius. Arabia the Stony, Russia, Tartary, Prussia, parts of Poland, Lithuania and Muscovy, Lower Sweden, Westphalia, Towns, Hamburg, Bremen, Piedmont, also Afghanistan, and other parts of Asia bordering on Persia. And this sign has rule over the affairs of state in England, especially the 13th degree.51. Pisces. Property and quality of Pisces. This is a northern, cold sign, fruitful, phlegmatic, feminine, watery, the house of an exaltation of female sign. A bicorporeal, common or double-bodied sign, an idol, effeminate, sickly sign, or representing a party of no action. Sickness all diseases in the feet, as the gout. And all lameness and pains incident to those members, mucus discharges, itch, blotches, breakings out, boils and ulcers proceeding from corrupt blood, colds and moist diseases, and bowel complaints caused by wet feet. Places. It represents grounds full of water, or where many springs and many fowl are, also fish ponds, or rivers full of fish, places where hermitages have been, moats about houses, watermills. In houses, places near the water, as some well or pump, or where water stands. Point fifty two. Corporature, a short stature, not very well made. A good large face, pale complexion, the body fleshy or swelling, not very straight, but incurvating, or stooping somewhat with the head. Point fifty three. Countries ruled by Pisces. Portugal, Calabria, Normandy, Galicia in Spain, Cilicia. Towns, Alexandria, Radisbon, Worms, Seville, Compostela, Tiverton. Chapter 16. Teaching what use may be made of the former discourse of the twelve signs. If one demand of the artist, what condition, quality, or stature the person inquired of is, then observe the sign of that house whereby he is signified. And the planet in it, the sign wherein the lord of that house is, and wherein the moon is. Mix one with another, and by the greater testimonies judge, for if the sign be humane, viz. Gemini, Virgo, Aquarius, or the first half of Sagittarius that ascends, and the lord of that sign, or they in any sign of the same nature, you may judge the body to be handsome, and the conditions of the party to be sociable, or very courteous, and 
If the query be concerning a disease, and Aries be either on the cusp of the ascendant or descending in the sixth house, you may judge he has something in his disease of the nature of Aries, but what it is. You must know by the concurrence of the other significators. If a person has lost or missed any cattle, or any material thing, let him observe what sign the significator of the thing is in. If in Aries and it be a beast strayed, or the like, let him see what manner of places that sign directs into, and let him repair thither to search, considering the quarter of heaven the sign signifies. If it be a piece of goods that without hands cannot be removed, then let him look into such parts of or about his house, as Aries signifies. If one asks concerning travel, whether such a country, city, or kingdom will be healthful or prosperous unto him, see in the figure what sign the Lord of the Ascendant is in, if the significator be fortunate in Aries, or if or female sign be therein. He may safely travel or sojourn in such cities or countries as the sign Aries represents. Which you may easily perceive in the above-named catalogue. Those countries subject to the sign wherein the infortunes are positive, unless they themselves be significators, are ever unfortunate. Remember, that a gentleman inquires, usually, if he shall have his health and live jocundly in such or such a country or city, the merchant wholly aims at trade, and the increase of his stock. Therefore, in the merchant's figure, you must consider the country or city subject to the sign of the second house, or where the part of fortune, or lord of the second house is, and which is most fortified, and thither let him trade. Point 54. Chapter 17 Of the Essential Dignities of the Planets The exact way of judicature in astrology is, first, by being perfect in the nature of the planets and signs. Secondly, by knowing the strength, fortitude, or debility of the significators, and well poising of them, and their aspects and several mixtures, in your judgment. Thirdly, by rightly applying the influence of the figure of heaven erected, and the planet's aspects to one another at the time of the question, according to natural and not enforced maxims of art. For by how much you endeavor to strain a judgment beyond nature, by so much the more you augment your error. A planet is then said to be really strong when he has many essential dignities, fifty-five which are known by his being either in his house, exaltation, triplicity, term or face, at the time of erecting the figure. As, for example, in any scheme of heaven, if you find a planet in any of those signs we call his house, he is then essentially strong, as in Capricorn, or in Sagittarius, and Essential Dignity by House In judgment, when a planet or significator is in his own house, it represents a man in such a condition, as that he is lord of his own house, estate, and fortune, or a man wanting very little of the goods of this world. Or it tells you the man is in a very happy state or condition, this will be true, unless the significator be retrograde, or combust, or afflicted by any other malevolent planet or aspect. Exaltation If he be in that sign wherein he is exalted, you may consider him essentially strong, whether he be near the very degree of his exaltation, or not, as male sign in Capricorn, or in Cancer. If the significator be in his exaltation, and no ways impeditive, but angular, it represents a person of haughty condition, arrogant, assuming more to himself than his due. For it is observed, the planets in some part of the zodiac do more evidently declare their effects than in others. Triplicity If he be in any of those signs which are allotted him for his triplicity, he is also strong, but in a less degree. A planet in his triplicity shews a man modestly endued with the goods and fortune of this world, one well descended, and the condition of his life, at present time of the question, to be good. But not so much so as if in either of the two former dignities. Term If any planet be in those degrees we assign for his terms, we allow him to be slightly dignified. A planet fortified, only as being in his own terms, rather shews a man more of the corporature and temper of the planet, than any extraordinary abundance in fortune, or eminence in the commonwealth. Face If any planet be in his decanate, or face, he has the least possible essential dignity, but being in his own decanate or face, he cannot then be called peregrine. A planet being in his decanate or face, describes a man ready to be turned out of doors, having much to do to maintain himself in credit and reputation and in genealogies it represents a family at the last gasp, even as good as quite decayed. 
hardly able to support itself. The planets may be strong in another way, viz. Accidentally, as when direct, swift in motion, angular, in or aspect with or female sign, and, or in with certain notable fixed stars, as shall hereafter be related. Here follows a table of essential dignities, by only casting your eye thereon, you may perceive what essential dignity or imbecility any planet has. There has been much difference between the Greeks, Iranians, and Indians, concerning the essential dignities of the planets, I mean, how to dispose the several degrees of the sign suitably to any planet. After many ages had passed, and until the time of Ptolemy, the astrologians were not resolved hereof. But since Ptolemy's time, the Grecians unanimously followed the method he left, which the other Christians of Europe to this day since retain as most rational, but the Moors of Barbary at present. And those astrologians of their nation who lived in Spain, do somewhat vary from us to this very day, however, I present thee with a table according to Ptolemy. Chapter 18 Table of the Essential Dignities of the Planets Signs Houses Exaltations Triplicity Day Night Terms Faces Detriment Fall Aries Male Sign D 19 6 female sign 14 21 male sign 26 30 male sign 10 20 female sign 30 female sign Taurus female sign N 3 female sign female sign 8 15 22 20 male sign 30 10 20 30 male sign Gemini D 3 7 14 female sign 21 25 male sign 30 10 male sign 20 30 Cancer D N 15 male sign male sign male sign 6 13 20 female sign 27 30 female sign 10 20 30 male sign Leo D N 6 13 female sign 19 25 male sign 30 10 20 male sign 30 Virgo N 15 female sign 7 female sign 13 18 24 male sign 30 10 female sign 20 30 female sign Libra female sign D 21 6 female sign 11 19 27 male sign 30 10 20 30 male sign Scorpio male sign N Male sign male sign male sign 6 14 female sign 21 27 30 male sign 10 20 female sign 30 female sign Sagittarius D 3 8 female sign 14 19 25 male sign 30 10 20 30 Capricorn N Male sign 28 female sign female sign 6 12 19 male sign 25 30 10 male sign 20 30 Aquarius D 6 12 female sign 20 25 male sign 30 female sign 10 20 30 Pisces N Female sign 27 male sign male sign female sign 8 14 20 male sign 26 30 10 20 male sign 30. Explanation of the table. Every planet has two signs for his houses, except Sol and Luna, they but one each. Has Capricorn and Aquarius, and has Sagittarius and Pisces, male sign has Aries and Scorpio, female sign has Taurus and Libra, has Gemini and Virgo. One of these houses is called diurnal, noted in the second column by the letter D, the other is nocturnal, noted by the letter N. The planets have their exaltations, as the third column points out, thus in 19 Aries, in 3 Taurus, in 3 degrees Gemini, and are exalted. These twelve signs are divided into four triplicities. The fourth column tells you which planet or planets, both night and day, governs each triplicity, as over against Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, you find male sign, who governs by day and night in that triplicity, and over against Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, you find N, viz. That has domination by day, and by night, in that triplicity, the first six degrees of Aries are the terms of, from six to fourteen, the terms of female sign, and k. And k. Over against Aries, in the tenth, eleventh, and 12th columns, you find male sign 10, 20, female sign 30. Viz. The first 10 degrees of Aries are the face of male sign, from 10 to 20, the face of, from 20 to 30, the face of female sign, and. 
In the thirteenth column, over against Aries, you find female sign detriment, viz. Female sign being in Aries, is in a sign opposite to one of her own houses, and so is said to be in her detriment. In the fourteenth column, over against Aries, you find, over his head fall, that is, when he is in Aries is opposite to his exaltation, and so is unfortunate, and Though these things are expressed in the nature of the planets already, yet this table makes it appear more evident to the eye, and is useful for reference. Chapter 19 Considerations Before Judgment All the ancients that have written of questions do give warning to the astrologer. That before he delivers judgment he will consider whether the figure is radical 56 and capable of judgment, the question then shall not be taken for radical, first, when either the first or second degrees of a sign ascend. Especially in signs of short ascensions, viz. Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces, Aries, Taurus, Gemini. You may not then adventure judgment, unless the carent be very young, and his corporature, complexion, and moles or scars of his body, agree with the quality of the signs ascending. 2d. If twenty-seven or more degrees of any sign ascend, it is not safe to give judgment, except the carent be in years corresponding to the number of degrees ascending, or unless the figure be set upon a time certain, viz. Any event happening, such as a man went away or fled at such a time precisely, to learn the result, here you may judge, because it is no propounded question. 3d. It is not safe to judge when there is in the later degrees of a sign, especially in Gemini, Scorpio, or Capricorn, or, as some say, when she is in Via Combusta, which is, when she is in the last fifteen degrees of Libra or the first fifteen degrees of Scorpio. All manner of matters go hardly on, except the principal significators be very strong, when there is void of course, yet sometimes she performs it void of course, if in Taurus, Cancer, Sagittarius, or Pisces. You must also be wary, when in any question propounded you find the cusp of the seventh house afflicted, or the lord of the house retrograde or impedited, and the matter at that time not concerning the seventh house. But belonging to any other house, it is an argument that the judgment of the astrologer will give little content, or nothing please the K-Rent, for the seventh house generally has signification of the artist. The Arabians, as Alkindus and others, do deliver the following rules, as very fit to be considered before a question be judged, viz. If be in the ascendant, especially retrograde, the matter of that question seldom or never comes to good, in the seventh either corrupts the judgment of the astrologer. Or is a sign the matter propounded will come from one misfortune to another. If the lord of the ascendant be combust, neither question propounded will take, nor the carent be regulated. The lord of the seventh unfortunate, or in his fall, or terms of the infortunes, the artist shall scarce give a solid judgment. When the testimonies of fortunes and infortunes are equal, defer judgment, it is not possible to know which way the balance will turn, however, defer your opinion till another question better inform you. Chapter 20 What significator, K. Rent, and Quesited, are, and an introduction to the judgment of a question. The K. Rent is he or she that propounds the question and desires resolution. The Quesited is he or she, or the thing sought and inquired after. The significator is no more than that planet which rules the house that signifies the person or thing demanded. As if Aries is ascending, male sign being lord of Aries, shall be significator of the K rent, viz. The sign ascending shall in part signify his corporature, body, or stature, the lord of the ascendant, according to the sign he is in, they and planet in the ascendant, equally mixed together, shall shew his quality or conditions. So that let any sign ascend, what planet is lord of that sign shall be called lord of the house, or significator of the person inquiring, and so that, in the first place, when any question is propounded, the sign ascending in his lord are always given unto him or her that asks the question. Secondly, you must then consider the matter propounded, and see to which of the twelve houses it does properly belong, when you have found the house, consider the sign and lord of that sign, how and in what sign and what part of heaven he is placed, how dignified, what aspect he has to the Lord of the Ascendant, who impedites your significator, who is a friend unto him, viz. 
what planet it is, and what house he is lord of, or in what house posited, from such a man or woman signified by that planet shall you be aided or hindered, or by one of such relation unto you as that planet signifies. If lord of such a house, such an enemy, if lord of a house that signifies enemies, then an enemy verily, if of a friendly house, a friend. The whole natural key of astrology rests in the words preceding, rightly understood. By the examples following, I shall make all things more plain, for I do not desire or will reserve anything whereby the learner may be kept in suspense of understanding what is useful for him, and most fit to be known. In every question we do give there as a consignificator with the carent or lord of the ascendant. Having well considered the several applications and separation of the lords of those houses signifying your questions, as also the, her situation and quality of the aspects she has, and each significator has to each. You may begin to judge and consider whether the thing demanded will come to pass, yea or nay. By what or whose means, the time when, and whether it will be good for the carent to proceed further in his demands. Yea or nay. Chapter 21 to know whether a thing demanded will be brought to perfection, yea, or nay. The ancients have delivered unto us, that there are four ways or means which discover whether a person's question demanded shall be accomplished, yea, or nay. Conjunction First, by conjunction, when therefore you find the Lord of the Ascendant, and the Lord of that house which signifies the thing demanded, hastening to a, and in the first house, or in any angle. And the significators meet with no prohibition or refrenation, before they come to perfect, you may then judge that the thing sought after shall be brought to pass without any manner of let or impediment. The sooner, if the significators be swift in motion, and essentially or accidentally strong, but if this of the significators be in a succeed end house, it will be perfected, but not so soon. If in cad end houses, with infinite loss of time, some difficulty, and much struggling, Aspects of or. Things are also affected, when the principal signifiers apply by or aspect out of good houses and places where they are essentially well dignified, and meet with no malevolent aspect to intervene ere they come to be in perfect or. Aspects of and things are also produced to perfection when the significators apply by aspect, provided each planet have dignity in the degrees wherein they are, and apply out of proper and good houses, otherwise not. Sometimes it happens that a matter is effected when the significators apply by, but it is when there is mutual reception by house, and out of friendly houses, and the separating from the significator of the thing demanded. And applying presently to the Lord of the Ascendant. I have seldom seen anything drought to perfection by this way of opposition, but the carent had been better the thing had been undone. For, if the question was concerning marriage, the parties seldom agreed, but were ever wrangling and disputing, each party repining at his evil choice, laying the blame upon their covetous parents, as having no mind to it themselves. And if the question was about portion or monies, the carent did, it is true, recover his money or portion promised, but it cost him more to procure it in suit of law than the debt was worth, and so have I seen it happen in many other things, and. Translation. Things are brought to perfection by translation of light and nature, in this manner, when the significators both of Kerent and Quesited are separating from, or, or aspects of each other. And some other planet separates himself from one of the significators, of whom he is received, either by house, triplicity, or term, 57 and then this planet applies to the other significator by or aspect. Before he meets with the or aspect of any other planets. He thus translates the force, influence, and virtue of the first significator to the other, and then this intervening planet, or such a man or woman as is signified by that planet, shall bring the matter in hand to perfection. Consider what house the planet interposing or translating the nature and light of the two planets is lord of, and describe him or her, and say to the carent, that such a party shall do good in the business of, and, viz. If lord of the second, a good purse affects the matter, if lord of the third, a kinsman or neighbor, and so of all the rest of the houses, of which more hereafter. Collection. Matters are also brought to perfection, when the two principal significators do not behold one another, but both cast their several aspects to a more weighty planet than themselves, and they both receive him in some of their essential dignities. 
Then shall that planet, who thus collects both their lights, bring the thing demanded to perfection. Which signifies that a person somewhat interested in both parties, and described and signified by that planet, shall perform the thing which otherwise could not be perfected. As many times you see two fall at variance, and of themselves cannot think of any way of accommodation, when suddenly a neighbor or friend accidentally reconciles all differences to the content of both parties, and this is called a collection. In all questions, you are generally to observe this method following, the ascendant represents the person of the K-rent, and the second his estate, the third his kindred, the fourth his father, the fifth his children. The sixth his servant or sickness, the seventh his wife, the eighth the manner of his death, the ninth his religion or journeys, the tenth his estimation or honor, mother, trade, and the eleventh his friends, the twelfth his secret enemies, also understand, that when one asks concerning a woman, or any party signified by the seventh house and the lord thereof, that then the seventh house shall be her ascendant, and signify her person. The eighth house shall signify her estate, and be her second, the ninth house shall signify her brethren and kindred, the tenth shall represent her father, the eleventh her children, or whether apt to have children. The twelfth her sickness and servants, the first house her sweetheart, the second house her death, the third her journey, the fourth her mother, or trade, and the fifth her friends, the sixth her sorrow, care, and private enemies. Let the question be of or concerning a churchman, minister, or the brother of the wife or sweetheart, the ninth house shall represent each of these, but the tenth house shall be significator of his substance, the eleventh house of his brethren. And so in order, and so in all manner of questions, the house signifying the party quesited shall be his ascendant or first house, the next his second house, and so continuing round about the whole heavens of twelve houses. If a question be made of a king or nobleman, the tenth is his first house, the eleventh his second, and, but in nativities, the ascendant always influences the party born, whether king or beggar. These things preceding being well understood, you may proceed to judgment, not that it is necessary you have all that is written in your memory exactly, but, that you be able to know when you are in error, when not. When to judge a question, when not. Of the true time of erecting a figure. The proper time is that when you feel most anxious about any matter, and first form the resolution to erect a figure on the subject, if you find the figure radical, and lay aside all self-love and prejudice. You may safely judge a figure erected for that instant of time. If a person apply to an astrologer, the figure must be taken for the exact time he first speaks on the subject, or, if it be by letter, when it is first read and understood by the artist. If it be not a question, but an event suddenly happening, then the moment of its commencement will shew, by a figure, its result and, as the first setting off on a journey, beginning a letter, or any business, and, or when you first discover the loss of any article, or hear of any event happening, in all these cases, the first impression on your mind is the true moment for the figure. Of the planet or planets which hinder or impedite the thing demanded in any question. In all questions consider carefully what planet it is which obstructs or hinders the perfection of the thing desired. We receive judgment herein from that planet with whom the Lord of the Ascendant be joined, whether by bodily or by aspect, or the significator of the thing inquired after, whether it be the herself. Or that she be partaker with the Lord of the Ascendant or not, or signify the thing demanded. Carefully observe the planet to which the querent significator is joined, or the, and observe how that planet is disposed, and unto whom he is joined. For if the Lord of the Ascendant, or significator of the thing propounded, be joined to an evil planet, evilly disposed, without reception, or if he be not evilly disposed, but be joined to an infortune, and that infortune receive him not. It denotes the destruction of the thing demanded. A planet is ill disposed when he is peregrine, retrograde, combust, also if cadant and behold not the lord of the house or the cusp of the house of the thing demanded. The aspect to the cusp is better than to the lord of the house. If the significator, as above, be joined to an unfortunate planet, viz. one retrograde, combust, or cadent, then observe whether mutual reception intervene, which shews the perfection of the matter, though with much labor and solicitation. If there be no reception, 
the affair will come to nothing though there may have been much probability of its performance. If the Lord of the Ascendant, the, or Lord of the Thing Demanded, or the planet who receives any of them, be free from affliction, though without mutual reception, it perfects the matter with facility. If any one of them be free from the infortunes, and joined with any benevolent planet, who is himself aspect by a malevolent, without mutual reception, the matter will be brought to a good conclusion. Consider carefully whether planets in aspect be without reception, for when they are in reception, things are ever brought to pass, though, if the aspect be evil, with degree of trouble, delay, and consider also, whether any other planet prohibit before the significators join in perfect with an evil planet. If so, it hinders the thing from happening, but if no such prohibition or cutting off the light of the unfortunate occur, by which its malevolence may be taken off, the thing will be affected. If an infortune collect the light of other planets, or if light be translated to an infortune, the matter will not be affected unless there be reception, viz. That the infortune be received by, or disposed of, or ruled by, which is all one thing, the significators. Chapter 22 Questions Concerning the First House If the K-Rent be likely to live long yet or not. Signs of Health and Long Life Consider whether the sign ascending, the Lord thereof, and, be free from affliction, viz. Combustion or, or of the lords of the eighth, twelfth, sixth, or fourth houses, whether they be direct, strong in dignities, swift in motion, angular, especially in the first or tenth houses. Or if in the eleventh or ninth, and in good aspect with, or female sign, or, in the terms of or female sign, these are arguments of health and long life and the contrary, viz. The A.S.C. Or Lord of the First, in bad houses, and afflicted, shew mischief at hand. If the Lord of the Ascendant be under the sun's beams, or going to combustion, which is worse than when he is leaving, or cadent and unfortunate, by being afflicted by those planets having rule in the eighth, or sixth. Or, male sign or in the Ascendant or seventh house peregrine, or in their detriments or retrograde, judge that the K-Rent will not be long-lived, but is near some danger or misfortune, according to the quality of the significators. And of the houses those planets are lord of, which afflict the, and k. The time when any of those accidents shall happen. If the lord of the ascendant be going to, and k. Of, of lords of the eighth, or fourth, see how many degrees he is distant, and in what sign either of them are. And for each degree allow one week in a movable sign, one month in a common sign, and one year in a fixed sign, this is only for example, for the measure of time must be limited according to the other significators concurring in judgment herein. Secondly, consider also how many degrees is from any in fortune, or the lords of the sixth or eighth, according to the signs and houses in which they are found, and their nature and quality. Thirdly, if there be an in fortune in the ascendant, see how many degrees the cusp of the first house wants of the place of the evil planet. Or, if he be in the seventh house, how far it is from the cusp of that house, and compute the time of death, sickness, or misfortune, by the degrees, as they may be in fixed, common, or movable signs. If the Lord of the Ascendant be most afflicted by the Lord of the Sixth, and in the Sixth, or come to combustion in the Sixth, the K-Rent will have very many and tedious sicknesses, which will scarce leave him till his death. This will be more certain if the lords of the ascendant, eighth house, and, be all placed in the sixth. If the lord of the ascendant, or sign ascending, be most afflicted by the lord of the eighth, or by a planet situated in the eighth, judge that the sickness which now afflicts him, or shortly will, will end fatally, and that death is approaching. But if the and other significators are chiefly afflicted by the lords of other houses, judge the misfortune from the nature of the house or houses of which the afflicting planets are lords. And the first origin thereof from some person or thing belonging to that house, wherein you find the afflicting planet posited. Judge thereby a misfortune, but not death. If there be any fixed star, of much power, near the lord of the ascendant or the degree ascending, or with the planet which afflicts any of these, you may judge evil thereby, according to the nature of that star. For which, see the chapter on fixed stars. CAUTION Avoid rash judgments, especially of death. 
This should never be judged by one single testimony, however strong. And though the Lord of the Ascendant be going to combustion in the house of death, observe whether the, or female sign, or if well aspect and strong, throw any good aspect to the Lord of the Ascendant, before he come to perfect with. For then either medicine or natural strength will contradict that malignant influence, or take off part of that misfortune. When two or more of the rules aforesaid occur, you may be more bold. Yet concerning the absolute time of death, I have found it best to be wary. Though you may safely judge that the K-rent will not be long-lived, or else subject to many calamities, and this I know by many verified examples. This knowledge will be useful to those who will use their reason to avoid those casualties their nature or inclinations would run them into point 58. To what part is it best the K-rent should direct his affairs or where may he live most happily? The twelve houses are divided into the four quarters of heaven, east, west, north and south. From the cusp of the first, where they and planets rise, to the cusp of the tenth, is the southeast quarter. The first, is due east. The twelfth, is about two points south of east, the middle of the eleventh, is southeast, the cusp of the eleventh, is about two points east of south, and the tenth, is due south. In like manner, from the tenth to the seventh house is the southwest quarter. And from the seventh to the fourth is the northwest quarter, and, lastly, from the fourth to the ascendant is the northeast quarter. In that quarter wherein you find, female sign, or circle plus, or most of them, direct the k-rent to proceed in that direction, especially if circle plus and be free from combustion and be strong. If or female sign be lords of the eighth, twelfth, or sixth houses, you must avoid them. And avoid that quarter wherein the evil planets are, unless they be essentially strong, and lords of the first, two d, tenth, or eleventh houses, when they may prove friendly. 59. If the Karent desire to live where he may most enjoy health, look to the quarter of the Lord of the Ascendant, or, and whichever is strongest, or casts the best aspect to the degree ascending, to that quarter repair for health. It an increase of wealth be considered, see where the Lord of the 2d, the circle plus, and its dispositor, or any two of them, be, and thither repair for that end. Of this I shall speak in other judgments. What part of life is like to be best? See in what angle or quarter of heaven the fortunate and promising planets are, for in this way of judging we usually give to every house five years, more or less, as the significators promise life or death. Begin with the twelfth, then the eleventh, then the tenth, and k, and so round to the ascendant. If or female sign be in the eleventh or tenth, judge the k-rent to have lived happily from the fifth to the fifteenth year of age, if they be in the eighth or seventh, he will or hath lived contented from fifteen to thirty, if twenty-one, and k. Be in the sixth, fifth, or fourth, house, say that after his middle age, from thirty to forty-five, he may do well, but if the benefits be in the last quarter, his greatest happiness will be in his last days, or after forty-five. If you find the significators very strong, you may add a year to each house. Lastly, the aspects the and Lord of the Ascendant are separated from show what and what manner of accidents have preceded the question. Their next application what may be next expected. If you consider the house or houses the planets they separated from our Lords of, it acquaints you with the matter, nature, person, and quality of the things already happened evil if the aspects were evil, and good if they were good. Also if you note the quality of the next aspect by application, and the well or ill-being and position of the planets applied to, it spews the character of the next succeeding accidents and events, their nature, proportion, and k. And the time when they will happen. Figure 2. An astrological judgment concerning these demands by the K-rent. 1. If you were likely to live long, yeah or not. 2. To what part of the world he were best direct his course. 3. What part of life was likely to be most fortunate? 4. He desired I would relate some of the general accidents which had happened to him already? 5. What accidents in future he might expect? 6. The time when. The stature of the K-rent is shown by Leo, the sign ascending, a fixed star of the first magnitude, of the nature of male sign and, called C.R. Leo, the lion's heart, is near the cusp of the first house, 
in Leo 24 degrees 34. 60 Both the cusp of the first house and the degree wherein Lord of the Ascendant is, are the terms of, they is an aspect to both and female sign, and they in the tenth house, so that the form and stature of the Kerant were decent. He was of middle stature, strongly compacted, neither fat nor fleshy, but comely and graceful, a fair visage, reddish hair, clear skin, some cuts on his right cheek, he was a soldier, and certainly the presence of the fixed star in the ascendant. Which represents the face, occasioned those hurts or scars. 61. As the sign ascending, and its lord, were in the fiery triplicity, and by nature hot and dry, so was this gentleman's temper and condition, being exceedingly valiant, choleric, high-minded, and of great spirit, for is in his exaltation. Yet being into the two fortunes, he was sober, modest, and excellently educated, thereby having great command of his passion, but as was into, he had his times of anger and folly, whereby he pinched prejudiced his affairs. Point sixty two. First query. If live long, and k. The ascendant not vitiated by the lords of the sixth or eighth, the lord of the ascendant in his exaltation no way impedited, pretty quick in motion, in the ninth house, and in terms of. Separating from a female sign applying to of, he strong in the mid heaven, and the malice of male sign restrained by the of, above the earth, the fortunes angular and more potent than the infortunes. I concluded that, according to natural causes, he might live many years, that nature was strong, and he subject to few diseases. This has hitherto proved true, he being yet alive this present March, 1646. 2 D. Query to what part of the world he were best direct his course. Lord of the Ascendant near the cusp of the ninth, and the sign thereof movable, the house of long journeys. I intimated that he was resolving suddenly upon a journey southeast, south, because the quarter of heaven wherein the Lord of the Ascendant is, is south, east, because the sign where is, is east, this he confessed. And as was but two degrees ten foot distant from the cusp of the ninth, he went away within two months. I judged those countries subject to Aries might be propitious. Had his resolution been to stay in England, it might have been good for him, for England is subject to Aries, I would have advised him to steer towards Kent, Essex, Sussex, or Suffolk, for they lie southeast from London. But if sometimes you find a city, town, or kingdom, subject to the sign which promises good, stands not in the direction the sign or quarter of heaven points out as above, observe this rule that if enforced to live in that country, city, and k. Then direct your actions or employment to those parts of that country, and k, which lie east, west, and k, as in the figure is directed. As the applied strongly to the of, and he and female sign were in Taurus, which rules Ireland, I advised him that Ireland would agree with his constitution, and that he might get honour there, as the planet to whom applies is in the house of honour. And the Cairant did go into Ireland, and there performed good service, and obtained a notable victory against the rebels. 3D Query What part of his life would be best? Considering the two fortunes were placed in the tenth, and, and in the ninth, I judged his younger years would be the most pleasant. And male sign being in the eighth, which comes to about the twenty-fourth, twenty-fifth, or twenty-sixth years of his age, I judged about that time many crosses, and that his afflictions first began. And seeing no fortunate planet either in the seventh, sixth, fifth, fourth, or three D houses, I said the remainder of his life, for many years, would be little comfortable, and full of labor and trouble. Yet I judged those calamities should not suddenly come upon him, because applied to of, and wanted almost three degrees of coming to a perfect aspect. Therefore I conceived by means of some person in authority represented by, he should be supported or assisted in his affairs for almost three years after the question. Had been essentially dignified, I should have judged him a more durable fortune. Fourth query What general accidents had happened already? Although it is not usual to be so inquisitive, yet, seeing the figure so radical, I considered from what planets, Lord of the Ascendant, had last separated. The had lately been in male sign, then, then. Now as male sign is lord of the fourth house, signifying lands, and k, and was now in the eighth, 
which signifies the substance of women, I judged he had been molested of late concerning some lands, or the jointure or portion of his wife, or a woman. Wherein I was confirmed the more, as applies to male sign in the eighth house, she being in the querence house of property, which sheathed that the quarrel or strife should be concerning money or things signified by that house. All this was very true. As had lately been in, significator of the querent's wife, I told him that his wife and he had been at great variance. And because her significator did dispose of his circle plus, I judged that she had no mind that he should have any of her estate or manage it, but kept it to her own use. For his retrograde in a fiery sign, and the sign of the seventh fixed, all which shews her to be a woman not willing to be curbed or to submit. This was confessed. Lastly, as was lately in two and in the tenth, I told him that some great lawyer or courtier sixty-three had endeavoured to reconcile the differences between them. And then did now apply to aspect, there seemed, at present, a willingness in both parties to be reconciled. Nor did I see any obstruction in the matter, except, who is in aspect to, did impedite it. I judged, in general, to signify some lawyer, attorney, or writings, but, as he was lord of the querence 2d, it might be because the K-rent would not consent to allow her such a sum of money as might be asked. Or that, his purse being weak, he had not wherewithal to solicit his cause, or being lord of the eleventh, some pretended friend would advise the contrary, or some of her lawyers. Or, as the eleventh is the fifth from the seventh, a child of the querent's wife might be the occasion of continuing the breach. I believe every particular herein proved true, however, this was the way to find the thing which disturbed their unity. Observe, that as female sign, lady of the tenth, doth dispose of lord of the eighth, viz. the wife's fortune, so she had entrusted her estate to a great nobleman. Fifth query what accidents, in future, he might expect. In this query, I first considered, lord of the ascendant, no ways unfortunate or in ill aspect with any planet. But, on the contrary, excellently fortified, I judged he had the wide world to ramble in, for a planet strong, and in no aspect with others, shews a man at liberty to do what he will. And, for many years he might, quote Capax, live in a prosperous condition, and traverse much ground, or see many countries. For Aries, the sign which is in, is movable and on the cusp of the ninth, the house of long journeys which denoted many changes and variety of action in sundry parts. To delay, I observed in his house of substance, applying to in the tenth, and lord of the fifth and eighth, the former the house of children, the latter that of the wife's substance. Hence I gathered, that the K-Rent was desirous to treat with some nobleman, being in the tenth, about the education of his children, and that there might be a salary payable out of the wife's jointure. Such a thing he did settle before he left England. 3. Delay, I found in Virgo Peregrine. For THLY, lord of his 2D, signifying his estate in Pisces, his detriment, yet, in his own terms, afflicted by male sign, and having lately had the of. Hence I judged that he had been in of great want of money a little before the question was asked. And if we note the distance between the of and, we find 6 degrees 21 foot, shewing that he had been in want of money about 6 months and somewhat more, previously to asking the question. This was confessed. 5. Thly, seeing was applying to of, and then, before she got out of the sign Virgo, did occur the of of male sign, I acquainted the K-Rent that, after some years of pleasure, he would be in great danger of losing his life, goods, lands, and fortune. His life, because male sign is in the eighth, his estate, because is in the 2d, and his lands or inheritance, because male sign is lord of the fourth and situated in the eighth house, for the fourth house denotes lands, and. Sixth query, the time when. In this query, I considered the application of two. Which wanting about three degrees, I judged that he might live pleasantly for about three years to come. Two delay, seeing that lord of the ascendant, during his motion through Aries, did not meet any malevolent aspect and had got twenty-six degrees to run through the sign, I gave this nature of judgment, I told him that for about twenty-six months, or until over two years to come, I judged he should live in a free condition, in those parts in which he intended his journey, and. Lastly, 
I considered how many degrees wanted of the of. Longitude of male sign 28 degrees 40. Longitude of 21 18. Difference 722. This difference, if in proportion unto time, and neither give years, because the significators are in common signs and not in fixed. Nor months, because the signs signify somewhat more, but proportion a mean between both, the time limited in this way will amount to about three years and three quarters ere the of male sign to should take effect. But as this query was general, I might have allowed for every degree one year point sixty four after, or about which time, he was in several actions, both dangerous to his person and fortune. And since that time till the present, he has had his intervals of good and ill, but is now under the frown of fortune, and as the at the time of the question was strong, he did overcome all manner of difficulties for many years, and has, in our unlucky differences, had honourable employment on his majesty's part. But as six five is in to male sign, so it was not without the general outcry and exclamations of the people, nor was it his fortune, though in great command, ever to do his majesty any notable piece of service. And he is now for ever, by just sentence of the Parliament, deprived of the happiness of ending his days in England, which might, in some measure, have been foreseen by the of to male sign, he being Lord of the Fourth, the end of all things. Point sixty six. NB. All young beginners should at first write down their judgments on each figure at full length, and afterwards contract their opinions into a narrow compass, by this means they will soon acquire experience. It is well to enter every figure in a book for farther reference, and to remark and register such things as have occurred according to their predictions or otherwise, by which they will be able to correct their future judgments. Chapter 23 If one shall find the party at home he would speak with. The ascendant and its lord are for the k-rent, the seventh and its lord for him you would speak with. But if it be with any relation, take the house signifying that relation and its lord, as, for the father the fourth, for a child the fifth, and for an intimate friend the eleventh. If the lord of the seventh, or quesited significator, be in any of the four angles, the party is at home, but if he be in a succeedent house, he is not far from home, but if in a cadent house, then he is far from home. If you find the Lord of the Ascendant apply to the Quesited's perfect aspect the same day you intend to visit him, you may be assured either to meet him going to his house, or hear of him by the way. Or, if any planet separate from the Lord of the Quesited's house, and transfer his light to the Lord of the Ascendant, you will learn where he is by a person signified by that planet. Describe the planet, and it personates the individual. And the nature of the planet, sign, and quarter of heaven it is in will, by the plurality of testimonies, sheer whether it be male or female. Of a thing suddenly happening, whether it signifies good or evil. Direct your figure of heaven at the exact time of any event happening, or when you first heard of it, then consider who is Lord of the Ascendant, and which planet disposes of an and see if either of these be in the Ascendant, and if more than one, take the most powerful. And let his position be well considered. If he be in good aspect with, or female sign, there will no evil arise from the accident, rumor, or whatever the event may be. But if you find that planet weak in the scheme, combust, or in evil aspect to, male sign, or female sign, there will be some evil occur. If you consider the afflicting planet and his nature and position, you may learn the nature of the misfortune. If it be the lord of the 3D, it will come through some kinsman or neighbor, or by some short journey, if the lord of the 2d cast the ray, or the evil planet be in the 2d, it denotes loss of money, 67 if the lord of the fourth. Trouble about houses, and, or by means of a father or wife's mother, if the fifth, by intemperance, or by children, and, and so of the rest. Point 68. Query, what mark, mole, or scar has the k-rent on any part of his body? This is useful to prove that a question is radical, and to satisfy skeptics of the truth of the science. When you have, upon any demand, erected the querent's figure, observe what member of man's body the ascending sign represents. For upon that part of his body will the querent have a mole, mark, or scar, as, if the ascendant be Aries, the same will be on the head, if Taurus, it will be on the neck, if Gemini, on the arms or shoulders, and 
69 And also in the part ruled by the sign in which the Lord of the Ascendant is, will there be another mark. The signs on the cusp of the sixth house, and that in which the Lord of the sixth is, will give other marks on the parts they rule. Also the sign in which is found will give a mark in that part it governs. If give the mark, it is dark, obscure, or black, male sign usually gives a red mole, but if he be in a fiery sign, it is generally a cut or scar. If the sign or planet signifying the mark or mole be much afflicted, the mark, and k, will be more obvious and eminent. If the sign or planet be masculine, the mark is on the right side of the body, but if they be feminine, on the left side. And if the significator of the mole, and k, be above the horizon, the mark or mole will be on the forepart, or visible to the eye, or on the outside of the member, and k. But if the planet be below the earth, it will be found on the inside, of hinder part, or not visible. If few degrees are on the cusp of the house, or the planet signifying the mole, and k. Be in few degrees of the sign, the mark, mole, and k. Will be in the upper part of the member. If they be in the middle of the sign, it will be in the middle of the member or part ruled by the sign. But if the latter degrees ascend, or are on the sixth, or their lords, or be in the latter degrees of a sign, then will the mark, mole, or scar be near the lower part of the member. If your question be radical, and the time rightly taken, the above rules will always exactly hold good. And so will they, mutatis mutandis, upon the body of the quesited. For if a person inquire concerning his wife, then the sign on the seventh and its lord will shew the woman's marks, and the sign on the twelfth, the sixth from the seventh, and its lord will shew two other marks. Many times if the bee in or, the carent has some blemish in or near his eyes, and this is ever true, if the or be in angles, and or be afflicted by Mars.70. Whether one absent be dead or alive. If the quesited have no relation to the carent, then the ascendant, its lord, and shall signify the absent person.71 But if the party inquired after be a relation, then take the house and its lord which signifies that relation. As the 3d for a brother or sister, the 4th for a father, the 6th for a paternal uncle or aunt, the 10th for a mother, and k. In judging this question, see whether the quesited's lord of the 1st and 8th be joined corporally together in the 8th, or be in from the 6th or 8th. These are tokens of his being sick or near to death. See if there be any translation of light between the Lord of his Ascendant and the Eighth, or if the Lord of the Eighth being in his Ascendant, the Lord of his Ascendant be also in the Eighth. Or the Lord of the Eighth in the Fourth, and the Lord of the Fourth in the Eighth, these are all tokens that the party is dead, especially if his significator be much afflicted by ill aspects, and the evil planets be angular, and the good ones cadent. If the Lord of his Ascendant be separating from ill aspect of the Lord of the Sixth, the absent party has been lately sick, if from the Lord of the Eighth, he has been near death, but is not dead, without other striking testimonies, as above, concur. If from the Lord of the Twelfth, he has been troubled with anxiety about arrests or fear of imprisonment, and if his significator be in the Twelfth, he is in much trouble by means of a private enemy. And if in a fixed sign, and other testimonies of trouble agree, he is in prison. If he separate from the Lord of the 2D by ill aspect, he is now suffering by want of money if from the Lord of the 7th, he has had some quarrel or contention. If the 9th, trouble on journeys or by law, and k. And so of the other houses. I have ever found that if the Lord of his ascendant be in the 9th, 10th, or 11th, though reported dead, he was alive. If you find him alive, and would know when you will hear from or see him, Observe in the ephemeris when the Lord of the Quirin's eleventh and the Quesited's ascendant come to or aspect, about that time news of him will arrive. If the apply to or of his significator, then allow a day, week, or month, for each degree she be distant, according as the significators may be placed in angles, succedent or cadent houses, and the signs be movable, common, or fixed. 72. Figure 3. The above figure was for resolution of the following queries. First. If a party might be found at home. 2d The thing suddenly happening, whether good or ill is about to follow. 3d What moles or marks the carent has. Fourth. 
If one absent be dead or alive. First query, a woman demanded whether her son was with his master at her own house. In this figure, female sign lady of the ascendant denotes the K-rent. The fifth house is that of children, and describes the matter inquired of. I found, Lord of the Fifth, Youth Significator, in the East Angle, one argument that the party was at home at his mother's house. The was applying to of Lord of the Fourth, the Significator of the Quirant's dwelling, I judged that she would find him there at her coming home, which she did. Now, had I found, Lord of the Fifth, in the Tenth, which house signifies the Master. Or had separated from, the Youth Significator, and then applied to, the being in an angle, I would have judged him at his master's house. I considered further, that the 25th of July following at 2 p.m. The significators of the mother and son, and female sign, came to aspect, and therefore I judged that she should see him at that time, which she did. For usually about that day when the significators come to or aspect, which may be seen in the ephemeris, it is very probable that news of, or a letter from, the quesited will arrive, if the distance will permit. But if the K rent inquisited be not far asunder, without question they meet on that very day. Had the party inquired for been a stranger, he would have been denoted by male sign Lord of the Seventh. And being in the 2D, a succeedent house, I should have said he is not at home, but yet not far from home. And as the sign Sagittarius is eastern, and the 2D house is northeast, I should judge him in that direction. And as Sagittarius governs fields, hills, or high grounds, one should direct a messenger, if sent for him, to go in that direction, and look for him in such places, hut if it were in a town, as Sagittarius governs stables, fireplaces, and I should cause him to be sought near a stable, smith's or butcher's shop, and as male sign delights in such places. 2D query, the thing suddenly happening, whether good or ill is about to follow. They is here lord of the sign he is in. Is lord of Pisces, where is, female sign is lady of the ascendant, and is casting it to the ascendant, and is into, and he in the ascendant. From all which we might safely have judged, had this been the time of a sudden accident, or thing done, that it could not have redounded to the querent's injury. But had female sign been nearer to of male sign, he being in the 2D, I should have of judged that the querent would have received some loss of money shortly, and so of the rest point seventy three. Three D query what moles or marks the Kerent has. I find twenty five degrees of Libra ascending and in the ascendant, which signifies the face. This Kerent had a wart or mole on the right side of her face, near her mouth, for and Libra are masculine. And as the latter degrees of Libra ascend, so the Kerent confessed a mole on the lower part of her reins towards the haunches. Aries being the sign of the sixth, should she had one on the forehead, near the hair, for the cusp of the house is but four degrees. Male sign lord of the sixth, being in Sagittarius a masculine sign and under the earth, shoot a mole on the right thigh, towards the middle of it, on the back part, or that part which is not visible. The in twenty-seventh degree of Pisces, a feminine sign, under the earth, I told her she had one mole under and towards the extremity of her left foot. The Quesited being her son, had Pisces for his ascendant, which denoted a mole on the left side of his cheek. And as Pisces signifies the foot, so he had one on the left foot a little below the ankle, as few degrees ascend. The sixth from the fifth is the tenth in the figure, which having four degrees Leo, shewed that near his right side, below his breast, he had some scar, mole, or mark. In this way follow the directions of the rule. Fourth query, whether one absent be dead or alive. In the aforesaid figure, the ascendant therein and female sign its ruler, as also, are the significators of the party absent. The ascending sign and therein describe his person, 74 and and female sign shew his condition. The and female sign are free from any evil aspect of the lord of the eighth, and a benefit is in the ascendant, and female sign in the ninth, I should therefore pronounce the absent in health. But female sign having been recently into male sign, lord of the 2d and 6th, he had been lately in trouble about money, and also inclined to a feverish state. But by in the ascendant, and into female sign, should say that medicine, or such a person as is described by, had relieved him. 
And as Lord of the Eleventh applies to a of, both of them in signs of long ascension, which is equivalent to a, 75 I should judge the Kerent to have news of the absent about 10 weeks from the time of the question. Because wants 10 degrees of the of. If the absent be known to be at a short distance from the Quesited, I should have judged that in 10 days they should hear of him, because the signs are movable. Point seventy six. Chapter 24 Of a ship, and her safety or destruction. The Ascendant and the signify the ship and cargo, the Lord of the Ascendant, those that sail in her. If you find a malevolent, having dignities in the Eighth, placed in the Ascendant, or the Lord of the Ascendant in the Eighth in ill configuration with the Lords of the Eighth, Twelfth, Fourth, or Sixth, or if the bee combust, and under the earth. You may judge that the ship is lost, and the men drowned. But if you find reception between the significators at the same time, the ship was wrecked, but some of the crew escaped, if all the preceding significators be free from affliction, then both ship and cargo are safe. And if there be reception, the more so. If the ascendant and be unfortunate, and the lord of the ascendant fortunate, the ship is lost, but the men saved. But when the carent demand, of any ship setting forth, and the state of the ship ere she return, and what may be hoped of the voyage. Then, behold the angles of the figure, and see if the fortunes are therein, and the infortunes remote from angles, cadent, combust, or under the beams, then you may judge the ship will go safe with all her lading. But if you find the infortunes in angles, or succeeding houses, there will chance some hindrance unto the ship. If the infortune be, the vessel will strike ground. If male sign, and he be in an earthy sign, he will signify the same, or very great danger and damage. But if the fortunes cast their benevolent rays to the place of or male sign, and the lords of the angles and of the dispositor of the be free, then the ship shall labor hard, and suffer damage. Yet the greater part of the crew and cargo shall be preserved. If male sign afflict the lords of the angles, and dispositor of, the crew will be in danger by enemies or pirates, and if there be any additional evil configurations among these significators, there will be quarrels on board, thieving, and purloining, and with bloodshed, causes thefts only, if so situated, but no bloodshed. If the signs afflicted by, male sign, and, if he be ill aspect, be those that signify the vessel's bottom, or parts under water, she springs a leak. If the signs be unfortunate in the mid-heaven, fiery signs, and male sign therein, there is danger of lightning or fire, if airy signs and female sign afflict, damage by high winds. If male sign be in the fourth, and afflicted, it denotes fire beneath. And if be with him, spontaneous combustion. If the sign be Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius, she may be set on fire by an enemy. If be in the mid-heaven, and shew damage, it will be by rotten sails or gear, and bad weather, foul winds, and an infortune in the ascendant shews damage to the fore part of the vessel, and if the lord of the ascendant be retrograde, it denotes that she will put into some harbour. And if he be in a movable sign, she returns to the very port she sailed from. If the lord of the eighth afflict the lord of the first, and he in the eighth, the ship will be injured according to the nature of the planet afflicting. If he impedite the s dispositor, the lord of the ascendant and, it shews the death of the master, and probably of his mate. If it be circled plus which is afflicted, it foreshews evil to the cargo or a head market. But if, female sign, or be in the second, or assist its lord, or the lord of circle plus, it shews good profit, which will be according to their strength. If the lords of the ascendant, of the and their dispositors be slow in motion, the voyage will be long. If they be swift, the ship will return quickly. If there be ill aspects between the lord of the first and the dispositor of without reception, there will be discord among the seamen, and with them and the owner. If the lord of the ascendant be strongest, the seamen will prevail, but if the lord of the house where is, then the owner. If the dispositor of circle plus be not with it, or the lord of the 2d be weak, there will be scarcity of provisions, and, if they be in watery signs, of fresh water. Parts of a ship ruled by the signs. Aries the breast, or bows of the ship. Taurus the cutwater, and parts beneath. Gemini the rudder, or stem. Cancer the bottom, 
or floor. Leo the upper works. Virgo the hold. Libra the parts about the water's edge. Scorpio the seamen's berths, or cabin. Sagittarius the seamen themselves. Capricorn the ends of the vessel. Aquarius the master, or captain. Pisces the oars, in galleys, the wheels, in steam vessels, and the sails in others. Figure 4. An example of a ship at sea. In December 1644, a merchant, in London, having sent a ship to the coast of Spain to trade, had several times news that his ship was wrecked. He would have given sixty pounds per cent. To insure her, but no insurance company would meddle, no, not upon any terms. A friend of the merchant asked, what I thought of the ship, if sunk or living. I gave my opinion, that the ship was not lost, but did live, and though of late in some danger, yet was now recovered. My judgment was founded on the considerations in act following. In the first place, the ascending degrees of cancer shewed the bulk or body of the ship. I find casts his from a cardinal sign, out of the eleventh house, very near to the ascendant. After his I find in her exaltation, casting it to the ascendant, interposing her between the aspects of and in the seventh, which otherwise had been dangerous, for all aspects to the ascendant in this judgment are dangerous. From the ascendant afflicted by of, and presence of fixed stars of his nature, I judged the ship was of s nature, sluggish, heavy, and not very sound. And cancer, being a weakly sign, made me judge the ship was of such nature. And it was so confessed. From hence, and in the ninth, I judged that the ship had been in some distress in her voyage, occasioned by such casualties as signifies, viz. Some leak or damage in or near her breast, as Aries, the sign is in, represents that part. But as, Lady of the Ascendant, is in the eleventh in her exaltation, in no way impeded it, and by a benevolent aspect applying to Anne, and is so near the body of, and as all the significators are above the earth, and no infortunes in angles. I judged the ship, sailors, and officers, were safe, and in good condition. The next query was. Where the ship was, upon what coast, and when any news would come of her. Herein I considered the was fixed, and in the eleventh house. Taurus is a southern sign, but in an east quarter of heaven, verging to the south, her application is to of, and he in Capricorn a south sign in west angle. All this made me judge that the ship was southwest from London, and upon our own coasts, or near those which lie between Ireland and Wales. I judged her at that time to be in some harbour, because Taurus, where is, is fixed, and in the eleventh, or house of comfort and relief, and that she was put into repair. It proved that she was in a harbour in the west. Because applied to of Anne, and they in an angle, and all three very swift in motion, and did want but a few minutes of a perfect, I judged there would be news, or a certain discovery of the ship in a very short time. The significators being so near a perfect aspect, I said, either that night, or within two days, the news would arrive. And so it proved. And, observe, that it gave me good encouragement when I saw circle plus disposed of by male sign, and that, to whom applied, was in reception with male sign. Also, that did so well apply to, Lord of the 2D, or House of Substance, a sign that the merchant should gain by that adventure. Besides, usually when applies to a good aspect of a retrograde planet, it brings the matter to an issue one way or other speedily, and when least expected. And it is a general maxim, that if apply to the fortunes, or by good aspect to any planet or planets in meets, it is reason that we hope well, and c. Figure 5. Example of another ship at S.E.A. Here the ascendant and our significators of the ship, and those who sail in her. The lately separated from a of, lord of the eighth and ninth, and afterwards applied to of, then to of, lord of the twelfth and fourth houses. This shewed that the ship had lately been in danger of shipwreck, and as the had been void of course, so had no news been heard of her. For, after being in of in fixed signs, and at the time in a cadent house, and then not next applying to the good aspect of any benefit planet, but being void of course, and then again continuing her application out of the fourth to. 
who is still Lord of the Eighth, though it was by good aspect. And then to of, her dispositor, who is in his detriment in entering combustion, and, dispositor of, subterranean, and with male sign and in term of an infortune. And, moreover, as male sign is in his fall here the cusp of the 2d, I judged, by all this, lost to the merchant. Besides circle plus, is in the sixth disposed by, he retrograde and afflicted in the 2d in no aspect to circle plus, though also into it, as also. There being so many ill testimonies, I judged he would lose much, if not all, in this ship, and so consequently that she was cast away. And so it proved. The principal significator in the fourth and afflicted, was a sure sign of the ship sinking. Chapter 25 Judgments Concerning the Second House Whether the Kerent shall be rich? Or have a competent fortune? By what means attain it? The time when? And of it shall continue? Whoever interrogates, the Lord of the Ascendant and the are invariably his significators. Consider the sign on the 2D, its Lord, and the planets therein, or aspecting the cusp or its Lord, also the circle plus. If you find the planets all angular or even succeed and, if direct and swift in motion, it is a good sign. If in good houses, direct, and moderately well dignified, it is also a good sign. Those two rules are general. If the Lord of the First, the, and Lord of the 2D, be joined together, or if they have good aspect to the Lord of the 2D, or if or female sign cast a good aspect to circle plus, or if the Lord of the 2D or B in the Ascendant, or Lord of the First in the 2D. Or benefits do ascend or be found unafflicted in the 2D, or be there, all these are testimonies that the K rent need fear no poverty. As the significators may be strong, and the testimonies numerous, the K rent shall be in proportion rich. Always remember to judge according to his condition in life, for, quod capax, it shall happen to the interrogator. By what means attain it? If the Lord of the 2D be in the ascendant, he may gain a fortune unexpectedly, especially if well aspect by, and this planet be strong, or gain it without much labor. If the Lord of the 2D or the moon promise substance by any mutual aspect, observe from what house the aspect is, or what house rules, if neither of these promise substance, see what house circle plus and its dispositor be in. If the planet assisting be in the ascendant, the k rent will gain by his own industry, and, if he be a mechanic, by his own labor, care, or invention. But if the assisting planet be not lord of the 2D, he will gain by well managing his own affairs, estate, and, or by such things as are of the nature of that planet, the sign he is in being also considered. If the lord of the 2D be in the 2D, he shall profit by his own industry. If the lord of the 3D Benefit the Lord of the 2D, Circle Plus, or other significators of wealth, he will be assisted by his neighbors, brethren, or kindred. Or by removing to that quarter from whence the Lord of the 3D throws the aspect. The Lord of the 4th gives wealth by means of his father, or some aged person, or by taking lands, or purchasing houses, and Or by well managing money lent him by his kindred or neighbors, or property left him by his ancestors. The Lord of the Fifth promises gain by cards or other gambling, or stock jobbing, or by holding office as an ambassador or messenger. If a man of low quality ask, by keeping an inn, and, or being porter to some institution, or connected with theatres, and, and such things as the Fifth House denotes. It may be by well managing his father's estate, or receiving something thereout. The Lord of the Sixth gives gain by servants, dealing in small cattle, and, or by turning surgeon, and, if capable. The Lord of the Seventh gives gain by means of a wife, by the sword or warfare, by contracting bargains in his way of business, or by gaining some lawsuit, and. The Lord of the Eighth or planet therein denotes legacies, or a wife's portion, which may be unexpected at the time, especially if assist, or he may suddenly go and settle in some country wherein he shall thrive and grow rich. The Lord of the Ninth, and, gives property by the wife's relations, or some neighbor of hers when he did marry, or some clergyman or lawyer shall befriend him, or if Cancer or Pisces be in the ninth, he may thrive by a distant sea voyage. 
But if an earthy sign be there, he may gain by removing to the part signified by that sign, and by dealing in the commodities belonging to that country, and the Lord of the Tenth, and promises gained by the service of the king or some great man, holding office, and if the carent be young and of small fortune, let him learn some trade or business that may be shown by the sign and planet in the tenth. The eleventh and its lord denote unexpected benefit by friends, or the employment of some king, nobleman, or other great person. If the fortunate aspect be cast from the twelfth or by its lord, the carent will advance his fortune by great cattle or horse races, or if the sign be human, that is, Gemini or Aquarius, by means of prisons, and such as being governor or turnkey of a jail, a sheriff's officer, and if the sign be Aries, Taurus, or Capricorn, by cattle, if Virgo, by corn. Herein mix your judgment with reason. The most assured testimonies of riches are if the lords of the first, 2d, and be joined in the 2d, first, tenth, seventh, fourth, or eleventh houses, or if not in, if they apply by or and be in mutual reception. If they apply by or, yet have reception, the carent will gain wealth, though with much labor and pains. Signs of poverty, and its cause. If you find that the carent will not be rich, and he desire to know why, that he may the better order his affairs and be wary of such difficulties as may threaten, then carefully observe as follows. The planet afflicting most the lords of the 2D in first, the circle plus, or their dispositors, or the cusp of the 2D or planet therein, shews the cause. If the lord of the first, then the carent himself is the cause, and the house in which he is found may shew how. The lord of the 2D shews want of money or sufficient capital to set up with. The lord of the 3D shews that his kindred or neighbors will oppose him much, or undersell him, and and in this way you may go through the twelve houses, judging the reverse of what you were instructed when the aspects, and were good. CAUTION If the lord of the 2d or the dispositor of circle plus be in fortunes, yet be strong and well aspect, they may denote gain as well as or female sign, though with less satisfaction and more painstaking. Also or female sign being afflicted, may obstruct as well as any other. For every planet must do the work for which he is by providence assigned. Again, wherever may be found, he denotes evil by that house, as if in the sixth, by evil servants, sickness, and if the carent shall obtain the substance he hath lent, or which he demands. The lord of the ascendant and are the querent significators, the lord of the two d denotes his substance. 77. The seventh and its lord denote the person of whom he means to ask the money, and the eighth and its lord, and his property. Observe whether the lord of the ascendant or be joined with the significator of the quesited's property, or be in good aspect with such significator. If this be so, and that significator be a fortune or very strong, he shall assuredly receive the money. If he be an infortune, and there be reception between him and the querent significator, the carent will also receive his money, and but if the quesited significator be an evil planet, and there be no reception, he will hardly ever gain his desire, or with so much delay and difficulty, he would rather wish the thing undone. In like manner if the lord of the eighth be in the 2d with reception, it is a sign he shall gain his money, and but if the lord of the seventh or eighth be in the first or 2d without reception with the querent significators or lord of the 2d, he shall not have his desire, but may rather expect prejudice in the thing demanded. If the lord of the first and be joined to a fortune that has dignity in the sign ascending or intercepted in the ascendant, the matter will be affected. Or if joined to an infortune having such dignity, with reception, the business will be dispatched. Or, if the significators be joined to a fortune in the tenth or eleventh, though without reception, the matter shall be perfected. If one shall acquire gain, or profit, salary, and from the government, or any nobleman, or person of high rank, and this question will serve for any other of the like nature, where the carent is much inferior in rank to the person he looks to for accomplishing his desires. The ascendant, its lord and the represent the carent as usual, and the tenth and its lord the quesited. 
The 2D is the house of property for the K rent, and the 11th for the person inquired about. If you find the Lord of the first or the joint to the Lord of the 11th, or to any fortune in the 11th, not afflicted, you may affirm that the K rent shall obtain his money, salary, or debt, and or if it happen that the and lord of the ascendant be joined to an evil planet with reception, he may expect to succeed, but not without much solicitation, and many weary efforts. If there be any evil aspect between the significators, one being an infortune and without reception, the K-Rent will never gain what he desires. In this question be very careful to observe the planet's true essential dignities, and their mutual receptions, and by which of their mutual dignities they receive each other. 78. Of the time when the aforesaid events treated of in this chapter may happen. Herein diligently note to what planet the Lord of the Ascendant or applies, by or aspect. Consider how many degrees are wanting of the perfect aspect or, and say that it shall be as many days as there are degrees, if they be both in cadent houses, if both in succeedent houses, so many weeks, if both in angles, so many months. But if the matter cannot possibly be effected in days or weeks, but requires much time, instead of months say years, and of weeks say months, and of days say weeks, and And if one planet be in an angle, and the other in a succeedent house, they shall signify months, one succeedent, and the other cadent, they denote weeks, and when one be angular and the other cadent, months. 79. Some of the ancients have said, that if, at the time of a question, the planet which signifies the perfection of the thing demanded be in the same sign with the Lord of the Ascendant. The matter shall be brought to conclusion when they come to bodily conjunction. If the Lord of the Ascendant be the heavier planet, and whether there he reception or not. But if the Lord of the Ascendant be the lighter planet, not without reception, unless they be in an angle when the conjunction hall be effected, or that the other planet be in one of his own houses, especially that which is termed his joy. 80. I have observed that reception by house, though the aspect were a, or even, brings things to perfection, but that other receptions avail not in this case. As regards the time when. I find that if a fortune, or the, or lord of the thing quesited, be in the ascendant, and have any essential dignities therein, the number of degrees between the planet and the cusp of the ascendant denote the time. Days, if a movable sign, and the business capable of being quickly perfected, months, or years, according to the sign and quality of the business. Figure 6. Example, a tradesman of London, in the year 1634, propounded the following queries. I have seen the experience of my judgment. Queries, 1 is t, if he should be rich, or subsist himself without marriage. 2 d, by what means he should attain wealth. 3 d, the time when. 4. If it would continue. First query. If the K-Rent should be rich, or subsist himself without marriage. I first considered the general disposition of the planets, and found the major number, especially the fortunes, swift in motion, well posited, and not afflicted. Also, that female sign, Lady of the Ascendant, was near Sior Leonis, a star of great virtue and influence, increasing in light, almost culminating. Hence I formed this general judgment, that he should live in good rank and quality among his neighbors, and quod capax, according to his calling. Secondly, whether he should be rich or not. I considered that the Lord of the 2D is in the Ascendant, and being also Lord of Circle Plus, is near Spica Virgina, in 18 degrees Libra. 81 then, a general significator of wealth, was in his exaltation and angular, casting his to the cusp of the ascendant, which in signs of long ascension we usually repute a point 82 also, that separated from a of male sign, Lord of the 2D, and significator of the thing demanded, and of, and applied to female sign, the querent significator, transferring the light and virtue of both male sign and female sign, to the proper significator of the K-Rent. The dispositor of is, and he strong and powerful, the circle plus in a fixed sign, and in the terms of male sign, from all which I judged that the K-Rent would acquire an estate, and have a competent fortune. But as it is signified by an infortune, that he would attain it by labor and care. And so to this day he hath. And as male sign, lord of the seventh, 
the house of marriage, hath the most material signification of the thing demanded, viz. Wealth, I advised him to marry, and said, that without marriage he should not so well subsist. 2d Query By what means he should attain riches? In this scheme, male sign being the planet signifying wealth, as lord of the circle plus in the second house, and placed in the ascendant, signifies property got by the querent's own industry. And as male sign is lord of the seventh, I said, he would marry a woman who would produce him a good fortune, and it more than he could well look for, and of a settled nature, which I judged by female sign, lady of his wife's house of property, being so well fortified. And as was lady of the tenth, house of trade, and was transferring the light of and male sign to female sign his significator, I advised him to be diligent in his profession, and that he would thereby gain a good estate. He has since had a good fortune with his wife, money, and land, and been very successful in trade. Jupiter, so strong in the tenth, was an infallible sign, according to natural causes, of plenty of trade, or a gainful profession. 3d Query The time when All the significators oriental, and five planets swift in motion, promise property in a short time after the question, and male sign, the chief significator of the thing inquired after, being swift in motion, argues the same. The distance from the ascendant to male sign being about two degrees, signified about two years, at which time he had a portion with his wife. The wanted six degrees twenty-seven foot of her with female sign, hence I concluded that about 1640 he should have very great trading, and live in excellent repute, and as female sign is seated on the cusp of the eleventh, or house of friends, that he should have many good friends, and by whom he should increase his estate. Fourth query, if the K-rent should continue rich? This I resolved by the cusp of the 2D, which being a fixed sign and circle plus therein, and in his exaltation and angular, and female sign, the dispositor of male sign, being in Leo, a fixed sign, as also the in Leo, all implied that he should continue in a plentiful estate. And that the riches God should bless him with would be permanent, and that he should never be reduced to want or poverty. There was only one thing arising out of the figure, of which I cautioned him. The Lord of the Eleventh, behold circle plus by, as also the cusp of the 2D. And as here signifies friends, I exhorted him to avoid confiding in solar men, though of much friendship with him. In all such cases describe the planet afflicting, and you give caution sufficient. Point 83. Chapter 26. Of the Third House, viz. Of brethren, sisters, kindred, news, short journeys, etc. The chief, but not the only, questions regarding this house are those concerning brethren, cousins, or neighbors, and short journeys. Query. Shall the Kerent agree well with his brother or neighbor? The Kerent has the time significators, the quesited is shown by the lord of the 3D, the cusp of the 3D, and the planets therein. If the Lord of the 3D be a benevolent planet, or be in the Ascendant, or there be a fortune in the 3D, or the respective Lords be in good aspect or mutual reception, or the Lord of the Ascendant throw a good aspect to the cusp of the 3D. No doubt unity will endure between the parties. If the evil planets, or, be found in the 3D, unless very well dignified in aspect, it denotes discord, and the Kerent may expect little good from the Quesited. If there be evil aspects between their significators, the same judgment holds. And if the significators are afflicted by being peregrine, retrograde, or combust, it shews hatred or untoward conduct. Or in the third, shews the neighbors are ill-mannered and the kindred selfish. If male sign be there, the neighbors are dishonest, and the relations treacherous. If they be out of their dignities, these evils are increased, and if ill planets be in the ascendant, or be there, the Kerent is himself ill-conducted. Of an absent brother? The first, and its lord N, are for the Kerent, the three D for the Quesited, and the fourth, his house of substance, and K. Consider in what condition the lord of the three D is, in what house, and how aspect. If he be in the three D, free from evil aspects of the infortunes, you may judge that the absent brother is in health. If he be in his own house, but afflicted by the evil planets, without reception, judge that he is in health, 
but in great perplexity and sorrow. But if they so aspect him with reception, say, that he is in distress, but that he will shortly evade it, and rid himself of his troubles. If the fortunes aspect him by or without reception, or by or with reception, you may judge him to be in health, and well contented. And if they aspect him by or, and there be reception, you may tell the carent that his brother is healthy and happy, and wants nothing in this world. If the Lord of the Three D be in the fourth, without aspects of the malefics, he is endeavouring to get property in the country where he then lives. If he be in the fifth, and joined by, or good aspect to the Lord of the fifth, if the latter be not much afflicted, he is healthy, jocund, and merry, and likes the society he is in. If it be a fortune, and there be a reception between the lords of the two houses, the three D and fifth, his three D, you are assured of his happy condition. Yet if it be a malefic, or he be an evil aspect with a malefic in the fifth, without reception, or if he be void of course while in the fifth, you may judge that he is restless and discontented in his present abode. Generally, if he be afflicted in any but the sixth, eighth, or twelfth houses, he is not very comfortable, yet not in ill health. If he be in the eighth, and well aspect by a fortune, he is not in danger, yet he is indisposed. If he be joined to evil planets by bad aspects out of the sixth, he is in an infirm and dangerous state. The same, if the lord of his sixth be in the three D, unless he have dignities therein. If, in this case, the lord of the three D be with the lord of the eighth, or entering combustion at the same time, with other testimonies of his being ill, there is reason to fear that he will die. If you find his significator in the seventh, he is still in the country he went to, and indifferently well. If the Lord of the Three D be in the Eighth, he apprehends that he shall die. And there is great fear of his death if his significator be combust, in with the Lord of the Eighth, or afflicted by evil planets. If his significator be in the Ninth, he is gone to some country further off than when he first went, or is forming some clerical, regal, or scientific connection, or is employed travelling. If he be in the Tenth, and well aspect by the fortunes, especially if with reception, he has got some good employment, or office, in the country to which he is gone. If combust and afflicted, there is fear that he is dead. If he be in the eleventh, and joined to the lord of the eleventh, it denotes he is well situated, with his friends, and happy, though if evil planets afflict him, he is not so well pleased with his present condition. If he be in the twelfth, and well aspect, he is engaged with horses or cattle, and keeping an inn, or is turned grazier, and if ill aspect in this or the 2d house, he is in trouble, and if in a fixed sign, probably in prison. Yet, if his significator be retrograde, he will manage to escape. If in the ascendant, Tai is very pleasantly situated, and, unless ill aspect, he is much respected. If any other person than a brother be inquired of, his condition may be known by applying the foregoing rules to that person's significator. As, for example, if the quesited be the querent's father, let the lord of the fifth, the two d from the fourth, be considered for his substance. And if the quesited be a friend, let the eleventh house represent him, and then the twelfth will be his two d, or house of property, the eighth will be his tenth, or house of honor, and, and so all round the twelve houses. But understand that, though every house has its sixth, eighth, and twelfth, yet of every person inquired after, the sixth house of the figure shall signify his sickness, the eighth his death, the twelfth his imprisonment. Of reports, news, rumors, and k. Whether true or false. And whether importing good or evil. That which I found true by experience, in our late sad times of war, was this, if I found in the ascendant, tenth, eleventh, or three d house, separating by benevolent aspect from any planet, and then applying by good aspect to the Lord of the First. I say, I found the report or rumour true, but always tending to the good of the Parliament, let the report be good or ill. But if applied to the Lord of the Seventh by any good aspect, I was sure we had the worst, and our enemies the victory. If the was void of course, the news proved of no moment, usually vain and false, and soon contradicted. If the N were in or, without reception, and neither casting a good aspect to the degree ascending, the news was false, 
and reported purposely to alarm us. The time of erecting the figure was ever the hour when I first heard the rumor. But, if another propounded it, then that very minute when it was first proposed. If, on hearing of any matter, you desire to know whether it will be prejudicial to you or not, observe whether or female sign be in the ascendant, or or in any of their essential dignities, in or to the Lord of the Eleventh. You may then judge that the party inquiring shall receive no damage thereby. But if the Lord of the Sixth, Eighth, or Twelfth, be in the Ascendant, or an evil aspect to the Lord of the Ascendant, or a malefic retrograde in the Ascendant, or afflicting its Lord, or the degree ascending. Then the K-Rent will be prejudiced by the matter. But if it concern the public, some damage has happened to their ministers or friends. In this case, if denote the evil, he shews plundering, loss of corn, or cattle, and k. Mail sign causes straggling parties to be cut off, and military violence, bloodshed, and k. the miscarriage of letters, or evil to the literary community, messengers, and k. causes distress to the king, or some chief or leader. Female sign causes ill to some gentlemen or their friends. The denotes violence by mobs, and if she be afflicted, injuries are done to the people. If rumors be true or false, according to the ANC and TS. If the Lord of the Ascendant, the Moon, or her Dispositor, be in an angle or a fixed sign, and in good aspect to the fortunes, or the, you may judge the rumor is true. If they be in movable signs, cadent, and ill aspect by the infortunes, judge the reverse, and consider the majority of the testimonies. When the angles of the figure, the, an, are in fixed signs, and these latter separate from infortunes and apply to fortunes, the rumor is true. Evil rumors hold true, or will be in some way verified, if the angles of the fourth and tenth are fixed, and the therein. If you have evil news, yet if either fortune be in the ascendant, or the fortunate, it is a strong argument that the rumors are false, and that they will turn rather to good than evil. Mercury, or the planet to whom he or applies, being retrograde or afflicted, or if either of these two be lord of the ascendant, it signifies that the rumor shall vanish to nothing, or shall be converted to good. If the lord of the ascendant be under the beams of eighty-four, the matter is kept secret, and few shall ever know the truth. Of counsel or advice given by a neighbor, or relation, friend, and k. Erect the figure when first the party begins to break their mind, and you shall know whether they really wish you well or not, and whether it be good to follow their advice. If there be in the tenth house either, female sign, or, or, or if apply by good aspect to the Lord of the Ascendant, judge they come with an honest heart, and the advice is intended for your good. If, male sign, or be there, or if apply by evil aspect, they intend deceitfully. Halley affirms, that if the sign ascending be movable, and then Lord of the Ascendant are both in movable signs, the party comes to deceive. 85. Of short journeys, whether good to go or not. By a short journey, I mean such distances as a person may go and come back in a day or two. Consider the Lord of the Ascendant, and whether he be swift in motion, and in the 3D, or in any of the dignities of the Lord of that house, or in good aspect with its Lord, or a planet therein. Or if the apply to such aspect, or be in the 3D, or cast her or to the degree ascending, or be swift in motion, all these are arguments that the party shall go his short journey, and have success. The part of heaven in which the place lies to which he would go is known by the situation of, the sign on the cusp of the 3D, or its lord, whichever may be strongest in essential dignities. If the chief significator be in a northern sign, he goes north, and so of the rest. Examples In November 1645, a citizen of London having gone into the west of England, and no news being heard of him for many weeks, his brother, with great importunity, moved me to give my judgment concerning these particulars. The figure, erected at the moment of the question, is on the following page, and the particulars of the judgment on each of three queries, which were put on the occasion will be found to follow. Figure 7. Questions regarding an absent brother. 1. Is T if living or dead? If dead, whether killed by soldiers? For at this time our miserable kingdom was full of soldiers. 2d if living, when he should hear of him. And where he was. 
3D when he should come home. Underscore 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 underscore. First query. If living or dead. The ascendant doth here represent the shape and form of him who asked the question, with consideration had to, Lord of the sign. The Kerant was lean, spare of body, and a real Saturnine man, and k. Taurus is the ascendant of the 3D house, and female sign being lady thereof, represented the absent brother. Female sign, the significator of the quesited, being no ways afflicted, either by, Lord of the Eighth in the figure, or male sign, Lord of the Quesited's Eighth, and the separation of the being good, viz. A of, and of, who is in good aspect to, and going to of on the cusp of the mid-heaven, I judged the absent brother was alive, and had had no manner of accident, but was in good health. 2D Query When to should hear of him. Female sign lady of the 3D applies to a friendly of, Lord of the Ascendant, and being retrograde, applies also to the aspect of female sign, a very good argument that the Kerant should hear news of his brother very suddenly. And if you look into the ephemeris for November 7, 1645, you will find that, about four o'clock on that very day, the aspect between female sign and was formed. I therefore advised the Kerent to go to the carriers of those countries where he knew his brother had been, and ask when they saw the Quesadit, for I told him that it was probable that he should hear of him that very day. He has since confidently affirmed, that about the very moment of time, viz., about four, a carrier came casually where he was, and informed him that his brother was living, and in health. Figure 8. Where he was. His journey was into the west. At time of the question I find female sign, his significator, leaving Sagittarius, a northeast sign, and entering Capricorn, a south sign, whereon I judged he was in the southeast part of the county unto which he went. And as female sign was not far out of the ascendant, and was in the oriental quarter of heaven, that he was not above one or two days' journey from London. And as female sign was leaving Sagittarius, and entering a sign in which she has dignities by triplicity and term, I judged the man was leaving the country where he had no possession or habitation, and was coming to his own house in London, where he had good property. As female sign wanted one degree of getting out of the sign, I judged he would be at home in less than one week, for Sagittarius is a common sign, and one degree therein in this question might well denote one week. He came home on the following Tuesday, when came to female sign, she being then got into Capricorn, in her own term and diurnal triplicity. The two significators being in, these two brothers always did, and do, live very amicably together. Query. If a rumor or report were true or not. In 1643, His Majesty's army being then rampant, several reports were given out that His Majesty had taken Cambridge, and a well-affected person inquired of me if the news were true or false. Whereupon I erected this figure, and gave judgment all that we heard was untruth, and that the town neither was or should be taken by him or his forces. A report that Cambridge was taken by the king's forces, if true. First, I considered that the angles were all movable, and that the evil male sign vitiated the cusp of the tenth, and that of the seventh, one argument that the report was false. Secondly, there was Cadent, and in Gemini, a sign wherein she is very weak, a second such argument. Thirdly, the on the cusp of the ascendant was a sign of good to the parliament, for the first house signified that honorable society. Female sign, lady of the ascendant, was in her exaltation, but male sign, lord of the seventh, our enemies, in his fall, viz. Cancer, and afflicted by of. The separating from in the seventh, and transferring his light to female sign, gave reason to expect that there would come good to our side by this report or rumor, and no benefit to the enemy. The of and male sign assured me that our enemies were so full of division and treason, and so thwarting one the other's designs, that no good should come unto them by this report. And so, in short, I judged that Cambridge was not taken, and that what we heard was false.86. Had this question been, whether the Kerent would have brethren or not. Then you should judge as follows. The sign on the third Scorpio is fruitful. 
Cancer, the sign in which the Lord of the 3D is found, is fruitful, and the applies to female sign, signs that the Kerent might expect both, but chiefly sisters, as the signs are mostly feminine. Chapter 27 Of the fourth house, and judgments depending thereon. This is the house of parents, lands, tenements, cities, towns, villages, farms, castles, treasure found, and or of anything hidden in the ground, also of the grave. Rule. To find a thing hidden or mislaid. Be careful to consider to whom the thing hidden, and may belong, if the goods did belong to the K rent, take the Lord of the 2D, but if to his brother or sister, regard the Lord of the 4th. If to his father, the Lord of the 5th, if to his mother, the Lord of the 11th, and so of other persons, if to a stranger to the K rent, or one who is no relation, take the Lord of the Eighth. If you find the Lord of the house of property is in any angle, judge the thing missing is within the house of him who is the owner. And if the Lord of the property is in the ascendant, or disposed of by the Lord of the ascendant, by house, or in the same sign with him, say it is in that part of the house wherein he most frequents, or lays up his goods, or such things as he most delights in. But if the Lord of the Quesited's property be in the tenth, it is then in his shop, if he keep one, or, if he be a gentleman, in his dining room, if he be a farmer, it is in the common room of the residence, or first room after you enter the house. If the Lord of the property be in the seventh, it is then in that part where the Quesited's wife or his maid servants have most to do. If in the fourth, it is where the most aged of the house lodges, or formerly did most frequent or in the middle of the house, or in the most ancient part, or where his father or some elderly man lodged. The nature and quality of the place are known by the signs the significators are in. For it the sign of the second be airy, or the greater part of the significators, including the sign where circle plus is, be the same, the thing is hid in the eaves, or the upper part of the room where it is, or on high from the ground. And if the thing be in an orchard or garden, it is higher than the ground, or upon some tree, line, and k, or is on the highest hill or part of the ground. If the said significators be strong, and in watery signs, it is in the dairy, or wash house, brew house, or near water. If they be in fiery signs, it is near the chimney, or the walls of the house, or where iron is found. If in earthy signs, the thing is on the ground or earth, or near some pavement or floor, and if the thing lost be out of the house, it will be found near the bridge, stile, or gate, where people come into the grounds. If the significator be going out of one sign into another, the thing is behind something, or fallen between two rooms, or near the threshold, and it is higher or lower, according to the sign being airy, and. If a thing be lost, and not stolen, consider the following points. 1. The sign ascending, its nature, and the quarter of heaven it denotes. 2. The sign the Lord of the Ascendant is in. 3. The sign of the fourth house. 4. The sign the Lord of the fourth is in. 5. The sign they is in. 6. The sign of the 2D house. 7. The sign the Lord of the 2D is in. 8. The sign circle plus is in. Then examine the greater number of testimonies to discover what quarter of heaven the thing is in, as regards the parts of the house. Having found the bearing, or point of the compass, observe the nature of the sign, viz. Airy signs, above ground. Fiery, near a wall, or partition, earthy, on the floor, watery, near a moist place in the room, and k. Bearing by compass of the signs. Aries East Leo E by North Sagittarius E by South. Libra West Gemini W by South Aquarius W by North. Cancer North Scorpio N by East Pisces N. By West. Capricorn South Taurus S by East Virgo S by West. Of buying and selling lands, houses, farms, and k. The Ascendant, its Lord, and the, are for the buyer, and the Seventh, its Lord, and planets therein, for the seller. The fourth its lord, and planets therein, signify the land, or house, and k. And the tenth house, its lord, and planets therein, signify the price, that is, whether it will be sold cheap or dear. 
If you find the lords of the first and seventh in good aspect, and the lord of the seventh apply by good aspect, or if by evil aspect with reception, to the lord of the ascendant, you may judge the seller has good will to the buyer. And if they are at all dignified, the purchase will be effected, but if the aspect be evil, there will be much bargaining and dispute before all be settled. If the lord of the ascendant, or, apply to the lord of the fourth, or this planet apply to them, or if they be in each other's places, viz. The lord of the first, or, in the fourth, or the lord of the fourth in the ascendant, and there be any reception, the purchase will be effected. But if there be no dwelling in houses as above, yet the transfer the light of the lord of the fourth to the lord of the ascendant, the bargain will be concluded, though by brokers or agents, rather than by the principals. If none of the above rules hold, there will be no bargain made. Of the quality of the land or houses, and If you find the infortunes in the fourth, especially if they be peregrine, or the court of the fourth retrograde or afflicted, it will never continue long with the buyer's posterity, or benefit him. But if, female sign, or, be in the fourth, or the lord of the fourth be strong and well aspect, the purchaser may expect good success with the property, and if a fixed sign be in the fourth, it will continue in the family of the purchaser. If an infortune possess the ascendant, the tenants or occupiers are evil and deceitful, and will give trouble. If a fortune be there, or, judge the reverse. In the former case, if the evil planet be retrograde, the tenants will decamp without paying their rent, or will throw up their leases. If in the tenth house there be a fortune, and it direct, the timber will be profitable, or the house will let well. If it be retrograde, there are many trees, but they not profitable. If there be an infortune direct, there are few trees, or the house will not let well, and if he be retrograde, the timber will be stolen, or the rent will be either stolen after payment, or no payment be well and truly made. If there be no planet in the tenth, consider the lord of the house, and, as he may be strong or weak, judge the result of the profits, whether by timber, and, or by letting the house, and. But the angle of the seventh must be considered in like manner, to judge the quality of the grass, corn, or herbage, and. As regards the description of the ground, look to the fourth house. And if you find a fiery sign on its cusp, the ground is in general hilly, dry, and hard, the more so, if the lord of the fourth be in a fiery sign, viz. Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. If there be an earthy sign on the cusp, the ground is plain, level and good pasture land, or fertilage. If there be an airy sign thereon, the ground is of a mixed nature, part hilly and part plain, partly good and partly bad. If the sign be watery, then there is plenty of water, a brook, or rivulet, and k, thereon. And if an infortune be in the fourth, and retrograde or peregrine, the land will partake greatly of the nature of that infortune. As if Scorpio be the sign, and in it, the land is marshy or boggy, and full of rushes, if he be afflicted, so much worse is the land. And if the land lie near the sea, you may fear an overflow, or that the banks are damaged, and k. If be in the fourth in a fiery sign, the land is barren, and wants water, if he be afflicted, it is utterly stony and worthless. If be there in an airy sign, the land is defective. And if he be afflicted, especially in Gemini, the management of it has been bad and unthrifty. If he be there in an earthy sign, the land is tolerably good, but heavy, clay land. And if he be afflicted, the farmers are dull, and too poor to manage it well. In like way judge of the standing of a house or building, if it be a watery sign, there will be much damp, and if be there in Scorpio, it is overrun with rats. Of the cheapness or dearness of the land or houses, and This is known by the Lord of the Tenth, for if he be angular and strong, the price will be high, and the seller will stand upon his terms, but if he be weak, cadent, afflicted, and The price will not rise high. If it be good for the K-rent to take or lease the house, farm, or land, and The Tenth House, and will herein shew the profit or advantage to be made by the undertaking, having regard also to the usual significators of property, viz. The Lord of the 2D, and Circle Plus, and
the fourth house will shew the end of the matter as regards the taking the property. If there be a fortune ascending, or circle plus be in the ascendant, or the lord of the ascendant be there, or be in, or to the degree on the cusp and not afflicted, the carent will take the house or farm, and, and find it a good bargain. If an infortune ascend, the carent will not take the property, or if he have already taken it, he has no mind to it, and will quickly put it off to another party. If you find the lord of the seventh in the seventh, or casting a good aspect to its cusp, or there be benefics therein, the man will keep his word in the bargain, but he will profit by it more than the carent. If an infortune be in the seventh and not lord of the seventh, have great care of the covenants or agreements between you, for the landlord will be too hard for you, as he minds nothing but his own ends in the matter. Consider the tenth house. And if a fortune be there or behold its cusp by good aspect, the parties, notwithstanding some rubs, will proceed in their bargain, and the land, and will be let to the care rent. If you find an infortune in or an evil aspect to the tenth, the bargain will be broken off. If it be land, they differ about the timber, and or upon the erecting of some new buildings, and if the thing be a house, and they differ about the repairs. As to the end of the matter, see to the fourth house. If fortunes be there, or the lord of the fourth behold the cusp favorably, it will end well, and both parties will be pleased. But if an infortune be there, or the lord of the house aspect it by or, the whole matter will end ill, and will please neither party. Query, shall the carent enjoy the estate of his father? If in this question you find the lords of the 2d and 5th in reception and in each other's houses, there is no doubt that the carent shall have a competent fortune out of his father's estate. But if the lord of the father's property be retrograde or afflicted, then some part of the estate intended for the carent will be wasted or otherwise disposed of. If you would know why or how, see what planet Impedites the lord of the 5th, and what house he is lord of. If it be the lord of the sixth, it may be one of the father's brothers, or sisters, or neighbors shall prevail on the father to alter his intentions towards the carent. If it be the lord of the seventh, it may be some female, or his wife, or some person with whom the carent has quarreled, that will cause his father to alter his mind. If it be the lord of the twelfth, it is some one of the mother's kindred, or it may be, especially if, some minister or clergyman. Now, if, upon describing the party, the carent is well informed of who it is, and is desirous to gain the person's goodwill, and so to diminish their malice, let him do as follows, on the approach of any. Or between the planet signifying that party and the lord of the ascendant, let the day be observed in the ephemeris when the separates from one and applies to the other, by good aspect if possible. And on that day endeavor a reconcilement, and it is not to be doubted that he may obtain his desire. As I have found many times by good experience. Point 87. If the Lord of the Fifth dispose of the circle plus, and be in the ascendant or 2d, the carent shall gain his desires. Or female sign in the Fifth, casting a or to any planet in the 2d, argues the same. If separate from the Lord of the Fifth, and go immediately to or, of the Lord of the 2d or of the ascendant, it shews assured hopes of acquiring the property of the Father. If you find an infortune ill dignified in the fourth, the father has no inclination to part with his money, nor will it be well to move him much thereto, until that unfortunate planet be transited out of the sign. But if you cannot stay so long, observe when that planet is direct, swift in motion, oriental, in or, with or female sign or the lord of the ascendant, and then let the father be moved in the business. The observing those influences will not compel the father's mind, but will cause more benevolent intentions. If the lords of the 2d and 5th apply to any good aspect by retrogradation, the carent will receive some property from his father suddenly, before he thinks of it. If there be any good aspect, reception, and between the lord of the 4th and any other planet, stronger than there is between the lord of the 4th and the lord of the ascendant, the father regards the party signified by that other planet better than the carent, if it be the lord of the 3d or any planet in the 3d, then it is one of the Quirant's brothers, and of removing from one house or place to another. Observe the ascendant, the fourth and seventh houses, and their lords, planets therein, and if the lord of the fourth be in the seventh, 
and he a good planet, and the lords of the first and seventh be good also and strong, it is then better to remain where you are. But if the lord of the seventh be with a good planet, and the lord of the fourth with an evil one, it is then not well to remain. If the or lord of the ascendant separate from ill aspects of the infortunes, and they lords of the fourth or seventh, or from the lords of the sixth, eighth, or twelfth, or if an evil planet be in the ascendant or fourth. Or if the lord of the two d be weak, I advise the carent to remove. And if the lord of the sixth be in the ascendant, or afflict its lord or the, I have found that the carent has ill health where he is, or is troubled by evil servants. If the lord of the twelfth be the afflicting planet, he has backbiting, treacherous neighbors. And if the circle plus was in the sixth, eighth, or twelfth, or the lord of the two d was in ill aspect to the lord of the ascendant, I have found that he went back in the world, and if the lord of the tenth afflict, I judged that he was unfortunate in trade, or had lost his credit. If the lord of the fourth afflict, he has been injured by repairing the house, and the lord of the seventh shews injury by an opposite neighbor, who undersells him, and in giving advice which way to steer his course in hopes of better success, I observe what planet in the scheme is strongest, and has the best aspect to the lords of the ascendant or 2d. And according to the quarter of heaven the sign that planet is in signifies, I advise the carent to remove. I do not remember that any ever repented the following my advice, though many have afterwards returned me both thanks and rewards. 88. If separate from a fortunate planet, stay, if she separate from an infortune, remove. An infortune in the ascendant, or a fortune in the seventh, remove, but a fortune in the ascendant, or in fortune in the seventh, remain. Of treasure, mines, and concealed in the ground. To discover mines or any other thing supposed to be concealed in any place, the K-Rent must observe whether there be any planet strongly dignified in the fourth house, and the nature of the treasure, mine, and may be judged of by that planet, if he have any affinity with the seventh house. The nature of the mine, and will depend on the nature of the planet. If be lord of the seventh and in the fourth dignified, he signifies good coal mines. Or if the question were of stone, then there is a good quarry. And so judge of the others according to their nature and strength in essential dignities. Example. If I should purchase the houses of Master B. The inheritance of the house wherein at this present 1647 I live, and some others, being proffered me to buy in 1634, had a desire to know if I should deal with the seller, and procure money in convenient time to pay for the purchase. My own money being in such hands that I could not call it in under six months' notice. Being desirous, I say, to purchase the said houses, and fully resolved upon it, I took my own question myself, at the time I found my mind most perplexed and solicitous about it. The time of the query to myself fell out according to the position of heaven following. Figure 9. Resolution of the above question. The sign ascending is Libra, and the degree ascending the place of in my radix, I looked upon that as a good omen in the first place. Female sign is for myself, locally placed in the seventh is for the seller. Receives female sign in his exaltation. And as female sign is near the cusp of the seventh, and no other planet there but the, this signified that there was no other purchaser about it at present but myself. The so exalted and angular, denoted that the seller was high in his demands, and so he was, nor was he necessitated to part with it. Finding my significator received of and so near the cusp of the seventh, was an argument that I should proceed in the business, notwithstanding the many debilities of female sign. For as was lord of the seventh, so also was the lord of the eleventh. Signifying that my hopes should not be frustrated. And female sign also was applying to of, lord of the fourth, viz. The houses inquired after, and had no frustration, and, before the perfect aspect a strong argument that I should buy the houses. Both significators applied to the aspect, being retrograde, I also considered that was into, the being lord of my eleventh and of the fourth, and as beholds the ascendant and has dignities therein, he, therefore, had signification of myself. Now, whether you consider him as having dignities in the ascendant or as lord of the fourth, the lord of the eleventh and he applying by a, 
argued assuredly that I should proceed and in the end conclude for the houses. The in the next place translating the influence of male sign, Lord of the Seventh, to, having virtue in the ascendant, though by a out of signs of long ascension, did much facilitate the matter. But argued my contracting leisurely and slowly, because of the aspect. And as is afflicted and female sign unfortunate, so I had much trouble and many meetings about it, the seller not abating one penny of five hundred and thirty pounds, being the first money he demanded. As is near to a of, so did a jovial man endeavour to procure the purchase, after I began, but his cadent and in detriment, which shewed he should not prevail. Female sign angular and in aspect with, and lord of the eleventh, or fifth from the seventh, shewed that a daughter of the seller was my very good friend in this business, and suffered no interloper to intervene, though some offered fair to hinder me. As male sign, lord of my 2d, was retrograde, it denoted that I should get none of my own money to supply my occasions. Lord of circle plus into, no ways impedited, but by being in detriment, in platic with the lady of the ascendant, gave me such hopes. That I doubted not of procuring money when he entered hashtag hashtag hashtag, his exaltation, and male sign became direct, which he did twelve days after, when a friend lent me five hundred pounds. The qualities of the houses are shown by Capricorn, the sign on the fourth, and by, Lord thereof, who having no material debilities, except being retrograde and cadent, and being also into, the houses were really old. But strong and able to stand many years. When female sign and came to in Taurus, April 25th, I bargained, and on the to female sign, May 17th, I paid in five hundred and thirty pounds, and my conveyance was sealed. As female sign wanted six degrees of being with, so was it six weeks and some days from the time of the question until I perfected what the figure promised. As to the moles and scars on my body, it exactly agrees. For as female sign is in Aries, which represents the face, so have I a mole on my cheek, about the middle of it, and as Libra ascends, I have one on the reins of my back. The in Virgo, afflicted by male sign, I have a red mole below the navel. Lord of the Sixth in Gemini, a masculine sign, I have a mole near my right hand, visible on the outside, so have I one on the left foot, as Pisces, the sign on the sixth signifies. I had a hard bargain, as the figure every way considered manifests. And shall never live to see many of the leases yet in being expire. And as female sign is in Aries, the sign opposite her own house, so did I do myself injury by the bargain, I mean in matter of money. But the love I bore to the house I now live in, wherein I lived happily with a good master full seven years, and therein obtained my first wife, and was bountifully blessed with the goods of this world, made me neglect a small hindrance. Nor now, I thank God, do I repent it, finding God's blessing in a plentiful measure upon my labours. Chapter 28 Of the Fifth House and Its Questions If one shall have children, yea or nay. Herein generally consider whether the signs ascending and on the fifth house be fruitful. 89 Whether the Lord of the Ascendant, or the be in aspect with the Lord of the Fifth, and if so, whether the Lord of the Fifth be strong, and also the planet or planets in the Fifth or in aspect with its Lord. These are signs the Karent shall have children before they die. Also if the Lord of the Fifth be in the Ascendant, or the Lord of the Ascendant be in the Fifth, it is a strong argument of children. If there be translation of light or collection between the significators, you may still judge that there will be children, but not so speedily as if it had been foreseen by the former manner of judgment. If a woman ask, whether she may have a child. If a married woman ask, consider whether the Lord of the Ascendant be in the fifth or seventh, or the Lord of the fifth be in the Ascendant or seventh, or Lord of the seventh in the fifth, or the with him, or good planets in the Ascendant or with the Lord of the Fifth or in the Angles. She may then conceive. But if none of these testimonies concur, and you find barren signs and planets in the aforesaid situations, especially if in fortunes be angular and fortunes cadent, she neither has conceived at present nor will hereafter. If good and evil planets be mixed, she may have children, but they will not live. If Gemini, Leo, or Virgo, be on the Ascendant or Fifth, and, male sign, or in the fifth, it is a strong sign of barrenness. 
but rather causes the death of children than prevents their birth. Whether a man shall have children by his wife, or his intended wife. Or, whether a woman may by her husband, and observe the ascendant, its lord, and the and if the lord of the ascendant or be joined to the lord of the fifth, they shall have issue by the party inquired of. If this be not, observe whether translation or collection of light occur between the significators, or whether or lord of the ascendant be in the fifth, or the lord of the fifth in the ascendant. These are all testimonies in the affirmative. If or female sign be in the fifth no way afflicted, a child will be very speedily born, and if they, or either of them, be in the ascendant or eleventh, there will be children, but not so speedily. But if the fortunes be afflicted while in those places, there is danger of the child being born dead, or dying shortly after birth. If there be signs of children, yet female sign be afflicted by or male sign, there is danger of some accident, and to the mother before the birth. If, or male sign, or, an, if afflicted, be in the fifth, or the two former cast there to its cusp, the woman is not with child, nor will be. The of the infortunes to the cusp of the fifth denotes no conception, unless they be strong and there be other good testimonies. The lord of the fifth, weak, and k, denotes a sickly child. Whether a woman be with child or not. If she ask the question. She is so, if the lord of the ascendant, or, behold the lord of the fifth by any aspect, or translation of light have passed between them. If the lord of the ascendant, or be in the fifth, free from affliction by the infortunes, or lords of the sixth, eighth, or twelfth, or. If be in the first, fifth, seventh, or eleventh, not in aspect to, or male sign, and they slow in motion, or retrograde. If the lord of the ascendant, or fifth be in good aspect to a planet in an angle, with mutual reception. If the be in reception with any planet in an angle, and be essentially fortified. If the lord of the ascendant behold its cusp by good aspect, out of a good house, or if be in the seventh, and behold the lord of the seventh in the eleventh, or if be in the eleventh, and behold the lord of the seventh in the seventh. If the lord of the ascendant be in mutual reception by house, triplicity, exaltation, or term, with a planet who has the same reception exactly, that is, if each be in the other's house, and if the apply to the lord of the ascendant, or lord of the fifth, by good aspect from the tenth house, or by evil aspect if with mutual reception. If the sign ascending be fixed, and a fortune therein, or if the lord of the fifth be strong in the ascendant, or tenth, you may ever predict true conception. She is not so, if you find none of the above testimonies, or barren signs on the fifth, or ascendant, or evil planets there, or afflicting their lords and the. If the man ask the question, unknown to the woman. She is with child, if the lord of the fifth behold a planet in an angle, with reception, or if the lords of the ascendant, or fifth, or seventh, or, female sign, or, be in the fifth, and be fortunate, and dot be. If an aspect to a malefic, and not in any aspect to a benefit, cannot be relied upon. She is not with child, if or female sign be afflicted. If female sign be joined to or male sign, or to if he be ill aspect, and they be combust, retrograde, or in Leo, Virgo, or Capricorn. If or male sign be in the fifth, in, or, to its lord, they denote no conception, out if other testimonies be more powerful, and denote conception, they shew danger of abortion. The lord of the ascendant joined to a retrograde planet, or to one in a cadent house, or received by a retrograde or combust planet, or if no aspect or translation of light be between the lords of the first and fifth, are all signs of no conception. But judge by the majority of testimonies. Is the child male or female? The lords of the ascendant, the fifth, and the, and the signs on the ascendant and fifth being masculine, denote a male. If they be, on the contrary, feminine, the child will be a female, n. B. unless this be a part of the question, do not attempt to give a judgment, nor then either, unless there be a great majority of testimonies on one or the other side. The sign the dispositor of the is and may also be considered. Whether the child shall live or die. The lord of the fifth retrograde, combust, or cadent, or being in his fall or detriment, 
and afflicted by the Lord of the eighth of the figure, or the eighth from the fifth, which is the twelfth, are signs of death. Or if the Lord of the fifth, being weak, be afflicted by an evil planet in the eighth or twelfth, unless some opposite testimonies occur, it may be expected the child will speedily die. If the Lord of the Ascendant be in the fifth, and be afflicted as above, or if, male sign, or, be in the fifth, especially if retrograde, they denote the same. Whether there shall be twins? If suspicion be of twins, and you find, upon that question, the ascending sign be double-bodied, and a fortune therein, or the same of the fifth house, and then be in double-bodied signs, and the lords of the ascendant and fifth be the same. You may judge twins. But unless all, or nearly all, these testimonies concur, it is not safe so to judge, then dot be, the dispositor of the, that is the planet in whose house she is, may also be considered. Moreover, if the be with either, female sign, or the, or that all these be in either Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius, or Pisces, it is a farther testimony of the woman bearing twins. How long the woman has been pregnant? Observe the Lord of the Ascendant, the fifth, or the. See which is nearest from any aspect which is past, and then judge according to the nature of the aspect. If the separation be from a, say she is in the fifth month of her conception, or the 3d, if it be a, she is in the 2d or sixth month. If a, she is in the fourth month, then, gives the seventh month, and if it be a, then she has been pregnant only one month. Of the time when the birth shall take place. Observe when a male sign or are in with the Lord of the fifth, or there be a of the Lord of the fifth with the Lord of the Ascendant in the fifth house, about that time the birth may be expected. Observe, also, when the Lord of the Ascendant goes out of one sign into another, that is also a probable period for the birth. See, also, how far the Lord of the fifth is from the cusp of the fifth, and give to every sign one month. Judge according to the majority of these testimonies. Point 90. Of ambassadors or messengers. The Lord of the fifth and the may be considered to represent the ambassador or messenger. The planet to whom either of them apply shall shew the cause and nature of the message. If you find the application be from a fortune by, or, and there be reception between them, or collection or translation, and that planet be in the tenth, or lord thereof, the embassy is on some high and important matter of a political nature. If the planet who is received, or translates, or collects, be lord of the eleventh, he comes to renew leagues of friendship. If the lord of the fifth be afflicted or weak in the seventh, and the lord of the ascendant and he be in evil aspect, and male sign aspect either of them evilly, there is no sign of any peace or permanent benefit arising from this embassy or message. According as the Lord of the Fifth and be well affected to the Ascendant, its Lord, and planets therein, you may predict advantage to the Kerent or his nation, according as it be respecting a public or private matter. Of a message sent for money. The message is shown by the, the messenger by the Lord of the Fifth, the other significators as usual. If the Lord of the Fifth separate from the Lord of the Seventh, and apply to the Lord of the Ascendant, you may judge the messenger has effected the thing he went for, and is returning home. If the Lord of the Fifth separate from the Lord of the 2D, he brings money. The answer the messenger brings is of the nature of that house from whose Lord the Lord of the Fifth separates, and also of the nature of the planet himself. Therefore, if he separate from a good planet, it gives hopes of a good answer, the contrary, when he separates from evil planets. If the Lord of the Fifth apply by, or, to an infortune, before he is separated from the Lord of the Seventh, the messenger has had some impediment in effecting his business by the party to whom he was sent. And has also sustained some hindrance on his journey before he arrived at the place. But if this application to an infortune happen after the Lord of the Fifth was separated from the Lord of the Seventh, the messenger will have delays and misfortunes on his return. If you find an infortune, especially male sign, in the ninth, he will hardly travel safe for thieves, but if a fortune be there, his going and returning will be safe. If there be reception, though they apply by or, between the lords of the fifth and seventh, the messenger will be well received, but the evil aspect shews some delay or excuse framed by the party to whom the messenger is sent. As to the messenger's return, when the lord of the fifth comes to a or of the lord of the ascendant, 
that day, or near it, the messenger is heard of. Or when separates from the Lord of the Fifth, and applies to the Lord of the Ascendant, the Kerent shall have intelligence of his messenger. The application of the significator to a ponderous planet shews more certainly the day. Use discretion in judging the nature of the journey, its length, and and, according to the nature of the signs and houses in which the applying planet may be found, expect the return to be in days, weeks, months, and. Figure 10. Query. If the person asking the question should ever have children. Underscore 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 Judgment upon the preceding figure. The ascendant is here Virgo, a barren sign. The sign of the fifth is Capricorn, an indifferent sign in this question, but rather barren, as being the house of L2. The lord of the fifth, is retrograde in Sagittarius, and the lord of the ascendant, female sign, is in Gemini, both signs more barren than fruitful. There is in the terms of male sign, and into, lord of the fifth, lord of the ascendant, is in the terms of, and afflicted by male sign, and going to of, who is lord of the sixth as well as fifth, also in the ascendant. All these are strong arguments of barrenness, and I therefore delivered the following judgment, viz., that the Kerent neither had been, nor ever would be, pregnant, being naturally barren. For finding the chief angles afflicted by malefics, it was certain that the evil which prevented her from conceiving had been long upon her, and would continue. I found no one promising testimony. So I declared, positively, that she never would have any children, according to the rules of the science. The being into, and, Lord of the First, applying to his, the Kerent was very sickly, afflicted with wind and choke. In the Ascendant, shewed great pain in the head, and in Gemini, shewed the same point ninety-one. The Quirant's moles, and k. Agreed exactly with the figure, viz. One mole close by the navel, one upon the right ankle. One towards the right knee, on the inner side of the thigh one near the member shown by the in Sagittarius, and one on the outside of the right arm. Figure 11. Question, a female being with child, whether it were a male or female. And about what time she should be delivered. First query, is the child a male or female? In this case I followed the method of taking only the plurality of testimonies of the proper significators, whether masculine or feminine, and so gave judgment. Arguments of a girl. Virgo the sign ascending feminine. Capricorn the sign on the fifth house due. In a sign due. Lord of the ascendant, with female sign a planet due. Arguments of a boy. Lord of the ascendant in a sign masculine. Lord of the Fifth, a planet do. Lord of the Fifth, in a sign do. In a house do. In a house do. A benefit in an angle, in a sign do. Applying to aspect of male sign, a planet do. Here are seven testimonies of a boy, and only four of a girl, I therefore affirmed that the lady carried a son. And to it proved. 2d query how long ere she should be delivered. The sign of the fifth is movable, so is Aries, wherein both the lords of the first and fifth are situated. These argued but a short time. But as, lord of the fifth, is a ponderous planet, and was slow in motion, I considered him much in this query. And also, because she was situated in the fifth I took the distance between. In Aries 24 degrees 37. In Capricorn 950. Difference 1447. Also between N. In Aries 24 degrees 37. In Aries 11 0. Difference 1337. Finding only 1 degree in 10 minutes between the as. Pest of the N, and that of N, I gave for every degree 1 week, and so judged that, about 14 weeks from the time of the question, she should be delivered. The birth took place on the July 11th following, when a male sign transited the degree ascending, and the of, viz. Cancer 9 degrees. 
though also was that day in Cancer 27 degrees 48 foot, the perfect to his own place in the figure, and in within Cancer. The time was thirteen weeks and four days after the question. Chapter 29 Of the Sixth House This sickness, servants, small cattle, and k. I in the first place, we ought to take the figure for the exact moment of the person falling sick, or rather of being obliged to take to his bed. 92. Secondly, if that cannot be had, except of that time when first any person spoke to a physician, and k. Regarding the patient. And if it was with his consent, the ascendant will signify him. But if unknown to him, the ascendant will denote the k-rent, and the house describing his relation to the person speaking of the sickness will describe the patient. This is, supposing the physician to be an astrologer, which they formerly were. But if the patient's friends speak to an astrologer, the same rule holds. Thirdly, or let the physician note the time of his own first speaking with the patient, 93 and let a figure be erected for that moment. Then consider carefully, first, the ascendant and planets therein, secondly, the sixth house, and planets therein, thirdly, the sign and house wherein the moon is. Fourthly, how she is affected or afflicted, by what planet, in what house that planet is, and of what house be is Lord. What part of the body as afflicted? If the ascendant be afflicted by an evil planet, and he retrograde, combust, peregrine, slow in motion, or in or to the Lord of the fourth, sixth, eighth, or twelfth, the disease is then in the head. Or in that part or parts of the body which the planet or planets signify in the sign then ascending. For example, if cancer ascend, and therein, the sick party is afflicted in the head, because the ascendant signifies the head, and also has some disorder in the bowels, reins, or secrets, because in cancer signifies those parts. Or else with some rotten cough, as denotes coughs, and cancer rules the breast. If the lord of the ascendant, or lord of the sixth, be in a sign signifying the same member or parts as, or if the sign on the sixth represent the same, your judgment will be more certain, I may say, infallible. 94. I also would observe, in like manner, the sixth house, its sign, lord, and planet in it. Also observe carefully the sign and house where is, her separation and application. And you may then venture safely to give judgment as to what part of the body of the sick person is grieved, and of the nature and quality of the sickness. The cause and nature of the sickness. The significators in fiery signs, and fiery signs on the ascendant and sixth, shew feverish and hot complaints, hectic fevers, erysipelas, and k. Earthy signs argue long and tedious diseases, agues, intermittent fevers, and such complaints as proceed from melancholy, consumption, and k. Airy signs shew corrupt blood, gout, cutaneous diseases, scrofula, and k. Watery signs shew diseases that proceed from cold and moisture, coughs and disordered stomach, and k. Diseases signified by the houses. First. All diseases in the head, eyes, face, ears, nose, mouth, foul breath, and k. 2d. The throat, scrofula, quinsy, glandular swellings in the neck, sore throat, and k. 3d. The shoulders, arms, and hands. Fourth. The stomach, breast, and lungs. Fifth. Back, hind parts of the shoulders, liver, heart, sides, and stomach. Sixth. Lower part of the abdomen, the intestines, liver, and reins. Seventh. The hams, the flank, the small intestines, bladder, matrix, and members of generation. Eighth. The spine, rectum, and groin. Ninth. The hips and thighs. Tenth. The knees and upper part of the leg behind the knees. Eleventh. The leg from the knee to the ankle, the shin bone, shank, and k. Twelfth. The feet, ankles and toes, with all hurts or disease incident to them. Point ninety-five. Whether the disease will be long or short. Have regard to the time of year, and consider that diseases commencing in the winter are usually longer, and those in summer shorter. 
diseases which proceed from are more permanent, and are generally regulated much by the motion of the those of a hot and dry nature, which are influenced by male sign and, are short and regulated by the motion of, causes long chronic complaints, falls, bruises, blows, and, and shorter, male sign short, violent, and quick, such as cuts, bleedings, and, female sign a mean between both, and such as proceed from intemperance, various and changeable, such as fits, and, such as return at periods, as the falling sickness or epilepsy, giddiness, swimming in the head, gout, periodical illness in females, and. 96. Signs of a short disease. When the cusp of the sixth, the, and the lords of the first and sixth, be in movable signs, or the lord of the ascendant swift in motion, or going out of his own house into another, so that it be not the sign of the sixth or twelfth. Or if a fortune be in the sixth, you may judge that the disease will soon terminate. Signs of a long disease. The lord of the sixth evil or afflicted, and placed in the sixth, fixed signs on its cusp, or the significators, especially the, in fixed signs, are testimonies of a long and durable disease and if be lord of the sixth and in a fixed sign. Or retrograde and slow in motion, he extremely prolongs the disease. But if he be in a movable sign, or in any of his own terms, or be swift in motion, he is not then so unfortunate. General Signs The disease continues but a short time if Pisces be on the cusp of the sixth. If the apply by ill aspect to the Lord of the Ascendant, the disease will increase. If be in the sixth and ill aspect to female sign, the disease is brought on by intemperance, either evil diet or surfeit. And if female sign be in Scorpio, there is evidence of a scandalous disease. But if the patient be a female, it may be the whites or other diseases of the matrix. The last degrees of any sign being on the cusp of the sixth, denotes that the disease is almost at an end. If the lord of the sixth apply by ill aspect to the lord of the ascendant, it is a token of the disease increasing. The same, if the lord of the sixth be in the eighth or twelfth house. If the lord of the ascendant be in the sixth, and the lord of the sixth in the ascendant, the disease has been of long continuance, and will continue until one of the significators leaves the sign where he is. And if, at the time of transiting out of the sign, he meet the evil aspects of the infortunes or lords of the fourth or eighth, and they slow in motion, and it be from signs evilly aspecting one another. It is a strong sign that the sick person will then depart this life. The lord of the sixth afflicted by the or of the lord of the ascendant, the disease is grievous and hard to cure. If the lord of the sixth be in the ascendant, the disease will continue, but the pain at times is small. If he be in a cadent house, the disease is not important, nor will it endure. Good planets in the sixth promise a good end to the disease, evil, the contrary. The lord of the sixth, afflicted in the sixth, eighth, or twelfth, or an infortune in the sixth, denotes a disease not easily curable. The Lord of the Ascendant and free from ill aspects, both being unafflicted and strong, and not in the sixth, eighth, or twelfth, is a fair testimony of recovery and health. The Lord of the first in the fourth or eighth, if not afflicted, denotes not death. But if unfortunate, it shews great difficulty ere the party be cured. If, however, he be unfortunate by retrogradation, being combust, and, he may possibly be cured, but will afterwards relapse. If he be in evil aspect with, there is danger. But, above all, if be lord of the ascendant, and be slow or retrograde, there is reason to fear a long and tedious sickness. If be strong and well qualified, the reverse. When the lord of the ascendant is angular, strong, and unafflicted, the carent is in no danger. The slow in motion and in any aspect with him, it prolongs the infirmity, though there be at present hopes of a cure. If she be swift in motion when aspecting the Lord of the Ascendant, the cure will be effected in a little time. The decreasing in light and coming to, or of, unless the disease be already leaving the patient, is very dangerous. The in with an oriental planet, who is swift in motion and direct, denotes a brief sickness, if joined to a retrograde and occidental planet, the contrary. If Scorpio ascend, 
the patient has been the cause of his own sickness by folly, anger, peevishness, or the like, especially if male sign be therein. Both lights cadent and their dispositors unfortunate, the sickness will be severe. But if the fortunes assist, though the disease will be of long continuance, the party will recover beyond all expectation, the stronger the fortunes are, the more confident you may be in your judgment. If male sign be lord of the ascendant and in the sixth, but in good aspect to female sign, there is no danger, if even in or, not much. The lord of the sixth combust, retrograde, in his fall or detriment, and in the eighth, in, or of or male sign, you may fear that the disease will never leave the patient till death. If the also be applying to the same aspects of the lord of the eighth, your judgment will be certain. The or lord of the first, in, or to a benevolent planet, but he retrograde, the patient will recover, but not speedily, for it denotes relapsing out of one disease into another. When leaves of, and is swiftly applying to the or of male sign, it threatens a fatal end to the disease, but if she receive a or of or female sign, the sick shall recover. If the be in the ascendant, and in, or to or male sign, or any other evil planet, it is a token of severe illness and danger, unless she be in mutual reception with the planet afflicting. Testimonies of Recovery The applying to a fortune, powerful, denotes that the party will be restored to his former health. If reception be between the lords of the ascendant and eighth by house or triplicity, the fortunes assisting the degree ascending, or that on the sixth, or the by, or, the sick will perfectly recover. The lord of the ascendant, being a benefit planet, or any fortune in an angle and no ill aspects cast thereto, signifies health. A certain sign of recovery is, when, female sign or be in the ascendant, and no ways afflicted by the lord of the sixth or eighth house, the more so if in the houses of the lights or benefics. The in her own house, or the houses of or female sign, and in any aspect to those benefics, and no way afflicted by, or male sign, denotes health and life. Whenever occurs, it denotes recovery, but if in Capricorn, less than in any other sign. If apply to the Lord of the Ascendant by good aspect, and be unafflicted, by the Lord of the Eighth or Sixth especially, recovery is promised. When, at the first falling sick of the party, is void of course, and at her next crisis meets a or of or female sign in the exact degree which forms the perfect critical aspect, the patient will undoubtedly recover. Be he never so ill at time of asking the question. If at the commencement of a disease, and the Lord of the Ascendant, are free from ill aspects of the infortunes or Lord of the Eighth, there are assured hopes of life. Arguments of Death The Lord of the Ascendant and in with the Lord of the Eighth, without interposing aspects of fortunes. The Lord of the Ascendant cadent, and the Lord of the Eighth in an angle, especially if the latter be an infortune. The applying to a planet in the eighth, and afflicted, and the lord of the ascendant applying to the lord of the eighth or to evil planets therein, are very dangerous. The transferring the light of the lord of the eighth to the lord of the ascendant, usually denotes death. So when the lord of the eighth is in the ascendant, the lord of the ascendant and both being afflicted. Or the lord of the ascendant being in the eighth and afflicted, and also weak and in no dignity. The lord of the ascendant under the earth, and in ill aspect to the Lord of the Eighth in the Eighth, or if the two Lords be in in the Fourth House. It is a very ill sign when the Lord of the Ascendant is in with the Lords of the Fourth, Sixth, Eighth, or Twelfth. The Lord of the Ascendant combust in the Ascendant, or the Lord of the Eighth in the Tenth, and the Lord of the Ascendant in the Fourth, Sixth, or Twelfth, and afflicted by malefics, are very evil. The Lord of the Eighth retrograde and conjoined with the, or in or to her, shews death. The Lord of the Attendant in Leo or Aquarius, and evilly affected by the Lords of the Sixth or Twelfth, shews little hopes of recovery. And his being conjoined with Aldebaran, Antares, Caput, Algol, or other violent fixed stars, is also evil. And if both lights be afflicted by in an angle, it is testimony of a tedious, long illness. The in the fourth with male sign, or the with, are testimonies of death, also the near the cusp of the ascendant in of male sign from the fourth. The combust in the eighth, or if lady of the sixth and combust in the ascendant or fourth, the same. And especially if the lord of the eighth be afflicted. 
The love with is a very ill sign, especially when she has not yet passed, however, when they is in Aries or Leo it is not quite so evil. 97. In all cases the multiplicity of testimonies must be observed, the strength of the afflicting planets, and the absence of assistance to neutralize the evil influence, before you predict death. To know whether the Karent be really ill or not. If the Ascendant be not afflicted, nor its Lord out of all his essential dignities, nor afflicted by, male sign, or the Lord of the Sixth, he is not. Or if no planet afflict the Sixth House by its presence, or the be not afflicted in the Eighth or Twelfth, or if you find, or female sign, or in the Ascendant, or in the Sixth, or the and Lord of the Ascendant in good aspect. Or or female sign casting a or to the cusp of the Ascendant or Sixth, the party is not really sick, but at the utmost some slight indisposition has occurred, which will shortly be rectified. Whether the disease be in the body or mind, or both. If the Ascendant, and be all afflicted, the disease is then through the whole body. But if the planets which dispose of Anne, or if the Lord of the Ascendant, or two of them, be afflicted, the disease is more in the mind. If the Ascendant the, and Lord of the are all, or two of them, afflicted, and the Lord of the Ascendant and the Dispositor of they free, the affection is in the mind and not in the body. If afflict the, he shews trouble in the mind, vexation and care, but if be in the planet afflicting the, the contrary, for he never oppresses the mind, but always the body. If the Lord of the house in which is, and the Lord of the Ascendant are afflicted by, or combust, or under the beams of, the distemper is bodily. But if the ruler of and the ruler of the Lord of the Ascendant be much afflicted, the grief is more mental than bodily. Also if the degree ascending and that degree where is be more afflicted than the lords of those signs, the disease is more in the mind, but if the lords be more afflicted, the reverse. When the dispositors of the lights are very much afflicted and very weak, and the degree ascending have a of mo but no ill aspect of or male sign, the person is much tormented in mind. In these cases causes the mind to be troubled by pride, self-conceit, haughtiness, and k. Female sign argues luxury, or a lasciviousness which disturbs both body and mind. Shoes foolish fancies and fearful imaginations. Of the crises, or of critical days. If the disease be not chronic, you will find great alteration in the patient near those times when arrives at a distance from her first place, when the patient was taken ill, of 45, 90, or 135 degrees. To learn whether these crises will be good or evil, see how she is aspect at those times. If she be in good aspect with a benevolent planet, it promises ease and an improved condition. But if she there meet with evil aspects of malevolent planets or the lords of the sixth or eighth, he will be worse, and the medicines do little good. I have always observed that, when they came at the crises to, or of that planet which did afflict the Ascendant, or Lord of the Ascendant, or when she came to such aspect of the Lord of the Sixth or planets placed in the Sixth. The patient suffered much, the disease ran high, and medicines given about that time worked little or no good. When she came, however, to or of the Lords of the Ascendant, Ninth, Tenth, or eleventh houses, I observed some interval of ease or amendment. So when the Lord of the Ascendant came to any good aspect of the, if he had not power or dominion in the disease, I found the patient's mind much relieved. How long it may be before recovery. When there is reason to believe that, by God's blessing, the sick person shall recover, and it be desired to know when, observe which planet is Lord of the Ascendant, and what benevolent planet he is in aspect with. Then see what house they are in, that is the one which applies to the other's aspect, whether angles, and k, and what signs they possess, whether movable, and k. Then according to discretion and quality of the disease, so frame the measure of time. In general, I judge in so many days as the aspect wants degrees of being perfect, if the sign be movable and the planet angular, but if swift in motion, I am the more certain that the patient will begin to amend in so many days. If the sign be common, in which the application is, I neither judge days, weeks, nor months, but use discretion, having first observed the nature of the disease. The ancient rule was as follows. Movable signs shoe days. Common ditto weeks. Fixed ditto months. 
Angles are equivalent to movable signs. Succeed ant houses to common signs. Cad ant houses to fixed signs. It is well to observe, also, the quick or slow motion of the, the sign she is in, and her situation as to angles, and k. I often find that when the Lord of the Ascendant quits the sign he is in, and enters a sign in which he has dignities, the patient recovers at that time, or feels an alteration for the better. If a common sign be on the sixth, twenty-eight degrees or more, I say, that the disease will vary in two weeks. Judgment of the disease from the affliction of the moon at the first illness of the patient, or the time of asking the question. 98. Whoever shall be first taken ill, or compelled to take to his bed when they is afflicted by, or by, if he have the nature of, will, in a great measure, suffer as here described. They in Aries, in, or of. Headache or heaviness in the head, much discharge at the nostrils, dullness, or weariness of the eyes, humors falling into the throat, weak pulse, and a heavy drowsiness of mind. Loathing at the stomach, violent unseasonable perspiration, internal heats, and externally cold. The patient more afflicted at night than by day. They in Taurus, in, and k. Of. Fevers proceeding from obstructions near the heart, liver, and lungs, occasioned by surfeits, high living, and k. The pulse high and immoderate, the body inflated, lungs oppressed, ulcerated, and k. If the be not supported by benefits, there is danger of death within fourteen days. The in Gemini in, and k, the disease has its origin in the mind by too much care, or a multiplicity of business, or otherwise by fatigue in traveling or over-exercise. There is danger of a small fever, the pain is dispersed over all the body, but chiefly in the joints. The vitals are afflicted, the pulse rare, and weak, there are frequent perspirations, symptoms of spleen and consumption. If male sign also afflict, without assistance, the patient will hardly live ten days, but if or female sign assist, the sick person may recover after a long period. The in cancer in of, and k, the breast is much afflicted with tough phlegm, or slimy matter. There is cough, and much salivary discharge. Hoarseness, catars, and k, with humors falling into the breast, the windpipe obstructed, slight fevers, agues, and k. Holding a long time, also pains in the bowels, infirmity in the reins or secrets. If be decreasing, and near the body of, the disease will continue a long time. They in Leo in, and k of. The sickness arises from bad blood, the patient suffers with heat in the breast, heartburn, violent fevers, troubled pulse, much external and internal heat, faintness at the heart, swoonings, the stone, and sometimes the black jaundice. If there be no good aspects to prevent it, they frequently die when comes to of. They in Virgo in, and k. The illness arises from indigestion, obstructions in the bowels, and k. Shooting pains are felt under the ribs, and k. Flatulency, gout, or aches in the thighs or feet, and k. The patient generally is sick a long time. They in Libra in, and k. Of, the disease has its origin in some surfeit of wine or rich food, meat ill digested, and k, or from excess of veneery. The breast is affected, also he head, there is no appetite, a loathing in the stomach, cough, hoarseness, and k, and often great pain in the joints, knees, and thighs, with an itching in those parts, and fear of sciatica. They in Scorpio in, and k. Of. Denotes a disease in the rectum or sphincter muscle, piles, hemorrhoids, or fistula. There is very likely a retention of urine, or the reverse, stone in the bladder, dropsical humor, and k. It may be that it is gonorrhea, and k. Or the diseases of the matrix.99. They in Sagittarius in, and k. Of, the patient suffers by pains in the joints, and k, or fever, extremes of heat and cold. Illness often happens by too great exertion of body or mind, and cold taken afterwards. There is much melancholy also. And if it be an of, there is generally a spice of gout, tumors or swellings in the hands, thighs, or feet, and k. If male sign have any ill aspect to, it proves a violent burning fever. 
the in Capricorn in, and k. The disease proceeds from cold or melancholy. It brings heaviness of the breast and stomach, difficulty of breathing, dry coughs, the lungs oppressed, and a fever is approaching. The pain is greater at night than in the day. The patient continually complains of headache, or pain in the left ear, or of a rumbling noise in his head. Point 100. The in Aquarius in, and k. The illness is occasioned by too much toil of mind or body, want of sleep, or due refreshment. The malady comes on unequally with remission or intention. Point 101 The patient suffers by noise in the head, by wind, or faintness at the heart, or a rising danger of suffocation by hysterical fits, and k, and by sore throat. They in Pisces in, and k. The complaint arises from cold, 102 and the patient is afflicted with continual fever, frequently sighs, suffers pains under the nipples of the breast, and about the heart. The throat suffers from much phlegm, or there is water in the chest, rotten cough, and k. Whoever is taken ill when is afflicted by male sign or the, suffers in the following manner. They in Aries in, and k. Of male sign. The disease is from some distemper of the membranes, and k. Of the brain. There is continual fever and restlessness, extreme thirst, foul tongue, or inflammation of the liver, heat and pain in the breast, high pulse, and often delirium. The patient is generally almost mad with pain, either colic or cholera pains, and k. In the bowels. If after the leave male sign she go to or of, there is small hope of life and if she decrease in light, and be slow in motion, there is scarce any. They in Taurus in, and k. Of male sign that, there is an abundance of blood, continual fever, the whole frame disordered, sore throat, with inflammation in the neck, or hind part thereof. Pain in the bones, broken sleep, and a foolish longing after wine and cold water. There is often putrid sore throat and also hoarseness, and strangury, stone, or gravel, with pain in the reins or kidneys, or disease therein. They in Gemini in, and k. Male sign. A violent fever, high and inordinate pulse, there are obstructions and corrupt blood, pains all over the body, heat in the reins, and sometimes spitting of blood, also lameness or fractures in the arms, pains in the joints, and k. They in Cancer, in, and k. Male sign. This shews a disordered stomach by having taken too much to drink, and k, riot, and excess. It often turns to dysentery, cough, and spitting of blood. They in Leo in, and k. Male sign. Too much blood abounds, weak pulse, a disturbed brain, raving, and strong fits, loss of or depraved appetite, distempers of the heart, heaviness all over the body, and drowsiness. There is danger of consumption. The blood is overheated, the body dry and parched, there is probability of pleurisy, fainting, and swooning. I ever fear this or more than in any other sign. They in Virgo in, and k. Male sign. Flux in the bowels, small fevers, a failing pulse, colic, flatulence, weakness in the legs, or near the ankles. If be afflicted by male sign in Virgo, diseases are not easily removed. They in Libra in, and k. Male sign. The patient is grieved with plenitude of blood, and, from that cause, has high pulse, no rest, is feverish, and an inflammation all over the body. The patient has taken some surfeit by excess or disorder in his diet, or the blood is overheated. Or there is stone or gravel in the kidneys. Violent burning fevers often follow. They in Scorpio in, and k. Male sign that, there is generally some ulcer, louis, gonorrhea, and k, or, if a child, measles, it may be piles, or hemorrhoids. There is frequently some stoppage in the head by grievous colds, and as the blood is corrupt, so we find blotches, breakings out, and k. If there be reason to believe it, some scandalous disease may be judged, especially if female sign afflict. They in Sagittarius in, and k. Male sign that, the disease is in general violent, and caused by gluttony or repletion. There is fever frequently very high, or choleric passion, but the pulse is often faint, 
and beats slow and feeble. Inordinate exercise has frequently been the cause of the disease, and he suffers pestilent fever, and it shews hand and foot gout, breakings out, sore throat, and and, at times, sore and inflamed eyes. Also, hurts by horses. They in Capricorn in, and male sign that nausea abounds, vomiting and flux. A puffing up of the sinews, such as cholera cramps, inflammation of the breast, and humors in the hands or fingers. The face is yellow and sunken, the body extremely wasted, and the blood corrupt. The pulse remits, and is slow. The yellow jaundice happens under these aspects. The in Aquarius in, and male sign that, if be slow in motion, and decreasing in light, the disease proceeds from sharp and violent affections, or vehement passions. There is pain at the heart, swooning fits, high pulse, great pain in the chest, and much difficulty in breathing. Figure 12. The in Pisces in, and male sign, the body is full of gross humors, the disease is from too much drinking and excess, and is most prevalent in the night time. The party is troubled with a kind of delirium, frequently it shews that they are yet drunk, they have vehement thirst, sharp burning fevers, and are desirous of wine. They have generally a looseness and much pain in the bowels, or a violent cough and great expectoration, and are almost suffocated with phlegm, the body is swollen, and there is danger of dropsy.103. Question. A sick doctor, what is his disease? Is it curable? To learn what part of the body is affected, observe that, as the ascendant is not afflicted, you must look to the sixth house, and see if it be so. Therein we find in his fall. And as he naturally signifies diseases by his presence, I concluded that, from thence and that house I must require the part aggrieved. Aries represents the head. In Aries shoes the breast point 104. Male sign, Lord of the Ascendant, in Leo, signifies the heart. The Lord of the Ascendant has just separated from a of, being at that time in Cancer, which signifies and rules over the breast and stomach. From all these testimonies I concluded that the parts of the body grieved were the head, breast, heart and stomach, and that there was lodged in the breast or stomach some obstruction, which caused all his disease and suffering. From what cause the sickness was? The principal significator being, and he in his own terms, and disposed of by him and applying to him, shewed such diseases as he causes, and which might exist in the head and breast. Male sign, Lord of the Ascendant, was also in the terms of, and applied to of, who was in the terms of male sign. So that dry, melancholy diseases were shown by, and heat or fever by male sign. And, indeed, when I came to speak to him, he was suffering great pain and rumbling in his head, was very silent, dull, and melancholy. He slept very little, had a very dry cough, and complained of great weakness and pain in his breast and at his heart. His complexion was between black and yellow, as if inclined to jaundice. And he had also a lingering consumption and great weariness all over him, with pains in his joints, shown by in an airy sign. The ascendant is Scorpio, which signifies the secrets, stone in the bladder, and so the in Aquarius shews the secrets and diseases therein, and hence he had great difficulty in making water, voided red gravel, and suffered great pain in those parts. Whether the disease would be curable or not. The author of the disease being, shewed it would be of some continuance, for he is a slow ponderous planet, besides, the angles of the figure are all fixed, and the Lord of the Ascendant, and, are all in fixed signs. The lights are in aspect to each other from angles, and both in the terms of an evil planet, and the Lord of the Sixth in a fixed sign, all these shoot a long disease. The being in the fourth in aspect to in the sixth, and applying to of, who has dignities in the sixth, and the Lord of the fourth in the sixth, and Lord of the eighth in the eighth, the testimonies were strong for his death, he died the August 14th following. Figure 13. Question, what is the disease? And will the patient live or die? The ascendant is Virgo, and it is afflicted by the presence of male sign, who is partly lord of the eighth house, as great part of Aries is already therein. 
Hence from the ascendant chiefly we must learn the cause and nature of the disease, and part afflicted. A fixed sign Aquarius is on the sixth, afflicted by, and, Lord of the sixth, is in Taurus, an earthy sign, of the same nature as Virgo, the ascendant. The, a general significator in all diseases, is also in Virgo in with male sign. All these shewed the patient to be greatly afflicted with the spleen, colic, and obstructions in his bowels, small fever, flatulence, and a failing weak pulse. And as the and male sign are in the ascendant, the patient was perplexed with distempers in the head, slept unquietly, and k. All which was true. Will the patient live or die? All the significators promised death. First. Light of time, was in close to, Lord of the Sixth in fixed signs. 2d, the ascendant was extremely afflicted by presence of male sign, he being Lord of nearly all the eighth house. 3d, the was afflicted by male sign in the house of life. Fourth. The separated from the of, Lord of the ascendant, in signs of long ascension, and did transfer his light to, Lord of the fourth and eighth houses, denoting death and the grave. N.B. The patient died the twenty-eighth of the month, when came to the of and of in the figure. The came then to, and had transited the cusp of the sixth house of the day preceding, viz. Aquarius fourteen degrees. A table. Shewing what parts of man's body every planet signifies in the twelve signs. Aries. Breast, arms. Neck, throat, heart, bowels. Male sign head, bowels, eyes. Thighs. Female sign reins, feet. Secrets, legs. Head, knees. Taurus. Heart, breast, bowels. Neck, shoulders, arms, bowels. Male sign throat, reins. Knees. Female sign reins, feet. Secret members. Head. Throat, legs. Gemini. Heart, bowels. Breast, reins, secrets. Male sign breast, arms, secrets. Legs, ankles. Female sign throat, thighs. Head, knees. Shoulders, arms, thighs, feet. Cancer. Bowels, reins, secrets. Heart, secrets, thighs. Male sign breast. Feet. Feet. Female sign arms, shoulders, knees. Eyes, throat, legs, knees. Head, breast, stomach. Leo. Reins, secrets. Bowels, thighs, knee. Male sign heart, bowels, knees. Head. Female sign heart, breast, legs. Throat, arms, shoulders, feet. Arms, shoulders. Bowels. Virgo. Thighs, secrets, feet. Reins, knees. Male sign bowels, legs. Throat, neck. Female sign stomach, heart, bowels, feet. Head, breast, heart. Arms, shoulders, bowels. Libra. Knees, legs. Head, eyes, secrets, legs. Male sign reins, secrets, feet. Arms. Shoulders. Female sign head, intestines. Throat, heart, stomach, bowels. Breast, heart, reins, bowels. Scorpio. Knees, legs. Thighs, feet. Male sign head, arms, secrets, thighs. Breast, heart. Female sign throat, reins, secrets. Arm, shoulders, back, bowels. Stomach, heart. Bowels, secrets. Sagittarius. Legs, feet. Head, thighs, knees. Male sign throat, hands, thighs, feet. Heart, bowels. Female sign arms, shoulders, secrets, thighs. Breast, heart, reins, secrets. 
Back, bowels, thighs. Capricorn. Head, feet. Eyes, neck, knees, legs. Male sign arms. Shoulders, knees, legs. Back, bowels. Female sign breast, heart, thighs. Stomach, heart, secrets. Reins, thighs, knees. Aquarius. Neck, head. Arms, shoulders, breast, feet. Male sign breast, heart, legs. Reins, secrets. Female sign heart, knees. Heart, bowels, thighs. Secrets. Legs, ankles. Pisces. Arms, shoulders, neck. Head, breast, heart. Male sign heart, bowels, ankles, feet. Secrets, thigh. Female sign neck, throat, bowels, legs. Reins, secrets, thighs, knees. Thighs. Feet. The diseases each planet naturally signifies when it becomes the afflictor, and is posited in any of the twelve signs. Diseases of Saturn. In Aries signifies room, melancholy, vapors, cold in the head, obstructions, stoppage in the stomach, pains in the teeth, deafness, and. In Taurus signifies swelling in the neck and throat, king's evil, scurvy, hoarseness, melancholy, and chronic distempers about the neck and throat. In Gemini signifies infirmities incident to the arms and shoulders, consumption, black jaundice, and diseases proceeding from bad blood. In Cancer denotes thysic, ulcerations in the lungs, obstructions and bruises in the breast, ague, scurvy, cancer, and c. In Leo signifies the heart afflicted by grief or poison, consumption of the reins or inward parts, vapors, weakness, and pains in the back, and c. In Virgo shoes the blood corrupted, obstructions in the bowels, costiveness, weakness in the thighs, melancholy, gripings, stone, and c. In Libra shoes the blood corrupted, back and kidneys distempered, strangury, consumptive pains in the knees and thighs, sciatica and gout. In Scorpio denotes swellings or distempers of the secret parts, melancholy, piles, palsy, gout in the hands and feet. In Sagittarius signifies weakness in the hips and thighs, old aches and bruises in those parts, and sciatica or gout. In Capricorn denotes the gout in the lower parts, pains and obstructions in the head, ague, and c. In Aquarius signifies disorders in the head and teeth, defects in the ears, pains in the joints, bruises, swellings in the legs, and sometimes a sore throat. In Pisces gives defluxions of room, king's evil, consumption, all distempers of the feet and toes, such as the gout, and illness by colds. Diseases of Jupiter in Aries produces distempers in the head, a quinsy or swelling in the throat, chiefly from ill blood in the veins of the head, and causes strange dreams and imaginations. In Taurus brings distempers in the throat, wind in the blood, gripings in the bowels, and goutish humors in the hands and arms. In Gemini dot, a pleurisy, or some disorder of the reins. In Cancer gives the dropsy, the stomach offended, bad appetite, corrupt blood, scurvy, surfeits, and c. In Leo indicates a fever, pleurisy, the heart ill-affected. In Virgo indicates a consumption, obstructions of the lungs, melancholy, cold and dry liver. In Libra shoes the patient hath too much blood, whence arise obstructions, corrupt blood, fever, piles, tumors, inflammations, and c. In Scorpio signifies the strangury, piles, the blood discharged with watery humors, whence arise dropsy, and c. In Sagittarius denotes some choleric distemper, arising from putrefaction of the blood, a fever, pains and swellings about the knees, and c. In Capricorn. The patient is afflicted with melancholy, obstructions in the throat, and c. In Aquarius the, the blood abounds too much, whence it is corrupted, and many diseases and flying pains afflict the body. It gives lumbago. In Pisces. The blood is too thin and waterish, which breeds dropsy. Diseases of Mars. 
Male sign in Aries signifies the patient is almost distracted with a violent pain in his head, room in the eyes, want of rest, and Male sign in Taurus denotes extreme pain in the throat and neck, king's evil, weakness in the loins, and the gravel or stone. Male sign in Gemini shoes the blood is corrupted. Itch, breakings out, surfeit, fever, pains in the arms and shoulders, disorders in the secret parts, strangury, and Male sign in Cancer indicates pains in the breast and stomach, a dry cough, or a tumor in the thighs, accidents to the feet. Male sign in Leo denotes affliction at the heart, choleric humors, gravel in the kidneys, pain in the knees, and Male sign in Virgo signifies choleric humors, obstructions in the bowels, bloody flux, worms in children, humors in the legs. Male sign in Libra produces diseases in the reins and kidneys, stone or gravel, urine hot, louis, and k, as may be suspected. Male sign in Scorpio shews a suspicion of some venereal distemper, or ulcer in the secret parts, pains in the bladder, pains in the head, overflowing of courses, and k. Male sign in Sagittarius produces pain or ulcers in the hips and thighs by humors settled in those parts, and an extreme heat in the mouth and throat. Male sign in Capricorn denotes lameness in the knees, hands, or arms, or a flying gout. Male sign in Aquarius signifies blood overheated, pains in the legs, surfeit, or fever. Male sign in Pisces gives lameness in the feet, by corrupt humors settled there, sometimes the heart is afflicted, and diseases of the sun. In Aries produces sore eyes, megrims, head disturbed. Fevers, and In Taurus denotes tumors in the knees, quinsy or sore throat, breakings out and swellings in those parts. In Gemini. Blood inflamed, pestilential fevers, breakings out in several parts of the body, scurvy, pains and weakness in the legs. In cancer shoes the measles or smallpox, a disordered stomach, hoarseness, dropsy or swelling in the feet. In Leo indicates violent pains in the head, madness, stone, pains in the back, plague, spotted fever. In Virgo produces humors in the bowels, obstructions in the stomach, bloody flux, sore throat, or swellings in the neck. In Libra. Inflammation of the blood, pains in the arms and shoulders, stone and gravel, the venereal distemper, and k. In Scorpio indicates distempers in the secret parts, sharpness of urine, obstructions in the stomach, and female courses, also phlegmatia dolens. In Sagittarius the, the thighs are afflicted by hot humors, a fistula, fevers, swoonings, and k. In Capricorn signifies lameness about the knees, bowels disordered, and a fever. In Aquarius. The blood inflamed, breakings out, rains disordered, gravel, stone, strangury, and k. In Pisces. The secret parts afflicted, strangury, and violent pains in those parts. Diseases of Venus. Female sign in Aries indicates the disease is in the head from abundance of moist humors, lethargy, rains afflicted, and head disordered by cold. Female sign in Taurus signifies pain in the head or secret parts, swellings in the neck from moist humors in the head. Female sign in Gemini denotes a corrupted blood, king's evil, dropsy, and a flux of room. Female sign in Cancer shoes the stomach is much offended with cold, raw, undigested humors, many times with a surfeit, and Female sign in Leo. Some ill affection of the heart, love passion, and Pains in the legs, of bad consequence. Female sign in Virgo shews some distemper in the bowels, a flux, or the worms, mucus in the bowels. Female sign in Libra denotes a gonorrhea or distemper in the reins, or surfeit by too plentiful eating or drinking, and windy disorders. Female sign in Scorpio produces some venereal distemper, and pain in the private parts, and k. Female sign in Sagittarius. Hip gout, surfeits, cold and moist humors. Female sign in Capricorn produces gout in the knees and thighs, and swellings in those parts. Female sign in Aquarius that pains and swellings in the legs or knees from a cold cause, and the heart afflicted. Female sign in Pisces indicates lameness in the feet, 
swellings in the legs, a flux, windy complaints, and diseases of mercury. In Aries shoes the disease lies in the head and brain, vertigo and spasms in the head, and sometimes disorders of the womb. In Taurus produces defects in the throat, swellings in the neck, hoarseness, and also pain in the feet. In Gemini signifies windiness in the blood, gouty pains in the head, arms, and in Cancer produces a cold stomach, gripings, windiness, distillation of room, lameness in the legs and knees from colds, and in Leo indicates tremblings, melancholy, pains in the back, occasioned by colds caught in the feet. In Virgo imports much wind in the bowels, obstructions, pains in the head, short breath, and wind colic. In Libra shoes stoppage of urine, obstructions, blood disordered, breast, lungs, and reins afflicted. In Scorpio denotes distempers in the secret parts, afflictions of the bowels, running pains in the arms and shoulders. In Sagittarius shoes distempers in the reins, weakness in the back, stoppage at the stomach, coughs, swellings in the hips and thighs. In Capricorn denotes stoppage of urine, goutish humors above the knees, pains in the back, melancholy, and in Aquarius imports wind in the blood, running pains in different parts of the body, fluxes and disorders in the bowels. In Pisces signifies pains in the head, weakness in the legs and feet, a gonorrhea, or a distemper in the reins, and diseases of the moon. In Aries signifies convulsions, defluxions of room from the head, lethargy, weakness in the eyes, and pains in the knees. In Taurus produces pains in the legs and feet, swellings, stoppage in and sore throat, and in Gemini denotes a wandering gout in the legs, arms, hands, and feet, surfeits, and great obstructions. In Cancer shoes the stomach much afflicted, a surfeit, smallpox, convulsions, falling sickness, tympany, or dropsy. In Leo, the heart afflicted, sore throat, quinsy, king's evil, and in Scorpio signifies great pain and disorders in the bowels, melancholy blood, obstructions, weakness in the arms and shoulders. In Libra denotes the reins are distempered, obstructions in the stomach, weakness in the back, whites in women, surfeits, pleurisy, and In Scorpio shoes the distemper is in the secrets, smallpox, dropsy, poison, the heart afflicted, swoonings, and in Sagittarius imports lameness or weakness in the thighs, distempers in the bowels, and In Capricorn signifies the stone, weak back, gout in the knees, whites in women, and In Aquarius signifies hysterics, swellings, and pains in the legs and secret parts. In Pisces shoes cold taken in the feet, and body disordered thereby, swellings in the legs, dropsies, and the body overcharged with moist humors. Point one o five. Chapter 30. The Seventh House, and Its Questions. This house signifies marriage, love questions, lawsuits and controversies, contracts, wars, duels, open enemies, bargains, thefts, fugitives, and all matters regarding strangers. The questions to be judged by this house being more difficult than those of any other house, I have been more lengthy in delivering the opinions of the ancients as well as moderns thereon and have written several aphorisms concerning its questions. Aphorisms and Considerations For the better judging any horror question, especially those of the seventh house. 1. See the question be radical and fit to be judged. 2. Be not confident of the judgment if either the first or last degrees of a sign ascend. If few degrees ascend, the matter is not yet ripe for judgment, if the latter degrees, the matter of the question is elapsed, or the Kerant has been tampering with other artists, or despairs of success. Meddle not with it at that time. 3. If, male sign, or be in the tenth house unfortunate, it will end in the discredit of the artist. 4. Judge not upon every trivial motion or light question, or when the Kerant has not wit to know what he would demand. 5. Observe well the strength and condition of, for it is far better that the Lord of the Ascendant be unfortunate than the. 6. The evil planets shew tardiness and difficulty in every question, unless and they receive each other in the signification. 7. 
the benefits, and female sign, never import evil but when ruling evil houses. And if they be significators without reception, even then they put forward the matter. 8. If be void of course, there is no great hope of the question, unless she be in Cancer, Taurus, Sagittarius, or Pisces. 9. Observe from what planet last separated. For it will shew what has already happened, if from a fortune, good, but from a malefic, evil, according to the nature of the house the planet rules and is in. 10. The application of shoes the present condition of the matter, and what may be expected. If applied to a planet in his fall, it denotes trouble and delays. 11. If evil planets promise good, it will be imperfect or less than is expected, and come with much effort, and if they foreshow evil, it will be greater than may be feared. 12. If malefics threaten evil, observe whether, or cast any good aspect to them, for then the evil will be mitigated. 13. If the fortunes promise good, but are weak, or behold not the ascendant, they perform but little without reception. 14. A planet peregrine, viz. Having no essential dignities at all, is very malicious. 15. Confide not too much in a fortune, unless he be in his essential dignities. 16. In a figure where both fortunes and infortunes are equally weak and ill-placed, venture not a judgment, but defer the party for another time. 17. In all questions where the significator of the thing is combust, or into, he can bring nothing to perfection. 18. If one in fortune be joined to another, the good they promise will come to nothing. But the evil they threaten will be more violent. 19. The Lord of the Ascendant out of his dignities, Cadent, and shoes the Carent out of all hopes in the business. 20. A planet under the beams of, viz. Within twelve degrees, has no fortitude. 106. If within sixteen minutes of, he is in Kazemi or heart of, and then he is very strong. 21. If the dispositor of the significator be oriental, and he either, or male sign, the matter is sooner performed. But if female sign or, later, the reverse, if they be occidental. 22. If the significator of the thing desired be in a fixed sign, it denotes stability, and that the thing shall continue, whether it be begun or is to be begun. If he be in common signs, it shews the probability of the matter, but not its conclusion, and if in movable signs, a sudden resolution or concluding the matter one way or other. Hence we begin the foundations of buildings when the significators are fixed, short journeys when movable, but things wherein a mediocrity is desirable, when they are in movable signs. 23. The or lord of the ascendant, with, brings damage, according to the house they are in. They is in like manner beneficial. 24. If in any question you find afflicted, there is seldom any good comes of the matter. 25. If or lord of the ascendant be in their fall, the carent despairs of the matter, nor does he much care whether it be performed or not. 26. Consider diligently the planet afflicting the significator of the thing demanded, and what house he is lord of, and where placed, from the nature of those houses require the cause obstructing. 27. The most powerful affliction to thee is when she is combust, and if she applies to it is the worst. 28. If an infortune aspect your significator, and they be both peregrine or retrograde, you may judge that the mischief threatened is almost inevitable. 29. Take a special notice whether any frustration or prohibition be before the perfect aspect of the significators, the planet which frustrates hinders the thing demanded. 30. In all questions of gain, look well to circle plus, the K rent will get by persons or things connected with the house it is in, but if it be afflicted, he loses in the same way. 31. In questions of marriage, an evil planet in the seventh shoes ill agreement in the married state. 32. If the lord of the eighth be unfortunate in the eighth, the K rent will suffer by the death of some female, or, concerning debts due to him, by dead men. 33. In what house you find or female sign well dignified, expect benefits by men or things signified by that house, as if in the 3d, by kindred, in the 4th, by your father or lands, and, in the 5th, by play, pleasure, and, 
and so of the others. And beware of slander or damage through that house where falls. Questions concerning marriage. Whether a man shall marry. If a man ask this question, let the Lord of the Ascendant, and female sign, also planets in the Ascendant, be his significators. Then if aspect favorably, female sign, or Lord of the Seventh, or the Lord of the First aspect the Lord of the Seventh, or be in the Seventh, or the Lord of the Seventh be in the Ascendant, or if most of these significators be in fruitful signs, or disposed of by female sign. The man shall marry. Whether a woman shall marry. Follow the same rules as above, but, instead of and female sign, substitute and male sign. If male sign have no aspect or familiarity with, it is a strong testimony of the negative. The time of marriage. The degree of the application of to or female sign, or of to male sign, or the lords of the first and seventh to good aspect, or to or, if with strong mutual reception, or of the lord of the ascendant to the cusp of the ascendant. Or the lord of the seventh to the cusp of the ascendant, must be noticed. And if the significators be swift, and the testimonies of marriage strong and numerous, movable signs give days, weeks, or months, as the applying planet be angular, succedent, or cadent. And common signs, in like way, give weeks, months, or years, and fixed signs give, in like manner, months or years. Of marriage with any particular person who may be desired. If the Lord of the Ascendant or, or if the Karent be a woman, the, be joined to the Lord of the Seventh in any of his dignities in the Ascendant, Tenth, or Eleventh, the Karent shall obtain the party desired. If both significators behold each other by or out of the Ascendant and Eleventh, or out of the Seventh and Ninth, or Seventh and Fifth, and no frustration or retrogradation of the chief significators happen before the good aspect be completed. The match will be perfected, if the Karent please. For we always suppose a freedom of will to do or not to do. And if there be a, or between the significators, without reception, the matter will come to nothing. A aspect with reception will perfect the matter, but with some difficulty. If no reception be, there may be hopes, but no grounds to judge favorably. When the Lord of the Ascendant is in the Seventh, the Karent loves best, and when the Lord of the Seventh is in the Ascendant, the Quisited loves best. The match may be brought about, though there be no aspect between the significators, if there be any good translation of light. More especially if the planet who translates be a fortune, or be not retrograde, combust, or unfortunate, or afflicted by or male sign. The person signified may be known by the description of the planet, according to the sign he is in, and the way he is aspect, and the quality of the person, from the house he is lord of. A masculine diurnal planet shews a man, and a feminine nocturnal planet a female, or an effeminate man, and vice versa. Testimonies that the marriage shall be hindered. Observe the planet who receives the light of the significators. If he be a heavy planet, and have the ore of a malefic, or be cadent, the intended match shall be broken off, though at present never so feasible. Remark which party's significator is strongest. That party shall first marry after this dissolution. If the significators apply by an evil aspect without reception, or if there be no good aspect between the luminaries, there will be no marriage. Unless the lords of the ascendant and seventh be placed in each other's houses, and the other signs be very decided for the match. If the evil be in the ascendant, he renders the karent cool, and but little inclined to marriage. Unless he be very strong or well aspect. If he be in the seventh, he has the same effect on the quesited. He is generally an enemy to marriage, whereas female sign assists marriage, and inclines the parties thereto. What shall be the cause of the marriage being prevented? Consider the evil planet who intercepts his rays between the significators, and hinders the marriage, and observe what house he is lord of, and where he is situated. If he be lord of the 2d, want of money will be objected to the karent, or he may fear to marry from lack of means. The Lord of the 3D denotes that it will be caused by the Quirin's kindred or neighbors, or by means of some short journey. The Lord of the Fourth shews that his father will not agree, or it may, especially if a feminine planet, be the mother of the Quesited, 
or it may be for want of some settlement of houses or lands, and the Lord of the Fifth causes obstacles by means of children, or by the carent having a character for loose living, and the sixth denotes sickness in the carent, or opposition by some relation of his father, or by means of servants, or some private enemy of the quesited. The Lord of the Seventh, or a planet therein, denotes a public enemy of the carent, or a lawsuit, or a rival. The eighth denotes a lack of money on the part of the quesited. Or, if other testimonies concur, it may be that the querent's death may intervene to prevent the match. The ninth, in like manner, shews opposition by the relations of the quesited, or the interference of some lawyer or priest, or that the carent may go a long journey or voyage, and so the match be hindered. The tenth and its lord shew the father of the quesited, or the mother of the carent, or some person having authority over the carent. If it be the eleventh house or its lord, then the friends of both parties dislike the match. Or those who first introduced the parties, or endeavored to bring it about, will now try to dissolve the connection. If it be by the lord of the twelfth, or by a planet therein, there is some underhand dealing or secret enmity to the carent. The affair shall be much retarded, but the carent shall never know by whom, or some private scandal will do much wrong, and quite break off the matter. In the same manner that you may thus learn who will oppose the carent, you may ascertain who will assist him in his desires. And by varying the houses, you may know the persons who will aid or hinder the quesited. To describe the person and qualities of the future wife or husband. For the man, observe the planet that is nearest in aspect with and applying, as if with female sign, say she is fair, slender, and pleasant. And according as that planet is found in any of the twelve signs, describe her person, and as it is aspect and dignified, her qualities, observing also the sign on the seventh house. And if there be any planets in the seventh, take that planet nearest the cusp, unless aspect a planet there, then take that planet. For a woman, judge by the planet applies to, in like manner, as if be in or to, he is grave and laborious. If, honest, if male sign, violent, if female sign, fond of pleasure and agreeable, if active and industrious, and if, strange and eccentric. If and are applying to or, there will be contention and discord. Whether the future wife or husband shall be rich or not. Observe the Lord of the Eighth and planets therein. If apply by good aspect to the Lord of the Eighth, or good planets be there, or the Lord of the Eighth have a good aspect to the queer and circle plus, or other significators of property, the future wife or husband will be rich. If evil planets be in the Eighth, or its Lord afflict the or circle plus, the carent will gain little by marriage. And if and male sign be both in the Eighth, he gains nothing. And though the party may have property, the carent will be cheated of it, or lose it in some manner. The persons or means by which the property will be injured, may be discovered by observing what houses the afflicting planets are lords of for the persons, and what houses they are placed in for the means. As, Lord of the Eighth, being in the Ninth, and throwing it to Circle Plus, might denote a lawsuit respecting the future wife or husband's property. Whether the marriage be legitimate or not. If the significators of either party be afflicted by or male sign, or joined to, it denotes some dispute about the marriage, and if other testimonies agree, a lawsuit may be the consequence. How the parties shall agree after marriage. If the figure promise marriage, observe whether the lords of the ascendant and seventh are in good aspect, or if the behold with good aspect the planet disposing of her by house or exaltation, and the luminaries be in good aspect, they will agree. If the lords of the ascendant and seventh be in or, or the be afflicted, and behold the ascendant by ill aspect, or, or male sign, or, be in the ascendant, or seventh, they will live unhappily. If the ill planets, or, be in the first, the carent is to blame, and if it be male sign, is given to quarrel, or be loose in conduct, according to the sign, and if they be in the seventh, it is the quesited. And judge the same way according as the significator of the first or seventh be afflicted. The in her fall, or or of or male sign, or any retrograde planet, and at the same time throwing any aspect to the ascendant, it is the man who brings on disputes, and if the do the same, under the same circumstances, it is the woman. 
The lord of the seventh angular, and the more weighty planet, the quesited will strive for mastery, and if neither the lord of the ascendant nor seventh be in angles, then note the weightier planet, for he points out the party who will rule. If female sign be afflicted, it is worse for the man, and if, for the woman. The afflicted, is evil for both. The lights in evil aspects spew discord. The cause of contention. If the afflicting planet be lord of the 3D, and be in the first or seventh, he denotes quarrels, or injuries by neighbors or kindred. If it be an infortune who afflicts, and he be in the tenth, it shews continual brawls. If he be in the fourth, a divorce or willingness thereto, or some hindrance in the dowry or fortune of the female. Evil planets in the tenth or fourth lead also to contention by means of the parents of the parties. If behold the ascendant, and be unfortunate, it denotes brawling, separation, or dishonest living. And if there be no application between the planet the separates from and that one to which she applies, there will be continual contention. If aspect evilly, or be in with or male sign, one of them shall die shortly, or have some misfortune, if in the eighth or twelfth, and she void of course, they meet troubles, grief, and sickness, and if in angles, long disagreements. And probably separation, if in a fixed sign. If this be in the tenth, and a masculine sign, the man is the chief sufferer, if in the fourth, and it feminine sign, the woman. The cause of happiness. The in or of good planets, choose gifts or benefits by friends, if in, by the dead. If be in with good planets, by their own conduct or industry. Arabic aphorisms not to be trusted to, unless the other testimonies concur. The woman who departs from or loses her husband when is in the last thirteen degrees of Sagittarius, shall never return or marry. The man who shall engage to marry when is in the first twelve degrees of Capricorn, shall lose his betrothed before marriage, or die within six months, or live in discord with her. From what part a person shall marry? If the lord of the seventh be in the ninth, the Kerent shall marry a stranger. If the lords of the first and seventh be in one quarter of heaven, or in one house or sign, the person will marry one near to their own residence. Consider the sign of the seventh, the sign and quarter of heaven the Lord of the seventh is in, and judge by the majority of testimonies from what direction the Kerent shall marry, as if most of the testimonies be southern, the south, and k. Mix the sign in the quarter of heaven, preferring the former. Which of the two shall be most honorable in connections, and k. If the Lord of the Ascendant be angular, and the lord of the seventh succeed ent, the kerent is best connected, and vice versa. In like manner you may judge of any two individuals. A more assured way is, by observing which of the two significators is the most powerful in dignities. You may combine the two systems. Whether a lady have a lover besides the kerent? If there be any planet in the seventh, if it be not lord of the seventh, she has one of the description of that planet. The lord of the seventh, or joined to male sign, she has a lover with whom she is familiar. But, unless other and very evil testimonies accord, not improperly. The lord of the seventh void of course, or with, or if no planet be in the seventh, judge that she has none, and if the lord of the seventh aspect only the lord of the ascendant, judge the same. If either the lord of the seventh, or the be joined to the lord of the triplicity then ascending, and separate from the lord of the ascendant, it seems that she has some friend that she loves besides the Kerent. The Lord of the Seventh, or the, or both, separating from any other planet but the Lord of the Ascendant, and he not separated above three degrees, the lady did love another, but she has now left him. If the Lord of the Seventh be with, she is blameless, unless there be another planet in with them, and then she is not. And if it be, she is faulty in her desires and affections. And if evil testimonies concur, such as aspects of male sign, or the bee in Scorpio, it may be feared in Acts also. If the, or Lord of the Seventh, be in with male sign, and be there, she loves a martial man, yet he cannot prevail on her entirely. If be there, she is sore pressed to comply. If they be near, or within very few degrees, the gentleman resides near her house, and if in the same degree, he is in the house, if it be a fixed sign or frequently visits the house, if it be a movable or common sign. 
If, or Lord of the Seventh, separate from male sign, she had formerly a lover, but now they have forsaken each other. If be Lord of the Seventh, and be in with male sign or in any sign whatever, the lady has loved or does love a person described by male sign or, and he has rank as an officer, gentleman, or clergyman. And if there be mutual reception, they still love one another, and many acts of kindness pass between them. If the or lord of the seventh be joined to, the lover is a young clerk or merchant, lawyer or writer, a witty, nimble fellow. His age may be judged by the number of degrees is in the sign. If the lord of the seventh be joined to female sign with reception, and it be a female who is inquired of, then she cares little for the men. But is fond of female society, is rather free in her language, but not naturally vicious. If it be a male who is the quesited, he is found much in female company, and is partial to such an one as female sign may describe, according to the sign she is in. If the aspect be or and with mutual reception, the lady is partial to him, but if the or lord of the seventh dispose not of female sign, she cares not for him, unless the aspect be very close and in angles. And if the aspect be evil, there is no mutual regard, without there be very strong reception. The lord of the seventh joined to, she loves, or did love if they separate, an elderly person, or farmer, and the lord of the seventh joined to, she loves some person of consequence, according to her rank in life, and if with mutual reception, he may do what he please with her. If they separate, or there be no reception, the feeling is passed away or was never mutual. If other planets aspect in the Lord of the Seventh, especially or, she has other admirers, and if the Lord of the Seventh aspect, or the be in the Seventh, especially if they be then in aspect, or male sign be in aspect with, she is given to change and acts discreditably, yielding up her affections upon slight solicitation. Generally, you may consider that if male sign be in the Seventh, unless he be in his own house, the lady has a lover. If she loves one, but there is no familiarity between them, if be there, she is honest. If female sign, she is giddy and merry, and is thought to be wanton, but is not, if, she had a friend, hut has not now, and if, she has not yet, but will have more than one. If or be there, she is virtuous and honorable, and has no lover other than the K-rent. Denotes discreditable desires at least. Whether a gentleman have a lover besides the K-rent? You may judge this question exactly by the rules for judging of a lady, if you substitute the for the and female sign for male sign. You may in like way judge of friends by taking the eleventh for the seventh. Whether a damsel be virtuous or not. Behold the lord of the seventh, the cusp of the seventh, and the, and if they be in fixed signs and well aspect, you may judge that she is correct. If male sign be in Leo and Scorpio descend, she is suspected but yet is honest. If Scorpio descend and male sign therein, it is suspicious, and if there be a movable sign on the seventh, or the and male sign be in common or movable signs, and be ill aspect. And if male sign and female sign be in ill aspect, or the or behold d, and the evil stars aspect them from fixed signs, there is great reason to doubt. Yet if there be any good aspect to either the seventh or its lord, male sign, or, it is not safe to judge the lady to be unchaste, though she may have been much tempted. The student will do well to avoid a positive judgment unfavorable on this head, unless all the testimonies are decided. If there be great reason to doubt, then observe whether be in the last face of Gemini, or in a movable sign, and in the fifth house, and the lord of the fifth in the ascendant or seventh, and in a movable sign, and either of them in aspect to male sign or the lords of the fifth and seventh in in one sign. If all these, or nearly all, concur, you may be more confident that the lady is faulty. Whether the child conceived is the child of him who is the reputed father. Observe the lord of the ascendant, and the, who signify the k-rent, then observe the sign of the eleventh, and its lord, which signify the issue in conception. If these significators behold one another by or, with reception or not, the conception is legitimate, viz., the child of its supposed father. If they aspect each other by or with reception, and perfect aspect. Or the lord of the ascendant or be in the fifth, or the lord of the fifth in the ascendant, 
without the evil aspect of the infortunes, or if one of the fortunes behold the cusp of the fifth or its lord. Then also is the child begotten by its reputed father. But if none of these things be, an, male sign, or behold the fifth or lord thereof, there may be just suspicion that the child is conceived in adultery, or is not the child of the karent. Whether a woman living from her husband shall ever return to him, or be restored to favor. This question will equally resolve a doubt concerning a mistress or person beloved. If the woman herself propose the question, consider the Lord of the Seventh, for the Seventh is ever given to the banished or expelled party winky face. And if the Lord of the Seventh behold the Ascendant with a perfect aspect, and the Lord of the Ascendant behold the Seventh, or its Lord, without doubt she shall again come into favor. If the Lord of the Seventh do not behold the Ascendant, but another planet, who is not afflicted, behold the Ascendant, the woman shall be received again through some person who shall interpose his friendship with the husband or friend. If none of these things be, observe and male sign, and if be above the earth, and male sign behold the ascendant with or, she shall return quietly, and without much trouble. If be under the earth and male sign above, and behold the ascendant with or, she shall return, but with trouble and delays, and with much publicity. If aspect the ascendant favorably, and be not afflicted, she shall return, but with solicitation. If decrease in light, but be not near the beams of, and behold the ascendant, she will return easily and speedily. If male sign be retrograde, and hasten to aspect with, she will of her own accord return. But if male sign an, or the lords of the first and seventh, separate from good aspect, they have no mutual desire to return, nor will the lady much respect the gentleman for the future. Of runaway servants, cattle strayed, and things lost. The significator of the thing missing is the. Wherefore if you find applying to the Lord of the Ascendant, or to the Lord of the Twelfth, being herself in the Ascendant, or to the Lord of the House of the, the thing missing shall be found again. But if apply to none of these, nor be in the Ascendant or 2D, the thing lost shall not be found. 107 If the Lord of the House of B in the 3D, or into the Ascendant, there is some hope of finding the thing again during that aspect with the degree ascending. Also, if he separate from the Lord of the 6th, 8th, or 12th, and apply by any aspect to the cusp of the 2D, or behold the, you may hope to find it. But if there be contrary indications between these, judge the reverse. If the B aspect well by both fortunes, the thing lost is in the hands of some trusty person, and if or one of the fortunes behold the ascendant, he will restore it to the owner. The place where the thing lost is. This is shown by, according to the sign she is in, for if the sign be eastern, it is east, and if west, it is western, and k. Observe also the place of in the figure, for if she be in the ascendant, it is east, and k, but prefer the sign. If the lord of the house of be in human signs, Gemini, Virgo, Aquarius, or the first half of Sagittarius, it is in a place where men frequent. If in signs of small cattle, as Aries or Capricorn, it is where they are found. If be in a fiery sign, it is where fire is. If in a watery sign, where water is, and k. If be in the same quarter as the Lord of the Ascendant, and there be not more than thirty degrees between them, the thing lost is in the house of the owner, or about it. If they be above thirty degrees and less than seventy degrees apart, it is in the town where he resides, but if they be not in one quarter, it is far from the owner. How the thing was lost. Observe from what planet the Lord of the Ascendant last separated. If from, it was through forgetfulness of the owner, or through cold or illness which afflicted the loser, especially if be retrograde. If from, it was through some abstinence, or ordering of laws, or by excessive care in managing affairs, or putting too much trust in the person by whom it was carried away or mislaid. If from male sign, or the Lord of the Ascendant be in the house of male sign, it was lost through fear or some sudden passion, provoking the loser to anger, or by fire, or by enmity, or upon some quarrel. If from, by means of the king or some gentleman, or the master of the family, or by hunting or pastime. If from female sign, or in her house, by drinking, cards, and k, or making merry in a tavern, and k, or by singing or dallying with women. If from, 
by writing, letters, messages, or going a message, and if from, by too frequent use, or chewing the thing lost, or making it too common, or some messenger, widow, or servant lost the same. If it be an animal, and you would know whether it be stolen or not. If you find the lord of the house of separating from any planet, say that it went away of its own accord. If that lord be not separating, but another planet be separating from him, say that some person took it away. If the lord of the house of be in neither of these cases, look to the lord of the 2D house, and judge by him in the same way. And if you find no separation of either of these two lords, say that the animal is still in or near its place, and is not gone away. Whether it be dead. Observe the. And if you find her an application to the lord of the eighth house from her, say it is dead. But if you find no such testimony, observe her dispositor. And if you find him applying to the lord of the eighth house from the moon, say likewise that it is dead, or will shortly die, but if in neither of these you find application, take the lord of the eighth house of the figure in the same way. And if neither nor her dispositor apply to it, then the animal is not dead. Whether the thing missing be stolen. If the significator of the thief, usually the lord of the seventh, unless there be any peregrine planet in an angle, be found in the ascendant, or disposing of the, or disposing of him. Or the lord of the ascendant be disposed of by him or dispose of him, or unless he apply to the, or lord of the first or two d, or circle plus, or its lord by, or, or some planet be in the ascendant, and be in or to the significator of the thief. The thing is not stolen. Generally any ill aspect of any evil planet, or the lord of the seventh to the ascendant or 2d house or their lords, or or circle plus, or their lords, denote that the thing is stolen. Whether a thing lost shall be found. If applied to the lords of the ascendant for 2d, or to her dispositor, it shall be found. In the ascendant, or her dispositor in or there too, give hopes. The dispositor of separating from the lord of the sixth, eighth, or twelfth, and applying to the Lord of the Ascendant or Cusp of the 2D, give hopes also, and if be an aspect to her dispositor, it is good. But afflicted by the Lords of the 6th, 8th, or 12th, it is in the hands of an evil person, who will not part with it, especially if an infortune afflict the Ascendant or its Lord. Into the Ascendant, its Lord or, or in the Ascendant, or there, unless in Libra or Aquarius, it shall be found. The kind of place a thing lost is in. If be in a human sign, 108 it is in a place where men frequent. And if in a brutal sign, Aries, Taurus, Leo, Capricorn, and the last half of Sagittarius, the thing is where animals frequent. If be in fiery signs, it is where fire is or has been, or near a fire, or on hills or high ground, if in watery signs, where water is or has been. 109 If in airy signs, where many windows are, or open places, garrets, and if in earthy signs, in an earthy place, where houses are built of mud, clay, and and in brickfields. The, or her dispositor, in a movable sign, shews a place newly peopled, or a house newly built, or where there are hills and dales, if in a fixed sign, in a level plain country. If in a common sign, in a place of much water, according to the nature of the thing missing. Also Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius, Pisces, Shu, if it be not living things, within the house, but if cattle, and they shoot ditches, pits, and among rushes, or in a marketplace. Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, Aquarius, Shu that the things are laid low or hid in the earth, or near walls, in hollow trees, and Aries, Cancer, Libra, Capricorn, shoe high places, roofs, ceiling, and but watery signs denote about the foundations of houses, or cellars, if water he there. Of animals missing. If the lord of the sixth be in the sixth, they are small animals, if the lord of the twelfth be in the twelfth, they are large. If the lord of the sixth be in the twelfth, they are in pound, and if in a fiery sign, locked up. If be in common signs, they are in rushy grounds, if in an angle, they are in enclosed ground, if in a succedent, they are near enclosures, if in a cadent house, they are on commons. If in watery signs or aquarius, near fish ponds or other waters. 
and if in the last moiety of Capricorn, they are near ships, or on shipboard, or near some wood or timber yard. Whether it shall be restored. The aspecting or female sign, it is in the hands of an honest man, who will restore it. If or female sign have any aspect to the ascendant, or apply to the ascendant, it will be restored, and if be in the ascendant, it is restored without trouble or pain. The lord of the seventh, or twelfth in the twelfth house, the fugitive is imprisoned. If the be within thirty degrees of the lord of the first, the thing is with or near the loser, if be more than thirty degrees off the lord or the first, it is far off. If it be animals, and the lord of the sixth, or if large cattle the twelfth, be fortunate by the good aspects of female sign or, or they be found in the two d, fifth, or eleventh, the animals will be had again. The same if the lord of the term in which is, or the lord of the cusp of the fourth be with the lord of the ascendant, or the lord of the sixth or twelfth be into out of angles. Of a fugitive, and whether he shall be found or return. The lord of the seventh in the ascendant, he will return of his own accord. Point one ten if separate from the lord of the ascendant, and be joined immediately to the lord or cusp of the seventh, news will shortly be brought of him. The lord of the seventh combust, he shall be found against his will. The afflicted by, male sign, or, or a retrograde planet, he shall be found or return, after much suffering. Separating from or female sign, he shall quickly come back. And if she aspect her own house by or, he will return or shall be heard of within a very few days. The lord of the seventh aspecting and in fortune from the seventh, the Kerant will discover the quesited with some person, to whom he must give money before he can have him back. If the lord of the seventh be retrograde, it is a testimony of his return. Of thefts. The ascendant is for the Kerant, and its lord for him that has lost the goods, and it signifies the place from whence they were taken. The seventh house and its lord, or the peregrine planet in an angle, signify the thief. The 2D house, its lord, and the, signify the things lost they are stolen, and the fourth house, and its lord, shew the place where they are conveyed to, and then are. The aspects of Anne, the lords of the first and 2D, and the dispositor of the, by application to each other, shall shew whether they will be had again or not. If the lord of the 2D and the B in the seventh, and the lord of the seventh behold them both by or, though the aspect be several degrees distant, then are the goods taken away by some one, and not merely lost. If be lady of the 2D, and going to of the lord of the seventh, then has the party mislain it, and the thing is neither lost nor stolen. If be lady of the ascendant, and in the fourth, and the lord of the 2D be in the seventh or eighth in or of, the thing is not stolen, but taken away in jest. If be lady of the ascendant, and be in it, and lord of the 2D in the tenth, with the lord of the seventh, and the lord of the seventh, then are the goods stolen and taken away. If be in the 3D, and into the lord of the seventh, and the lord of the 2D be in the seventh, it was first taken in jest, but is now stolen, and will be hard to recover, unless an aspect the ascendant. If be lady of the fifth, and in Capricorn, and female sign lady of the 2D to the tenth, and into the lord of the seventh, then has the party lost the goods as he went by the way, or left them in some place. If be in Cancer in the eighth, and the lord of the 2D in the fifth, and neither of them behold the lord of the seventh, and he be in the seventh, the goods are taken away in jest by the master of the house, and he will deny it. If be in the fourth into its lord, and the lord of the 2D in the twelfth into the lord of the seventh, then has somebody taken away the things in jest. If be in the house of the lord of the seventh, and be in the twelfth, not beholding the lord of the seventh, and the lord of the 2D be in the sixth, then are the goods removed in jest. And if, in this ease, the lord of the 2D did last separate from the ruler of the, they will scarcely be had again. If the separate from the lord of the 2D by, they are taken away and stolen. And the same, if the, being lady of the 2D, separate from the lord of the house wherein she is. If the lord of the ascendant separate from, he not being lord of the seventh, or peregrine in an angle, or from the lord of the 2D, the Kerant has lain it down and forgotten it, and so it was lost. But, when both the lords of the first and 2D separate from, this is sure. If, in such case, 
the Lord of the 2D, or, separate from the Lord of the Ascendant, then did the party lose the goods by the way as he went, or in some place where he was, or they fell out of his pocket accidentally. And they are neither found nor stolen. But if there be none of these separations, see if the peregrine planet, or Lord of the Seventh apply to, or the Lord of the 2D, then, if they do, the goods are absolutely stolen. If the Lord of the 2D, or, apply to the significator of the thief, he came easily by them, and did not come with intent to steal, but, seeing the thing unprotected, he was tempted to steal. If the significator of the thief aspect the Lord of the 1st or 2D, or the cusp of the 2D, or circle plus, or, or their dispositor, or the planet in whose term is, or if he be in the ascendant, it is stolen. But, if there be no evil aspect to any of these, it is not stolen. Of the age of the thief. Guido Bonetus says, that if the thief significator be, he is very young, if female sign, rather older, but yet a young female, male sign shews him of full age. Of middle age, and, elderly. If the be his significator, and be between the ascendant and tenth, he is young, and so increasing in age until he come to the angle of the earth. If the shoe the thief, his age will correspond to her age. And in all cases judge also by the position the thief significator has reached in the sign where he is found. If he be just entered the sign, quite young, if in the middle of the sign, of middle age, and if towards the end of the sign, elderly. And if aspect him any way, it adds to his age. Oriental planets denote also younger persons, and occidental planets elderly persons. You must consider all the testimonies before you judge the thief's age. Whether the thief be male or female. The significator of the thief being masculine, and in a masculine sign, and they in a masculine sign, it is a male, e, e contra. The angles of the figure masculine shew a man, and if feminine, a woman. If female sign were the be the significator, or, when aspecting them, it is a female, male sign, and aspecting them, a male. Whether one thief or more. If the significator be in a fixed sign, it denotes one only. If he be in double-bodied signs, it denotes more than one, especially if there be more than one planet in the sign, and they peregrine. Also, when and are in angles, and in aspect, it shews more than one. If the significator be in Cancer, Scorpio, or Pisces, it is a testimony of there being more than one, the angles being movable, the same. They in the ascendant, and in a double-bodied sign, shews more than one. And if the significator be in aspect with more than one planet, unless he be in a fixed sign, it shews plurality. Of the color of the thief's clothes. This must be judged in a general manner and by the colors of the signs and houses of the significator, and the planets ruling them. Thus, is black, green, spotted, or ash, male sign red, tawny, or saffron, or sandy, and if you mix the colors according to the signs and planets, and you will judge very nearly the general color of the thief's clothes. Thus, and mixed, give dark green, or green spotted with black, and male sign, a dark reddish brown, or tawny, and, a blackish orange, and shining, and female sign, a whitish gray. And, a black blue, and, a deep russet, or gray, and male sign, a tawny, light spotted, and, a deep, shining red, and female sign, a greenish gray, and, a spotted green, and, a high colored green, male sign and, a deep red, or scarlet. Male sign and female sign, light red, or crimson, male sign and, a tawny red, or brick color, male sign and, a light red, glistening. You must observe, that if the signifier be, in his own house, Capricorn, and not in close aspect with any other planet, the thief will be dressed all in black, because both sign and planet rule that color. But if he were in the first house, which rules white, he would have some white about his person. Also, if it were male sign, who rules red, and he were found in Scorpio, which rules brown, he would denote a rusty, dirty, reddish brown. But if he were in Leo, which rules red and green, and were in aspect, there would be much green, as well as red, about the dress, and so of the ethers. 
the relation the thief bears to the owner. The Lord of the Seventh, or Significator of the Thief, being in the Ascendant, it is one well known to the K rent, or one who frequents his house, and is in no way suspected. If the Significator of the Thief be in the 2D, it is one of the household, or an acquaintance, but if in a feminine sign, it may be the querent's wife or maid servant, and it is in the loser's power, and may be recovered by money. If he be in the 3D, it is one of his near kindred or neighbors, or some messenger, or ether person, often in his sight. If in the fourth, it is his father, or some elderly person, or one who resides in the house. And, of his father. Or he is a laborer or farm servant. If in the fifth, it is his son or daughter, or one of the near relations of his brother or sister, or near neighbor. Or one of the household of his father, or his kept mistress, or some one connected with taverns, theaters, and k. If he be in the sixth, it is a servant, or the querent's father's relation, or it is some person in bad health. If he be in the seventh, it may be his own wife or lover, or some female who has been suspected of having connection with the querent, or it is some person with whom he deals publicly, or one who is his open enemy. If in the eighth, it is a stranger. Yet it is likely to be one who is, or has been, at times employed about the house, such as an occasional gardener, or charwoman, washerwoman, and k. If in the ninth, it is some traveller or vagrant, or some person employed about churches, and k. Or a person in connection with some jailer, or master of a workhouse, and k. If in the tenth, it is a person of respectable circumstances, or some master tradesman, and k one not necessitated to turn thief. And, generally, a person who lodged in the house, or visited it frequently when the thing was taken. If in the eleventh, a friend, or one who is trusted, and has done the carent some service. Or one connected with a neighboring clergyman, or the household of the querent's mother. If in the twelfth house, it is a stranger, or some poor, common thief or beggar. A person in miserable circumstances, who partly lives by thieving or thief taking. Other particulars of the thief. If the thief significator be in the end of a sign, or applying to a planet in the three D or ninth, he is going off. And if it be a superior planet, and leaving a sign, he is undoubtedly leaving his house or lodgings, and k. If his significator be in an angle, he is still in the town, if succeed end, he is not far off but if cadent, he is far gone. If it be in an angle, he is in a house, and if be in an angle, in his own house, and k, if in a succeedent, in a field or enclosure, and if be succeedent, it is his own, or where he resides. And if in a cadent house, he is on a common or open place, and if be cadent, it belongs to the town, and k, where he lives. If the lord of the ascendant and the significator of the thief be together, the thief is with the K rent. And if the thief's significator be in the ascendant, the thief will be at the querent's house before the K rent. But if the significator be in the seventh, he is hid at home, and dare not be seen. The direction in which the thief lives may be judged by the sign and quarter in which the significator is. The denotes also the door of the thief's house. If she be in a fixed sign, the house has but one door. If in a movable sign, the door is high above the earth, and it is probable that there is another smaller door. If aspect the sign of the, the door has been broken, and often repaired, or is old or black. If male sign aspect it, the gate or door has some mark of fire. If and male sign both have a friendly aspect to the sign they is in, the door is iron, or is very strong. If be afflicted, it is broken or injured and if be decreasing, and near, the gate, and k. Opens on the back premises, and there is no front door to the street, if she increase, and is near, it is low down, and there is a step to descend in entering. But if e in a movable sign, there are steps up to it. Whether the goods are in the hands of the thief. If the thief's significator be in aspect to, and disposed of by another planet, they are not in his hands, otherwise they are. The place where the goods are. The nature of the place is judged by the Lord of the fourth house. If he be in a movable sign, it is in a place high above the ground, in a fixed sign, in the earth, and in a common sign, 
it is under the eaves of a house, and 111 and you must judge also by the quality of the sign, as Aries shoes a place where small cattle are, as sheep, hogs, and Leo shoes a place of animals that bite, as dogs, foxes, and Sagittarius a place of animals that are ridden, as horses, mules, and and their stables. Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn shoe a place of large cattle, as Taurus oxen, kine, and Virgo and Capricorn shoe camels, mules, asses, and Virgo also shoes barns where corn is kept, and a place about the earth. Capricorn denotes goats, hogs, and Gemini shoes a wall or partition in a house, Libra a high part, or near a closet or little house, Aquarius shoes near a door, above another door or gate in a high part, Scorpio shoes a place of unclean water, Pisces a place always moist. But if the bee in the same sign with the Lord of the Fourth, judge by her more than him. In what part of a house things lost, stolen, or concealed may be. If the thing lost be in the house, whether stolen or not, behold the Lord of the Fourth, or, if a planet be in the Fourth, take him in preference. If it be, it is in a dark or secret place. And if he be in aspect with male sign or in the house of male sign, it is in or about some dirty place, where people seldom go, a privy, and if, a place of wood, bushes, and if male sign, a kitchen or place where fire is kept, if aspect by, a shop. If, the hall, dining room, or chief room where the master frequents. If female sign, a bed, or among bedclothes, or where females much frequent. In this case Libra would shoe the top of the bed. If, a place of books, pictures, carving, and And if Virgo, where corn is. If, it is in a pit, cistern, or washing place. Description of the house or place where the things are that are lost, and That describes the house, and also its front entrance. If he be in an airy sign, it is high, and and its color may be known by the sign and house he is in. That describes the cellar, pump, or place holding the water, as, if she be in Aquarius, it is a cistern, high above the ground, and if Scorpio, a low pit or pond, if Virgo, a deep well. Female sign shoes the place of mirth, female apartments, and denotes the stairs or ladder to climb by. And describes the place the wood is in, or the animals are kept. Denotes the room, and if in a common sign, it is a cupboard, or small room within another, if in a fixed sign, it shoes a house having no cellar, or a single chamber. If, female sign, or both, be in the tenth, the door has a fair appearance, and opening. If be in the tenth, the door is near some ditch, pit, or deep place, if male sign be there, there is a fireplace near the door, or place for killing animals, if be there, near the door is a place where tools or instruments are kept. If be there, then there is some seat or porch near the door, and if be in the tent, there is near the entrance a door to go underground, a trap or cellar door, or some other convenience in very common use. 112. The nature of the thing stolen. This is judged by the Lord of the 2D house. Shoes lead, iron, things of a black or dark blue color, wool, black garments, heavy things, earthy materials, agricultural implements, carts, and oil, honey, silk, fruit, men's clothes, merchandise, horses, and male sign arms, pepper, brass, red clothes, red wine, and red things, generally sharp pointed, cutting, and hot things, horses for war, and and all warlike engines or instruments. Gold, brass, yellow clothes, diamonds, and things of value. Female sign women's dresses, or ornaments, such as rings, earrings, and white cloth, and white wine. Shoes money, paper, books, pictures, and party-colored dresses, and and scientific instruments, writing desks, and the all common commodities, such as crockery, and cattle, poultry, and also silver. Whether the goods shall be recovered or not. The in the seventh, aspecting the lord of the seventh with a 
a fortune strong in the ascendant, in the 2D direct, in the 10th in a to a planet in the 2D, in the 2D into the lord of the 2D, and going to, or in aspecting the cusp of the 2D with a, or the lord of the 2D in the ascendant or fourth, well aspect by application, in the 2D, going to of in the 12th, in signs of short ascension, all these are signs of its recovery. Also, if the lords of the term and house of the be both increasing in light and motion one thirteen and free from affliction, it shall be recovered, and be uninjured. Generally, if there be a diminution of their light and motion, the thing is already partly destroyed. If there be good aspects to the lords or cusps of the ascendant, or 2d, or to circle plus or its lord, by planets in angles, it will soon be recovered. The lord of the eighth in the ascendant, or with its lord, shews recovery, the lord of the seventh in the eighth, denies it, male sign, or in the ascendant, or 2d, shew dividing and loss of the thing. The lord of the 2d in the ascendant shews recovery. And the lord of the first in the 2d the same, after long search. If the 2d or its lord be afflicted, all the things lost shall not be recovered. If both luminaries be under the earth, it is a strong testimony against recovery. If both an aspect the ascendant, the thing cannot be lost, but will shortly be discovered. Of the time of the thing being recovered. Observe the application of the planets that signify recovery, and determine the number of days, weeks, or months, as they may be in movable, common, or fixed signs, in angles, succedence, or cadence. And if the signifiers are swift in motion, it hastens the recovery, if slow, it retards. Of the thief's person. In addition to the planet's general description in the sign he is in, observe the aspects he has, and take all these into consideration. Moreover, if the significator be oriental, and in Leo, Virgo, or Sagittarius, the person is large. If occidental, and in Cancer, Scorpio, or Pisces, the body is smaller. If the planet have south latitude, he is nimble, if in north latitude, slow in his motions. If going out of one sign into another, he is weak and feeble. Point 114. Signs of the thief being taken. If the lord of the seventh, or thief significator, be in the first or seventh, in with the lord of the ascendant, or a retrograde planet. If the separate from the thief significator, and apply to of the lord of the first. Or go from of the lord of the first to him. Or if and be in with him, or if he be going to combustion, or be in with an infortune in the seventh. He is captured if be in the seventh, applying to of male sign, the, or. Separating from of or, and applying to of, or separating from, and going to, or in the eighth, in male sign or in the seventh, going to the lord of the eighth. The thief escapes. If his significator be in aspect with a fortune. If he be in aspect to or female sign, they being in the eleventh, he escapes by friends, if in the 3d, by strangers, or by law quibbles, and k. of battle, war, duels, prize fights, or other contentions. The lord of the ascendant, planets therein, and, are for the karent or challenger, or him who attacks, the seventh house, its lord and planets therein, for the adversary. Behold whose significators are most angular, best dignified and aspect, and expect victory for that party. If evil planets be in the ascendant, and fortunes in the seventh, the adversary shall overcome, and vice versa also the lord of the seventh, in the ascendant, betokens victory to the karent, and vice versa. Whether any one shall return safe from war, or any dangerous voyage, and the lord of the ascendant, strong, well aspect, and his dispositor a good planet, good planets in the ascendant, or aspecting its cusp, are all good testimonies and the reverse are evil. If the lord of the seventh, and the seventh house, be fortunate, though the first be not, the party returns, though not without great crosses and hindrances, eat e contra. Observe how is disposed. For her application to the good planets is fortunate, and the contrary. Evil planets in the eighth are signs of fear and death, shoes bruises and hurts by falls, and k, and losses, Male sign denotes wounds by weapons, injuries and disgrace. If an evil planet be with the lord of the ascendant, and a good one in the ascendant, 
he will suffer great loss or be sorely wounded, but not die. In the first, or with its lord, shoes lost to the carent by one whom he will meet. In the first, and an evil planet with its lord, he shall be wounded by wood or stone, male sign shoes wounds by fire or iron, and if be in the ascendant, and afflict its lord, he shall receive a wound, and be nearly killed. It is evil if be with the lord of the seventh, or be in the eighth. The lord of the ascendant in the eighth, or with its lord, or the lord of the eighth in the ascendant, denotes the querent's death. And the lord of the seventh in the second, or with its lord, shews the death of the adversary. If the lord of the seventh be strong, and have good aspects from the tenth, or its lord, the carent will gain honor. And if the cusp of the two d and its lord, and circle plus or its lord, be fortunate, then he gains money by the war, and in the same manner as the eighth house and its lord shew death, the twelfth and its lord denote imprisonment. And if the question concern the general result of a war or expedition, it must be judged on the same principles. Of partnership. If good planets be in the first and seventh, the partnership shall be and do well. And if the lord of the seventh be strong, and in fixed signs, it shall endure. If the two lords agree in aspects, and by mutual reception, the partners will accord well together. But if they disagree, the fault will be with that party who has, male sign, or in their house. The significators of substance will shew the means of each party. And as they may be about to receive good or ill aspects, will they thrive or lose by the concern. The eighth, its lord, and planets there, are for the quesited's property. If separate from one fortune, and apply to the other, they will neither of them gain much by the concern. If she leave a good planet and apply to an ill, they begin well but end ill, and if she separate from one evil planet, and apply to another, they begin with complaining, continue with jealousy, and end with lawsuits. An evil planet, or in the 2D, the carent gains but little, will be cheated, or get into debt, if they be in the 8th, judge this of the quesited. And if the lord of the seventh or eighth, or circle plus, the k rent may hope but little gain from his partner, who will embezzle the common stock, and of removing from place to place. The lord of the ascendant and planets therein stronger than the seventh, and planets there, it is better to remain. If there be a benefic in the seventh or, and especially if separate from an infortune, remove an evil planet there, or the lord of the first or leaving a benefic, remain. The eighth house shews the property of the carent in he place he desires to remove to, if evil planets be there, it is better to remain. See also p. 141. Of lawsuits, and their success. The lord of the ascendant or joined to the lord of the seventh, or in or with reception mutual, the parties will easily agree together, and make up the quarrel. But if one dispose of the other, and the reception be not mutual, they will agree without a lawsuit, but not without the interceding of friends. If they be in good aspect without, or in evil aspect with, reception, they will accord, after one effort at law. That party shall be most ready to agree whose significator is disposed of by the other. If they hasten to a mutual good aspect, and the lord of the ninth or tenth interpose an evil aspect, they will be led to dispute by a lawyer or by the judge. If there be any translation of light by the, or other planet, between the two significators, it denotes that they will be reconciled by a third person, described by that planet. Observe whether the lord of the ascendant or seventh be strongest or most powerful, and best aspect, for that one shall gain the day. If they compound, the first motion thereto comes from the lighter planet, who is disposed of by the other. If the lord of the ascendant be in the seventh, the adversary will overcome, and vice versa. If either lord of the first or seventh be retrograde, he shews that the party does not believe that he has right on his side, nor will he stand to it very stoutly. If the lord of the tenth, which denotes the judge, be direct, he will proceed fairly, and endeavor to settle the cause speedily. But if he be retrograde, the judge will not act fairly according to law, nor strive to terminate the cause. If the lord of the tenth throw an evil aspect to either significator, the judge will be against that party. If or be in the ascendant, or aspect its lord, or be in either of his houses, 
it is a good testimony for the Kerent. And if, on the contrary, the Lord of the Seventh be so situated, it is in favor of the Quesited. If the Lord of the Tenth receive both significators, the judge will settle the matter before it comes to full trial. If the Lord of the Tenth be in the Tenth, in his own house, the judge will do justice, and decide the case with honor to himself, unless the Lord of the Tenth be. If the Lord of the Tenth be only in his own term, or triplicity, the judge will determine the cause, but he is indifferent about it. If a planet having no dignities, or not in reception with the Lord of the Tenth, be in the Tenth, the parties will not be satisfied with that judge or court. If be judge, he will not decide aright. And if, female sign, or be in any aspect to him but, there will be an ill report against him, of which he will clear himself, but if it be, he will have a hard report against him, which will long continue. And if male sign too, the judge will be sorely defamed, and if also, he may be disgraced. In deciding as to the result, observe well the Lord of the Fourth, and how he aspects the significators, or the lords of their substance. Also, the application of the If both significators aspect one planet, some person will intercede between them. If the ascendant and seventh be in fixed signs, both parties are resolutely bent on the suit. If common signs, they will continue it long also, and remove the cause out of one court into another, and if movable signs, they are not very determined, and will soon bring it to an end. That party who is weakest, and most afflicted by the infortunes, shall receive most prejudice by the contention of making purchases or sales. If be joined with the Lord of the Seventh, the K rent may make the purchase. The lighter planet of the two houses, first and seventh, will be the occasion of the sale. Judge the nature of the commodity by the house by which it is governed, as the fourth for a house, the twelfth for large cattle, the ninth for books, and the tenth for merchandise. If infortunes be in the seventh, be cautious of the seller, he will try to trick the purchaser. The fourth house will shew the final result, but if be void of course, there may be many meetings, and but scarcely any bargain concluded. Whether a city, town, castle, and besieged, shall be taken or not. The ascendant and its lord are for the rent and for the besiegers. The fourth signifies the place besieged or to be besieged, and the lord of the fourth the governor, the fifth and planets therein the ammunition, soldiers, and in the place. If you find the lord of the first strong and fortunate, or join to the lord of the fourth in the ascendant, or with the or lord of the tenth, or anywhere but in the sixth, eighth, or twelfth, and the lord of the first dispose of the lord of the fourth. Or if dispose him, and be not disposed of by him, it is an argument that the place shall be taken. Or if the lord of the fourth be in such houses as behold not the fourth, and be within fortunes, and weak, it will be taken, and the governor may be wounded. If infortunes be in the fourth, without some strong aspect of the fortunes, it will be taken. If be in the fourth, it will be taken, and some parties will try to betray it, or some principal work or fort therein, the sign will shew which part of the town, and in this case the governor does not expect to preserve it. If the lord of the fourth be in the fourth, strong and not afflicted, neither retrograde nor combust, nor besieged. Of the infortunes, or if the lord of the seventh be there, free from all impediments, or if, female sign, or is be therein, and no reception between the lords of the first and fourth, then shall not the city, and be taken. And if there be both a fortune and infortune in the fourth, it shall not be taken, if the fortune be the nearest to the cusp, or first transit that degree. And this more certainly, if the lord of the ascendant be weak or unfortunate, especially if a light planet. But if the lord of the ascendant be strong, or fortune therein, and the behold the cusp of the fourth, it shall be surprised or surrendered. An infortune in the 2d, or its lord, and afflicted, the Kerent lacks means to pursue the siege with vigor. Of commanders in armies, and whether they shall be victorious or not. If there be an infortune in the ascendant, it shews that the Kerent has no great justice on his part, or cause of quarrel. And if an infortune the ascendant, the party shown by it, viz. 
that for which the Kerent asks, will not manage their affairs well or discreetly. If a good planet be in the ascendant, or aspect it by or, it shews a good cause, and that it will be well managed. An evil star in the 2D, and having no dignities therein, or aspecting its cusp by aspect, denotes that either there will be no war, or that the Kerent will gain nothing by it, a benefit testifies the reverse. If, or male sign well dignified, be in the 3D, the Quirin's party will have good warlike stores, and and will consist of good, brave soldiers, but if male sign be there, ill-dignified, they will be bad characters, and ill-disciplined. If an infortune be in the fourth, the campaign will be held in a difficult country. If the sign describe a hilly country, it will offer obstacles by woods and bad roads. And if it shew a moist country, it will he unfit for military occupations, by reason of rivers, marshes, and and so the army can do no good service. If male sign be in the fifth, well dignified, or a fortune aspect it, the army on the querent side will be good soldiers, and well behaved, but there, or, denotes the contrary. If a fortune or be in the sixth, the ammunition train, artillery, and will be good, if male sign be there, the horses will be fierce, wild and unbroken. If be there, without dignities, they will be unserviceable, slow, and worn out. A fortune in the seventh, the arms and instruments of war will be plentiful and serviceable. If an infortune be there, or afflicting it by evil aspect, they will be the reverse. In the former case, the enemy will be brave and no fool, and will fight fair. In the latter case, the enemy will fight rather by craft and treachery, than fair manhood. A fortune in the eighth, shews that there will not be many men slain on the Quirin's side, nor any very important battle be fought. If be there, there will be much plundering and destruction, and many prisoners be taken, also much death by sickness and want, and if male sign be there, then expect much bloodshed. A fortune in or aspecting the ninth, the enemy is well situated, and will strive to gain by false reports, alarms, and he is politic. If an infortune, he will wear himself out by marching, and will be often deceived by false intelligence. And if a fortune be in the 3D at the same time, the querent side will gain by this conduct of the enemy. A fortune in the 10th, or aspecting its cusp by or, shews that the commanding officer is expert and capable. But if, or male sign, unfortunate, be there, or afflict the tenth house by, the commander on the querent side will be extremely incapable and unworthy, and meet only disgrace. A fortune or in the eleventh, shoes the officers are clever, and understand their duty, and will well support the commander, but an infortune, or, the reverse. If a fortune, or male sign well dignified, be in the twelfth, it denotes that the enemy is well prepared and will defend themselves well. An infortune there, shews that they are weak and will disagree among themselves, and fear their own forces. If be in the twelfth, the Kerent may expect treachery, and if the lord of the twelfth be there, and have any dignities in the ascendant, the Quirent side will suffer by desertion. Whether the two armies will fight or not. Observe the ascendant and its lord, the and lord of the seventh, if they be in any angle they will fight. If the lords of the first and seventh be not in, but are in or from angles, they will engage. Or if there be any planet which transfers the light of one to the other by or, there will be a fight, if there be no reception between them. But if there be none of these, and the heavier planet receive the lighter, there will be no serious engagement. Whether the Kerent have any adversaries or open enemies. If the question regard not any relation, Take the seventh house for any open enemy, if any person be specially considered, but if it he simply as to enemies in general, look to the twelfth house. If it be as to some individual enemy, see whether the lord of the seventh, or planet therein, throw a or to the lord of the ascendant, or, this denotes that the quesited is envious or inimical. If the aspect apply, the enmity will increase. And if the enemy's significator dispose of the querence without reception mutual, the K rent will suffer by him, the manner how may be learned by the house he is in. If the aspect be passed, the injury is done, and the enmity is dying away, unless the querence significator, or, be about to receive another ill aspect. 
If the quesited significator be placed in the twelfth, or in any good aspect with any planet which is in or to the, or lord of the ascendant, without reception, there is enmity to the Kerent. If the question be general, the lord of the twelfth and planets therein must be taken, and they shew private enemies to the Kerent, unless a benefic planet be in the twelfth, and throw a, or, to the Quirent significators. If there be many planets in the seventh, it shews many open enemies, and if in the twelfth, many secret foes. The shews envy and malice, which may be reconciled, the, if without reception, denotes irreconcilable enemies. If an evil planet in the twelfth throw a good aspect to the Quirent significator, it shews that there is some person who under pretense of friendship wished to injure the Quirent. The same if the Lord of the Eleventh be in the Twelfth. The house the Lord of the Twelfth is in, will describe what person will injure the Kerent. Figure 14. Judgment on the figure above. State of the Quirent's case a gentleman had been a long time an earnest suitor unto her for marriage. But she had continually slighted, and at last had given him a positive denial, after which she sorely repented her conduct, and wished she had her former opportunity. She was in this state when she propounded her question to me. Underscore 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 underscore. The ascendant and are for the Kerent, Lord of the Seventh, and are for the gentleman. The Kerent was moderately tall, of round face, sanguine complexion, grey eyes, light brown hair, occasioned by, Lord of the Ascendant, being in the terms of male sign, and she was of cheerful modest countenance, comely, and well spoken. Finding, in the south angle, in with male sign in Taurus, fixed, earthy sign, I judged the quesited to be of middle stature, not tall, nor handsome, a long face, not well composed, a wan, pale complexion. Hair dark, or of a sad chestnut color, curling and crisp, his eyes fixed, always down looking, musing, stooping forward with his head, some impediment in his walking, as treading awry, and all this was confessed. Finding so elevated, and in male sign, I judged that he was gloomy and angry, discontented, scorning his former slights, as all Saturnine people do. And I judged him much incensed by a relation, a gentleman of respectability, shown by male sign, lord of his 3d and 10th, and that this gentleman and he lived either in one house, or near each other. This being shown by the significators being in his fourth angle and fixed, and so it was. I said the gentleman had no inclination for her, as the was void of course, and applied to of, Lord of the Ascendant, which shewed that she herself was her own enemy. She then confessed the truth, and implored my advice how, consistent with honour, she might, if possible, bring it on again, and she appearing in great distress, I began to consider what hopes she had in the figure. I found applying to of. This argued her desire and affection towards the quesited, but as there was no reception it gave little hopes. Finding reception between Anne, 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 and also that disposed of in her exaltation, and in her house, and that was very near of, applying, and not separating. And also that was in his exaltation, he being s fortune, and ever assisting nature and the afflicted, and that he was able to take off the malice of. I was confident, from the exactness of the aspect, that the quesited was intimately acquainted with a person of rank and worth, such as represented, whom I exactly described, and the lady very well knew. I directed her to apply to him, and acquaint him with the full extent of her folly, and I assured her that in him she would find all honour and secrecy. And I doubted not but, by God's blessing, he would again revive the business, and bring her to her heart's content. But finding that and came to aspect on the twenty-seventh of the month, I advised to hasten all before that aspect was over. And as on the nineteenth of June and came to a, I told her that the gentleman should first move the quesited on that day near noon. My counsel was followed, and by that gentleman's means the match was brought on again, and completed within twenty days, to the content of the sorrowful, but to me unthankful, lady, and. I acquainted this lady, that shortly before her lover had been offered a match, and that the lady was well descended, of good fortune, and described by female sign. But that she need not fear his marrying her, as some officer or gentleman, who had been in the army, shown by male sign, would prevent that. 
she well knew both the parties, and confessed that such a mattis had been. Had the query been, who should live longest? I should have judged the female, because is going to, and male sign afflicts. If, whether the quesited were rich? I should say he had a good estate, as, lord of his 2d, was direct, swift, and in his exaltation, and. If, would they agree? I should say they would, as and are applying to. Yet with male sign shoes a man who looks to have authority, one choleric as well as melancholy, jealous without a cause, and, yet the of mitigates his ill manners by means of education. If, will the carent be honest? I answer, her significator is no way afflicted by male sign, her ascendant is fixed, and there is reception between Anne, which are arguments of a virtuous woman. Point one fifteen. In this manner you may examine any figure for discovery of what is necessary, and c. Figure 15. Judgment on the above question. The Kerent was of tall stature, ruddy complexion, sober, discreet, and well spoken, and c. The Quesited was very tall, slender, lean, and of a long visage, with black hair. His tallness I attribute to being in the terms of, and the cusp of the seventh being also in his terms. Indeed, a significator being in the terms of any planet, does vary the party from his natural constitution. So that he will retain a tincture from that planet, according as he is dignified. Point one sixteen. The darkness of his hair I attribute to the aspect of two, and being in the term of. Is here the querent significator, and being retrograde, and under the beams of, shewed that she was in distress and fear that the quesited would not have her. And she had some reason for it. For was in his exaltation, and near the female sign, an argument that the man stood upon high terms, and had been tampering with another, yet, as both significators were in semi-sextal aspect, and in good houses. I gathered hope that there were some mutual sparks of love. And when I found separating from of and hastening to of, thus conveying the light of the quesited significator to the lord of the ascendant, which he received willingly by his retrograde movement. I was confident that the match would be suddenly brought about by a person described by. Who did, indeed, though with a little difficulty, produce the marriage to the content of both parties. Figure 16. Judgment upon the above figure. The ascendant, in Aquarius, and male sign in Gemini, taken together, signified and described the Kerent, the servant's master. He was short of stature, corpulent, of good complexion, and ruddy, fresh color. His fatness I attribute to the north latitude of, which was one degree, also the ascendant was in the terms of male sign, and face of, who was in partile to in a moist sign, which shews a full body, and phlegmatic. The servant was shown by male sign, lord of the sixth, and Scorpio. He was a well-set short fellow, large joints, broad and full face, dark brown hair, his teeth irregular, complexion obscure and sunburnt, yet his skin clear, his age about nineteen. I observed that he went away from his master the preceding Sunday, when was in Gemini, a western sign, where male sign now was, and that, the common significator of servants, was in Aquarius, a western sign, but south quarter of heaven. I judged, therefore, that he went westward at first, and that at the time of the question he was west from the Quirin's house, and this I judged, because male sign was angular, otherwise I should have judged by. As male sign and, lord of the ascendant, were hastening to a out of angles, I judged that in a day or two he should have his servant again. Upon the Friday following he came home, and said he had been at Kingston upon Thames. Which, if true, he was nearly west, but a little south, and near a great water, viz. The Thames, as they in Cancer might signify. Figure 17. Judgment upon the above figure. The queries to me were, what part of the city they should search. And, should he be found? The Kerent was described by the sign ascending, and Kata, therein, and, indeed, he was Saturnine, and vitiated both in body and mind. That is, he was a little deformed in body, of small stature, and extremely covetous in disposition, and k. The sign of the sixth signifies a dog, as it would have done a sheep, hog, and k, or any small cattle. The sign Gemini is west and by south, the quarter of heaven westerly, 
the dog significator, is in Libra, a western sign, and is in a southwestern quarter of heaven, they is in Virgo, a southwest sign, verging to the west angle. The plurality of testimonies shewed that the dog ought to be west from where the owner lived, which was at Temple Bar, therefore I judged that the dog was about Long Acre, or upper part of Drury Lane. As was in a sign of the same triplicity with Gemini, which signifies London, and applied to of the cusp of the sixth, I judged that the dog was not out of the lines of communication, but in the same quarter. Of which I was more satisfied by the love to S.A. Being in an airy sign, I said the dog was in some garret or upper room, and, as was under the beams of, and, and were in the eighth house, that he was kept privately, or in great secrecy. But as, on the following Monday, formed a to male sign, Lord of the Ascendant, and formed a to male sign, who has dignities in the Ascendant, I intimated that he should then have news of his dog, and this proved true. For a gentleman of the Quirin's acquaintance, coming accidentally to see a friend in Long Acre, found the dog chained up under a table, and knowing him to belong to the k -Rent, sent him home about ten o'clock on the Monday morning. To my very great credit. Figure 18. Usually I find that all fugitives go by there, and as she varies her sign, they waver and shift their flight, declining more to east, west, north, or south. But you must judge by the significator or the, according to which is strongest. Or if both be equally strong, take that which best describes the fugitive, with regard also to that one which is nearest in aspect to the cusp of the house from whence signification is taken. That is, if the fugitive be a servant or small animal, the sixth, if a large animal, the twelfth, if a son or daughter, the fifth, and if a wife, the seventh, and judgment on the above figure. Here Scorpio ascends, and partly describes the Quirin's person. Male sign, his mind and disposition, male sign into an, shoot him ill-conditioned, arrogant, proud, wasteful, and as male sign is in twenty-five degrees two foot of Leo, he has entered his own terms, and is in his own face, I therefore refused him for the thief significator. In the next place, though in the west angle, the house of theft, is in his own term and face, I also passed him by. But finding in an angle, having no essential dignity, and in partile of, and of male sign, I took him to signify the thief. But whether he described a malt or female was the question. The angles are part masculine, part feminine, no certain judgment could, therefore, be formed from thence. The was in a masculine sign, applying to a masculine planet, male sign, and was in with, and to male sign, both masculine planets, I judged, therefore, that the sex was male. As ever signifies youth, and as was so near the, separating, I said he was a youth, of some fifteen or sixteen. I described him of reasonable stature, thin-visaged, hanging eyebrows, with some scar or blemish in his face, because male sign casts his too. Bad eyesight, as is with evil fixed stars, the Pleiades, of the nature of male sign and, dark hair, because of his closeness to, a scurvy countenance, and one formerly accused of theft and knavery. Fig. 19. The youth significator being in with, lord of the three D and fourth houses, I judged him the child of some neighbor, and as is in Gemini, and is in Gemini, and in Taurus in the seventh, I said he dwelt either opposite to the K rent, or a little southwest. The circled plus being in the ascendant, and disposed of by male sign, lord of the ascendant in the tenth, and as applied to his, and was within about four degrees of the aspect, I judged he should not only hear of, but have his money again within four days. He believed not one word I said, but would need persuade me that a woman servant, shown by male sign, was one thief, and another, but I stood firm to the art, and would not consent to this, as both and male sign were essentially dignified. The event proved me right, both as to the person and the return of the money, which was within three days after. Explanation of the above figure Living in the country in 1637, I had bought at London some fish for my provision in Lent. It came down by the barge to Walton. On Saturday, the February 10th, one of the watermen, instead of bringing my fish home, acquainted me that their warehouse was robbed last night, and my fish stolen. 
I took the exact time I first heard the report, and erected this figure accordingly, endeavoring to give myself satisfaction as to what became of my goods, and, if possible, to recover part or all of them. Judgment I first observed that there was no peregrine planet in an angle but, whom I found on the cusp of the seventh house. I considered the signification of in Scorpio a moist sign, and the significator of my goods, in Pisces, a moist sign. And that circle plus was in Cancer, a moist sign. Discretion, together with art, led me to think he who had my goods must be a person whose profession, or calling, was to live upon the water. And that they were in some low room, in a moist place, because circle plus was in Cancer, and was in Taurus, an earthy sign, and under the earth. I was confident I should hear of my goods again, as, Lord of the 2D, was applied to buy of, who was Lady of Circle Plus, and yet without hope of recovering them, as was in his fall, and detriment, but as he was in his own terms. And had it to Circle Plus, there were hopes of regaining some of my goods. There being no waterman in Walton described by in Scorpio, I examined what fisherman there was of that complexion and as male sign, Lord of the Seventh, was leaving Scorpio, his own sign, and entering another. I inquired if any fisherman of the nature of male sign and had lately sold any land, or was leaving his own house and going to another. Such a one I discovered, who lived near the Thames side, a mere fisherman, but a jovial fellow, though much suspected of thievery. He was of good stature, thick, and full-bodied, fair complexion, and red or yellowish hair. I procured a warrant from a justice of peace, and reserved it privately until Sunday, the 18th of the month, and then, with a constable and the bargeman, I searched only that one house of the suspected fisherman. I found part of my fish in water, part eaten, part not consumed, all confessed. I asked the woman for seven Portugal onions which I had lost also, but she, not knowing what they were, had made pottage with them. I freely remitted the remainder of my fish, though the hireling priest of Walton affirmed that I had satisfaction for it. Bad he never hurt himself with a lie. Thus you see, that the peregrine planet in an angle describes the thief. And that either or in the ascendant gives assured hopes of discovering who it was. The applying to the lord of the 2D, argues recovery, if they both be essentially dignified, complete, but if accidentally fortified, partial. If both be peregrine, and they apply, there will be a discovery, but no recovery. Figure 20 a figure erected to know whether Sir William Waller or Sir Ralph Hopton should overcome, they being supposed to be engaged near Alsford female sign March 29, 1644. Judgment on the above figure. The ascendant is for our army, the, and female sign, for our generals, viz. Sir William Waller, and Major General Brown, a valiant and prudent citizen of London, who may justly claim a large share of honor in that day's service. Sir Ralph Hopton is signified by, Lord of the Seventh. His army by Capricorn in the descending part of heaven which is usually given to the friends and assistants of the enemy. There are only male sign and in the ninth, so it appears that Sir Ralph had no supplies ready to attend that day's success, and from the, having principal signification of us and our army, being in her exaltation with, I concluded all was and would be well on our side, and that the victory would be ours. From her separation from, I said, I verily conceived that we had already taken some ammunition from them, or performed some service against them. This I was confirmed in by, Lord of our substance and assistance, being posited in the tenth house, in the very degree of his exaltation, the nineteenth. And though I thought by the proximity of to we should not gain the whole, or have a perfect victory, without diminution of some part of it. Yet I was confident we should obtain a considerable proportion of their ammunition, and have a victory, the only thing inquired after, for the applied to female sign, and then to a of, he being angular. I told the Kerent that within eleven or twelve hours after the question we should have perfect news, and it's satisfactory. For, considering that the fight was within fifty miles of London, I ordered my time with discretion, not allowing days for the time, but hours, and this because is distant from female sign 11 degrees, but is withal swift in motion, and increasing in light. These were also signs of our success, and the enemy's defeat. 
It appeared, by a letter from the army on that same Friday, that our generals took on the previous day 120 commanders and gentlemen, 560 common soldiers, and much ammunition. Thus the enemy was worsted, as appeared by, the Lord Hopton significator, being sub radiis in his fall in no aspect to any planet, holy peregrine, and unfortunate and aspecting the cusp of the seventh by. All this argued that he would bring loss to his army, and dishonor to himself by the fight, and c. Figure 21. Question whether His Excellency Robert Earl of Essex should take reading, having then surrounded it with his army? Judgment on the above figure. The General Essex is here shown by male sign, Lord of Scorpio, and His Majesty by, Lord of the Tenth, the forces that were to relieve reading by female sign in Pisces, and in Taurus, also the town by Aquarius, the sign on the fourth. The governor, Sir Arthur Acton, reputed an able soldier, by the Lord of the Fourth, and their ammunition and provision by, Lord of the Fifth, and by female sign located therein. The significator of His Excellency male sign is well fortified, and afflicted in no way but by being in his fall. This figure manifests that it is of great importance in questions of warfare to have male sign friendly to the K-Rent. The separated from nothing, and was void of course, and, indeed, there was little hope of its being gained in the time it was. She applied to of male sign from signs of long ascension, which was equivalent to a which argued that His Excellency would have much difficulty and some fighting ere he could get it. But as male sign and were in reception, viz. male sign in her house, and she in his terms and face, and near Sior. Leo, and in the house of honor, I judged that His Excellency would obtain and take reading, and gain honor thereby. Finding, His Majesty's significator, in the seventh in a fixed sign, I said that he would send forces to relieve the town, and oppose all he could, but that he would not prevail, as male sign was better fortified then. The king did come in person, and was beaten back at Caution Bridge. Figure 22. Finding that Aquarius was not afflicted, I judged the town strong, and able to hold out, and female sign being in the fifth, that they wanted not ammunition. Having well weighed all things, and that, Lord of the Fourth, signifying the governor, was in his fall with, and that and were not far from, I said, and sent somebody word, that the most certain way. And which would assuredly occasion the surrender of the town, was to set division among the principal officers, and incense them against their chief officer. And that about eight days from the time of the question His Excellency would be master of the town. Yet rather by composition than by blood. This because and male sign were separated from their aspect, and male sign was also separated from the of, as also because the applied so directly to of the Lord of the Ascendant, without any frustration, and the town was delivered for the Parliament's use on the April 27th, three days after the time I said, but it is observable that they began to treat on the very Monday before, just eight days after the figure was set. The governor was hurt in the head, as in Aries with shoes, nor did they want provisions, and c, as female sign in the fifth signifies point one seventeen. Judgment on the preceding figure. This figure is erected for the latitude and longitude of Antwerp, and is an exact representation of the heavens at the time the French troops opened ground, or began the siege, before the citadel of Antwerp. By it the student will perceive that the rules laid down by our author, being founded in truth and nature, are infallible, and that they hold equally true in the 19th as they did in the 17th century. They must eventually put the skeptic to silence, and convince the world of the truth of planetary influence. The Ascendant and its Lady, the, are for the besiegers, the Seventh and its Lord for the besieged, the Fourth is for the town, and its Lord for the governor. The Tenth is the House of Honor for the besiegers, and we find potent therein, denoting decidedly that they should gain honor by the siege. They in the Ascendant shewed success to the French, and in the Seventh the reverse to their enemies. The Lord of the Fourth, is in his detriment, cadent, and in exact to the evil, denoting disgrace to the governor, who is thereby shown to be extremely obstinate, as, indeed, he was. The malefic in the fourth denoted that the place should be taken, and, as was in close to male sign, it would be by much loss of men and bloodshed on the part of the besiegers. The is in the terms of male sign, and he in her exaltation and triplicity, 
which reception denotes courageous conduct on the part of the besiegers, and although they is into male sign, yet, there being mutual reception, it shews success in a martial exploit. But with much difficulty, because of the aspect. The garrison were denoted by the fifth, and its ruler female sign. And as female sign is in the sixth, the twelfth from the enemy's ascendant, it shewed that all the enemy's party would be made prisoners, which was the case. The citadel capitulated when a breach had been effected. Mad they surrendered to the French on the 23d December following, when the, the besiegers significator, crossed the cusp of the seventh house, thus entering the seventh just as the besiegers entered the place itself. It deserves notice that on the day fell retrograde, and crossed the cusp of the 5th, December 15th, the besiegers carried the horn work. The student will observe, that the lord of the 7th was peregrine, having no essential dignity whatever. And that the, besides her aspect and her mutual reception with male sign, the chief significator of warfare, is in her own face, and disposes of by triplicity. Hence the besiegers are decidedly the strongest party, and should, by the rules of the science, certainly prevail. The student may rely that the figure of the heavens at the first moment of commencing any enterprise whatever, will infallibly point out, to those who really understand astrology, its final result. Chapter 31 Of the Eighth House, and its questions, these are death, dowry, the wife's substance, etc. Query whether an absent person be dead or alive. Take care to learn whether the quesited be any relation to the k-rent, if so, look to the house signifying that relation, and if not, look to the seventh for the quesited significator. If the lord of the quesited's ascendant be in the fourth or the eighth, either from his own house or in the figure, it is one argument that the party is dead. If, also, his significator be in the twelfth, or his own twelfth in or to a malefic, or if or be unfortunate in like way, you have strong testimony that he is deceased. If the significator of the absent be strong, and in a good house, and separated from a fortune, he is not dead. If he be afflicted, and was lately in or of an evil planet, I judge that he has been in trouble or misfortune, according to the nature of the house from whence afflicted. But not dead, unless the Lord of the Eighth afflict him also, and the lights be afflicted. Of the death of the Karent? If any one ask concerning the probable length of his life, or when he may probably die, observe the ascendant, its lord, and also, the lord of the eighth, an unfortunate planet in the eighth, and that planet to whom the lord of the first or be joined by, or. And you may determine the death of the Karent, according to the number of degrees between the significator and the aspect of the afflicting planet. If the lord of the ascendant be in with the lord of the eighth in an angle, it notes so many years. For in this question angles do not accelerate death, but show that life and nature are strong. If in a succeed end house, months, though if the sign be fixed, it gives half years, half months. In a cad end house, weeks. But you must always consider whether the significators are extremely afflicted, if not, the k rent may live longer, and only be near death at the time threatened. The Lord of the Ascendant is more to be considered in this case than the. And, therefore, his with the Lord of the Eighth or is to be most feared. Observe that the being strong even, yet if the Lord of the Ascendant be afflicted extremely, she does not denote health or life, but only success in his affairs, and. Aspects by separation are not to be considered, but only those by application. Point 118. What manner of death the Karent shall die? This judgment is chiefly shown by the Lord of the Eighth, if in the Eighth, or any planet therein or nearest to its cusp, and having dignities in the Eighth House, or from the planet which afflicts the Lord of the Ascendant, and has dignities in the Eighth. If it be either or female sign, or that they be in the Eighth House, or aspect its cusp by or, they shew a natural death by such diseases as they shew in the sign they are in, and the part of man's body it governs. If evil planets be there, they shew violent deaths, or fevers, and long and painful illnesses, and if the figure be violent, it may be by accidents, and the wit the significator of death is very evil, and if it be, and female sign assist by her, and it shews fear of poison. The lord of the first and eighth being the same planet, 
shews that the Kerent brings on his own death by imprudence, and whether the wife's fortune will be great or easily obtained, or whether the person inquired of be rich or not. The cusp of the eighth, in terms of or female sign, gives good hopes of wealth, or if or female sign be therein. If they be essentially strong, and free from combustion, and they denote much wealth, but though well dignified, if they be combust, slow, or retrograde, they shew trouble in procuring the fortune, and the Lord of the Eighth and the Eighth, and strong, and no way afflicted, gives good hopes of some estate or legacy to fall to the quesitic, this is more sure if either the Lord of the Fourth or Tenth be in good aspect with the Lord of the Eighth from angles. If circled plus be in the Eighth, and in Leo, or Aquarius, or any of the houses of or female sign, or they in good aspect to circle plus, the quesitid's fortune is good. The dispositor of circle plus in good aspect to it, or in female sign, shew the same thing. If all these happen, the quesitid is very rich. If or female sign be in the eighth and peregrine, the party is poor, or there will be contention about the property. The lord of the eighth combust, shews slow performance, and little ability of what is promised. And if be in the eighth, and no planet there, fraud is intended, or more will be promised than can be performed. The lord of the eighth in the 2d, or in or to its lord, the carent shall have what is promised, in, with difficulty. In with much wrangling, if without reception, never. But weigh well what the particular figure promises besides these general rules. Figure 23. Whether the carent shall suffer by a particular thing of which he is in fear. If you find the afflicted, or the lord of the ascendant unfortunate and falling from an angle, or especially if he be in the twelfth, and the with him, there is ground for his fear, and he may expect to be accused, and of much of which he is not guilty. If the lord of the first ascends into the eleventh or tenth, or be joined to a fortune, he shall not be injured. If he apply to infortunes, the thing threatened is true. But if to a fortune, and not at the same time to an infortune, it is false or ungrounded. The into discovers all suddenly. The cadent, and applying to a cadent planet, the supposed danger will be nothing, or come to nothing in the end. Question, shall the querent receive the portion promised? Judgment, the querent significator retrograde in the twelfth, should he have been in despair of it, which he confessed. The female is signified by and female sign. In his exaltation, and in Leo, a fixed sign, argue that she thinks well of herself, is confident, and, yet modest and virtuous. The being near, she had a scar near her right eye. Finding Lord of the Quesitids 2D in his own house, and female sign in her 2D, and also that separated from, and transferring his light to, Lord of the Ascendant and 2D and Circle Plus. I assured the Kerent that he had no cause to fear the non-payment of his wife's portion. That all promised would be paid, and that, to his farther comfort, she would prove a chaste and virtuous woman, but somewhat proud. I have since heard, from his own mouth, that this judgment proved exactly true. Chapter 32 Of the Ninth House and Its Questions Long journeys, voyages, arts, science, church preferment, law, etc. Of a voyage, and its issue. If there be good planets in the ninth, or its cusp be well aspect, or the lord of the ascendant or tenth be there, and well affected, it is good. But if, male sign, or be there, it is always evil. If the lord of the ninth be with an evil planet, he shall not speed well. Shoes losses and sickness, male sign shoes danger by thieves or pirates, and much the same as male sign, but more of cousining and cheating. The house of substance from the ninth is the tenth. Fortunes there shew wealth, in fortunes loss. If benefits be in the ninth, a good voyage, if malefics, many hardships, and what wind and weather the carent will experience. The lord of the ascendant with good planets, and they strong and in friendly aspect, and the lords of the first and ninth in out of Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius, shew fair weather and favorable winds. The significators in, out of fixed signs, shew detention by foul winds, and if near violent fixed stars, storms and contrary winds will drive him back. Of a long journey, 
and its issue. If a fortune be in the ascendant, say he will have good success before he sets out, or in the commencement of his journey, if it be in the tenth, then he will have success on the journey, if in the seventh, at the place to which he goes. And if in the fourth, it will be on his return, and when he is come home. In this case gives benefits by clerical persons, judges, magistrates, or gentlemen, according to the querent situation in life and the house rules, and the nature of the ruler of. As if it be, by a king, or nobleman, or person in power. If, it will be by old people, or ancient matters, or farmers. And k. Let him apply to such a person in his affairs as describes, according to the sign he is in and the aspects he receives. If it be female sign, it will be by women, pleasure, sport, and k. Or by dealing in linen, silks, jewels, spices, and k. If, by writing or merchandise, letters of introduction, and k. If, by some female, probably a widow, or by a sailor, or by carrying news, and k, or by play. Of the length of the journey, and k. The lord of the ninth, or planet therein, or in movable signs, swift and oriental, shew a short time absent. If they be in fixed signs, slow and occidental, it shews a long and tedious journey in absence. If they be in common signs, they shew change of mind, and a varying of his journey, going to other places, and k. According as they is assisted or afflicted, judge results to happen. As, for example, if be in the sixth, or into its lord, it shews sickness or impediments from servants. The lord of the fourth, and the fourth house, denote the final issue. Of the return, and k. Of a person who has gone a long journey. The lord of the ascendant in the ascendant or mid-heaven, or aspect by planets therein, shows that he is thinking of returning. But if he be in the seventh or fourth, his return is prolonged. And he is not thinking of leaving the place he went to. The lord of the ascendant in the three d or ninth, applying to a planet in the ascendant, he is on his journey homeward. The same may be judged if he be in the eighth or two d, and apply to a planet in the tenth, but in this case observe also the, and whether she aspect the ascendant, or a planet therein. If the lord of the ascendant or apply to a retrograde planet, or the lord of the ascendant be himself a retrograde, and behold the ascendant, he is coming, but if his significator be afflicted, it shews some hindrance which makes him tarry. The dispositor of the afflicted, shews hindrance also. If you find or they in the ascendant or mid-heaven, judge that letters or some news shall come shortly from the party, for is the significator of letters, and the of news. If they separate from a fortune, it denotes good news, and if from an infortune, the contrary. The planet from whom the lord of the ascendant of the quesited is separated, is the significator of the state and condition in which he lately was. The planet to whom he applies, of the state in which he now is, and the planet to whom he afterwards applies is the significator of him to whom he intends to come. If the quesited significator be going out of one sign into another, judge that he went out of the place he was in, and entered another, or that he has undertaken another journey. Observe in which of those signs he was stronger, better aspect and received, and, and so judge of his corresponding condition. Observe, that combustion in all questions of one absent, shews some great evil, such as imprisonment, and k. And if it be in the house of death, or be lord of the house of death, it generally denotes death. Ever consider for whom the question is asked, and take his proper significator. The lord of the seventh for a husband, or for any one who is no relation, the lord of the three d a brother, fifth a son, and k, and note how the fortunes are placed. If strong in the figure, while aspecting the significator of the quesited, or in his house, judge health and prosperity, and the reverse by infortunes. Of profit by, or proficiency I in, any science, and k. The ascendant, its lord, and the, are for the k rent, and the ninth, its lord, or planet therein, if more than one, the nearest to the cusp, for the science. See whether the lord of the ninth be fortunate or not, oriental, angular, and k. And whether he behold the lord of the ascendant with or. If he be a fortune, and aspect the lord of the ascendant, the man has scientific knowledge, and will gain thereby, 
the more so if there be reception. If the aspect be your, the man has talent, but shall do no good by it. If an infortune aspect either the lord of the ascendant or ninth, the man has wearied himself, but to no purpose, for he will never attain the knowledge he desires. If infortunes be in the ninth, or its lord afflicted, the party has but little scientific knowledge. The must also be observed with the lord of the ninth, for if they both apply to fortunes, the man is scientific, if to infortunes, the contrary. If the question be put regarding another person, you must in this case give the ascendant for the quesited point 119. Example. The author having given no good example regarding this question, the reader is here presented with a figure, which will no doubt prove interesting. The editor being in company with two other artists, a general desire was expressed to know the future destiny of astrology, and the following figure was erected. Figure 24. Judgment on the above figure. The first thing to be observed in this figure is that, the natural significator of science, is lord of the ninth, and is, therefore, the significator of the science of astrology. He is found cadent, and almost peregrine, having no essential dignity but his term, by which may be seen the present enfeebled state of the science. But as has passed through four degrees of his term in a fixed sign, this points out, that for four years it has been in some measure more in credit than previously. And this is the case, as it is about four years since the editor's publications began to call attention to the science. And as has just passed a of, who describes the person asking the question, it is shown that the science has been much benefited by such a person, about nine months before, because is passed the of by forty-three foot, which shews about nine months. Taking a degree for a year. And the fact is, that the grammar of astrology was published about nine months before the time of the question. The in the ascendant shews the difficulties the editor has had to encounter, and the contumely he has had to meet in bringing the science forward again. The presence of in the ninth, denotes the discredit in which the science is generally held. And being in with female sign, it shews that injury has been done to it by elderly females, who pretend to practice divining, and but who are held in great contempt by the public, as may be seen by the, the general significator of the public, being into both female sign and, from the house of enemies to the science. The next aspect formed by, is the of male sign, who being lord of the eleventh house of the figure, and placed on the cusp of the eleventh from the ninth, denotes friends. This shews, that in about four years from the time of the question, the science will gain many friends among persons denoted by male sign in Gemini, such as writers of public spirit, booksellers, and and there is no doubt that about that time it will suddenly and rapidly gain ground in public opinion. The next aspect formed by, is the of, from which he is distant fourteen degree. This may shew that some sudden mischief may be done to the interests of the science by means of female agents, as female sign is an exact sesquiquadrate aspect to. But as is retrograde, and not angular, this will not be very important. The is in the twelfth from the ninth, and denotes secret enmity to the science by men in power, the being in Leo, and as he disposes of, it shews that the hand of power at present keeps it down. As is eighteen degrees from, one judge that, about the year 1852, some important honor will be done to the science, probably by the present penal laws being repealed, which forbid the acceptance of any remuneration for practicing it as has twenty degrees to pass before he reaches his own dignities, and as will then have entered Gemini, and be disposed of by, I judge that about twenty years hence the science will be publicly honored. And as has afterwards eighteen degrees to pass in a common sign, signifying months, I conceive that about eighteen months after that, when crosses the cusp of the ninth house in this figure, about the year 1856, the science will rapidly rise in public estimation and be publicly studied in colleges, and the enters Virgo after two years, as he is two degrees off, which will cause the ruling powers to relax something of their severity against the science. And as he then has eighteen degrees, equal to eighteen months, being in a common sign, to go before he passes the cusp, there will be some person of rank who will assist the science at that time, viz. three years and a half from the time of the question, or the year 1838. The must now be considered. 
she is hastening to of two planets in the ninth, which shews that there is yet much opposition to be expected to the science by the public, and especially by rash and violent people, which in the house of male sign always denotes. But after the influence of the of and female sign is passed away, the meets nothing out favorable aspects. It is very remarkable that there is aspect by every one of the planets before she passes through Aries. The first aspect she forms after of and female sign is of, which denotes popularity for the works of the editor, connected with the science. The next is of, which shews an increase of students and public discussion. The next is of male sign, denoting increase of powerful friends, who will boldly advocate the cause of the science. The of is of little import. But the of being the last aspect she forms before leaving the sign, decidedly shews that at last the science will receive the highest patronage and be publicly honored, and as is in Leo, a fixed sign, this will be permanent. Finally, the cusp of the fourth is in the term as well as house of male sign, and is ruled by, by triplicity, and face, and casts of their two, male sign, lord of the fourth, is in with, into an, and to and female sign. And he rules the by house and face, and the by face. All these are decided testimonies, that in the end the cause of truth shall triumph, and the reality and utility of the science be permanently established. In a fixed sign, and so powerfully aspect by, male sign, lord of the fourth, the house denoting the end of the matter, female sign n, is another strong evidence that astrology is destined to flourish while the world endures. NB. It is remarkable that had just passed the of female sign, lady of the 2d, or house of property, from the ninth, and lady also of the tenth in the figure, and ninth, house of law, from the ninth. This shewed the benefit resulting to astrology, by the repeal of the law which taxed almanacs, and which greatly injured the science. It is also remarkable, that was exactly passing over the 2d degree of Gemini, the cusp of the tenth, house of honor, from the ninth, about the February 7, 1835, when the last sheet of the former edition of this work went through the press. And at the same time was in Libra 23 degrees 6 foot, having just quitted the ninth house, where he had injured the interests of the science. Figure 25. A woman asks of her husband, who is at sea, if alive. When return. Judgment. The Lord of the Ascendant, shews the K-Rent. He being with and in Aries, which rules the face, she was extremely disfigured in the face by small pock, had weak eyes, and and was full of grief and sorrow for her husband, occasioned by afflicting. She had also a lisp, and spoke ill, for in a bestial sign afflicting, causes impediments in speech, especially if also be afflicted. Signified the quesited, who being in the tenth, and lately separated from a female sign, now in the ninth, and lady of the 3d, it shewed that he had been lately some voyage southeast. And as was no way afflicted and swift in motion, as well as angular, I judged the man was alive and in health. But as who disposes of, is lord of his eighth, viz. the 2d house, and as is so exceedingly afflicted by Anne, I said he had been in much danger and peril of his life by treachery and plots of his adversaries, for his lord of the seventh from his ascendant, and of his twelfth. Moreover, is accidentally but not essentially fortified, and is in his detriment, and near Oculus Taurus, a violent fixed star, intimating that the man had endured many sudden and violent chances. Finding more fortified then, she almost entering Taurus, a southern sign, and in Gemini, a western sign, and south quarter, I judged that the Quesited was in the southwest or England, in some harbor, as was Angular. When she should hear of him, or see him, the separates from, and applies to, the Quirin significator, shewing that after much expectation, and she should hear of him, and in about three days, as is so near, and in a movable sign, and so she did. But as is in a movable sign, and afflicted by him and, the news she heard was false, for she heard that he was in town. But it was not so. Considering that and hastened to a in Gemini, being therein very potent, and that this was about the May 5th following, I judged that she would about that time have certain news of her husband, if he did not then come home. The second week in May she did hear from him, but he did not come home till July. 
He had been several voyages in the west, was taken prisoner by the king's forces, and, at the time of the question, was in Barnstaple. Fig. 26. Question, whether presbytery shall stand. Judgment, the angles of the figure are not fixed, but the cusp of the ninth, from which this judgment is to be deduced, is Taurus, a fixed and stable sign. And we must also judge from therein in the terms of, who is the general significator of religious matters. Is now stationary, and is leaving his exaltation, and is impedited by male sign. After leaving cancer, he enters the fixed sign Leo, and is in the terms of. We find female sign, who rules the ninth, in her detriment, and in the twelfth house from her own, the ninth. She has twenty-one degrees to pass through in the eighth house before she get into her own sign Taurus, and where she would be fixed. But before she reaches Taurus, she meets the of, shewing that the gentry of England will oppose it, and then of male sign, lord of the ascendant of England, Ares, hence the whole commonalty of the kingdom will disapprove of it. And all three planets at the time of the aspect in the term of. There is not a single planet fixed, except, nor essentially dignified, except, the entering via combusta, male sign and in their fall, female sign in her detriment, and impedited by male sign. The separates from female sign in the eighth, and then goes to of male sign an. From these configurations we shall form our judgment, that posterity may see that there is some verity in astrology. The position of in the ninth, who is naturally of a severe, surly, rigid, and harsh temper, may argue that presbytery will be too strict, sullen, and dogged for the English constitutions, little gentle or compliant with the nature of the community. And that there shall spring up among themselves many strange opinions and distractions even, concerning this very presbytery, that they shall grow excessively covetous, contentious, and desirous of more than belongs to them. Worldly, envious, and malicious one against the other, that among them some juniors, represented by female sign 120 shall be light in judgment, wavering, and decline the strictness of their discipline. And that the elders, represented by, shall not be respected on account of their excessive rigidness, nor shall their orthodox opinions be consented to. Observe, that is peregrine, and supported by no favorable aspect of either fortune. There is reception between and him, but no aspect, lord of the tenth, signifying authority, is fast separating from, as if the gentry or supreme of the kingdom do already decline from the severity of the austere Presbyterian clergy. Fearing thraldom rather than freedom to ensue from their power. Three whole years from hence shall not pass, ere authority itself, or some divine providence, will inform our judgment with a way in discipline or government either nearer to the former purity of the primitive times. Or better beloved of the whole kingdom of England. Or authority shall in this space of time moderate many things now strongly desired. For some time we shall not discover what shall be established, out all shall be even as when there was no king in Israel. A confusion among us shall yet a while remain. The soldiery then, or some men of fiery spirits, will arise, and keep back their contribution from the clergy, and will deny obedience or submission to this thing called presbytery. It will then come to be handled by the magistracy, and the grand authority of the kingdom. Also, by the plurality of the clergy, or men of sound judgment, it will be contradicted, disputed against, disapproved. And these shall make it manifest that this very presbytery, now maintained, is not the same that the Commonwealth of England will entertain as a standing rule to live under. From what I find by this figure, I conclude that presbytery shall not stand here in England. 121. Figure 27. Question, whether, the querent should obtain the parsonage desired. Judgment. In the first place, I find between, Lord of the Ninth, and male sign, Lord of the Ascendant, but separating. Two delay, neither the, nor Lord of the Ascendant, in the Ninth, three delay. There is no planet translating the light of to male sign. For THLY. There is no reception between and male sign. 5. THLY is impedited in the ascendant, and by his presence afflicts the K-rent, and causes him to despair of success. 6. THLY, the separates from a of male sign, and applies to of, lord of the 3D. 
which intimated that some neighbor of the K rent, either with a letter, words, or cross information, would wholly destroy the Quirin's hopes, and that mercurial men, viz. scholars or divines, would be his enemies, and as I found female sign in Libra, opposing the ascendant, I judged that some female would inform against him, or prejudice him in his suit. From all this I persuaded him against proceeding any further in the matter. But the parson being covetous, would proceed, and did, and when he thought to have success, behold a scurvy letter, revealing some unpleasant truths concerning a female, dashed the good man's hopes, ed exit. The carent was and male sign exactly, had wit and volubility of tongue, and as and were in, he under the earth, she in the twelfth, he could never discover which of his neighbours it was that thus injured him, nor would he ask me. If he had, it must have been, lord of the twelfth, viz. Some farmer or dealer in cattle, a sickly, repining character, living northeast, about fifteen furlongs, from him. Chapter 33 The Tenth House and Its Questions, viz. Office, Dignity, Preferment, Government, Trade, or Profession, etc. The usual significators are for the K rent, and the tenth house, its lord, and the, for the place, preferment, and k. Inquired after. If the lord of the ascendant or be both joined by good aspect to the, or by or good aspect to the lord of the tenth, and this planet behold the tenth, or be therein, the K rent shall gain the thing sought for, if he use proper endeavors. Or if none of the significators be joined to the lord of the tenth, Yet if the Lord of the Ascendant or be in the Tenth, unafflicted, he shall gain it, and also, if the Lord of the Tenth be in the Ascendant. And very easily, if the two Lords be going to a good aspect. The Lord of the Tenth join to or female sign, and in the Ascendant, he gains the office, and, easily. If join to or male sign, and either of them in the Ascendant, but well dignified, it will be gained, but with difficulty. The Lord of the Tenth receiving, or the Lord of the First, denotes success. And if there be translation of light from the Lord of the Ascendant to the Lord of the Tenth, it denotes that it will be gained by means of such a person as the planet translating the light describes. If the Lord of the Ascendant apply to of the Lord of the Tenth, and there happen no previous abscission by any other planet before the be complete, the K rent will gain his desire, but he must labor hard for it. If any planet be in or to the Lord of the Tenth, or the, let the K-Rent make application to such persons as they describe, for they may greatly befriend the K-Rent by means of their influence. If the promising planet in any case be in an angle, the matter will be readily completed, if in a succeedent, but slowly, and if in a cadent, the affair goes backward at times. But may, at last, be performed, if the planet be otherwise well dignified. If an evil planet behold or the ascendant by or, without reception mutual, he hinders the K-Rent by means of that person who is to solicit the cause, and k. for him. The best sign of all is, when the two lords be joined together, and the separate from the lord of the tenth, and apply to the lord of the ascendant, but it she apply to either, it is good. If the lord of the ascendant apply to good aspect of the lord of the fourth, it denotes success, but if the lord of the fourth be joined also to the lord of the tenth, the matter shall be effected but only after much delay and vexation. Whether a person shall remain in the office he holds, or not. Observe whether the lords of the first and tenth be in, or any aspect, and note whether the more ponderous planet of the two be in any angle but the fourth, if so, he shall not be removed. But if the heavy planet be in the fourth, or approaching it from the fifth, he will leave his office. Yet, if there be reception between the two lords, he shall recover it again. And if the reception be mutual, he returns speedily, and with more honor than before. You may judge the same if the Lord of the Ascendant be joined to a planet in the 3D or 9th, or to their lords, and after separation be joined to a planet in any angle, except the 4th. But if the two lords, of the 1st and 10th, separate from each other, then he returns no more to his office, but loses it entirely. If the Lord of the Ascendant, or 10th, or the, are disposed of by any planet in an angle, except the fourth, and that planet be slow in motion, he shall not be removed until that planet. Be combust or retrograde, or leave the sign he is in. But much about that time he will be removed, 
unless some powerful aspects intervene. If the be joined to the Lord of the Tenth, and he in the Tenth, the officer or governor, and shall not be removed. If the Lord of the Ascendant, or, be joined to the Lord of the Tenth, and he more weighty than either of them, and in the Tenth, Eleventh, or Fifth Houses, free from impediment, though he behold not the Tenth. The officer shall be transferred to some other place or office. But if he behold the Tenth, he shall remain where he is. If the be joined to any planet not in his essential dignities, though with reception, unless it be or female sign by or, the k shall leave his employment, office, and k. If either the Lord of the Fourth, or, be in the Fourth, and Aries, Cancer, Libra or Capricorn, be on its cusp, he will leave it, and this is more certain if be then joined to the Lord of the Fourth, and he peregrine. The same may be feared if be in Capricorn, and afflicted, or if she be void of course, and the Lord of the Ascendant be afflicted. Whether a king expelled his kingdom, or an officer having lost his place, shall be restored. The Ascendant and its Lord are for the K rent, be he king, duke, or gentleman, and k. Observe, that if the Lord of the First be in with the Lord of the Tenth, and the more ponderous planet behold the Tenth House, then the king or ruler, and k. shall be restored. If the planet do not behold the Tenth House, observe whether be joined to any planet in the Ascendant, or Tenth, which also will denote his restoration. If be in Aries, Cancer, Libra, or Capricorn, he returns the sooner. If the Lord of the Tenth be joined to a planet in the Tenth, or the, but not by two, it denotes the same. The Lord of the Tenth a lighter planet than the Lord of the Fourth, and separated from him, argues the same. If the Lord of the Tenth be lighter than the Lord of the Ascendant, and be joined to him, he shall return to his office, and k. So also, if be joined to the Lord of the Tenth, and behold the Tenth House, unless disposed of by a peregrine planet under the earth. The Lord of the first aspect and received by a planet not afflicted, he returns, if not received, he will not. The joined to a planet in the ninth, it not being a fortune, shews that the king, and k. recedes from his kingdom, and k. If it be a fortune, and in Aries, Taurus, Cancer, Leo, Libra, CP, AQ, he will return, and if it be in Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius, or Pi, he obtains office, power, and k. In another place. The Lord of the Tenth, or, being afflicted by of an infortune in any angle, the king, and k. Shall never be restored. Point 122. Of the profession, trade, or employment of which any one is capable. Consider the lords of the Ascendant and Tenth, and the cusps of those houses, the, and, also the places of male sign and female sign, for these two planets are the significators of trade or employment. Observe which of the two, male sign or female sign, is the most powerful, and note the sign he may be in, also consider the four angles, and any planet in them. If they be in fiery signs, or the majority of them, viz. Male sign, female sign, the planet in an angle, and the cusps of angles, especially the tenth, and male sign have any dignity in the place of the lord of the tenth, or the, say the k-rent will make a good tradesman, and k. In any business where fire is used, or of its nature. And if the lord of the tenth be in his exaltation, he will do well in serving the king, or any high nobleman, and k. If the significator of the employment, usually the lord of the tenth, or a planet, especially male sign or female sign, in the tenth, near the cusp, be in Aries, weak, he will make a good cattle dealer, groom, farrier, grazier, and k. If strong, a coachmaker, veterinary surgeon, and k, where he has to do with horses or great cattle, in a respectable way. If the significator be in Taurus, then husbandry will best suit him, or gardening, corn dealing, grazing, and k. Or if female sign be the significator, such things as appertain to women's affairs, a soap boiler, fuller of cloth, scourer, and k. If the significator be in Gemini, he will make a writer, clerk, bailiff, and k. Or a surveyor, painter, astronomer, astrologer, geometer, schoolmaster, and k. If he be in Cancer, he will be fitted for a variety of occupations, but he will be likely to go to sea, or to deal in liquids, such as wines, 
beer, and k. And he will be fond of political distinction. If he be in Leo, he will make a good horse jockey or coachman, a smith, watchmaker, glassblower, huntsman, or cow doctor, or to do with any trade which use his fire. If in Virgo, he will make a good secretary to a person in power, a schoolmaster, accountant, stationer, printer, he will be an excellent politician, or be a good astrologer, and k. If in Libra, he will be a good poet or orator, singer, or musician. Silkman, or linen draper, and k. If in Scorpio, he may prove a good surgeon, apothecary, or physician, or a brazier, founder, brewer, vintner, waterman, of master. If in Sagittarius, he will do very well to make a clergyman, to study chemistry, to buy and sell cattle, or to be a cook or butcher. If he be in Capricorn, he will prove a good chandler, vittler, farrier, farmer, dealer in wool, lead, or farming commodities. If he be in Aquarius, he will make an excellent ship carpenter, and if any planet aspect him out of a watery sign, he may prove a good sailor or shipmaster, or a painter and ornamenter of ships, or a merchant. If he be in Pisces, he makes a good jester, singer, player, and k, or brewer, or fishmonger, but generally the genius is dull, and the party given to sottishness. As fiery signs shoe workers at the fire, whether goldsmiths, and k, or bakers, and k. So earthy signs shoe occupations connected with the earth, as potters, ditchers, brickmakers, gardeners, and k, airy signs import singers, gamekeepers, actors, and k, and watery, sailors, fishermen, watermen, laundresses waiters in taverns, and k. Figure 28. Judgment on the above figure. The ascendant and female sign are for the K-rent, the tenth house for the office or preferment he expected. Finding strong in the tenth, was one argument that he should succeed. In the next place, applied to of, who has exaltation in the ascendant, and who receives female sign by house, and is received by her again by exaltation. The applying to of the Lord of the Fourth, argued that in the end he should obtain the office. But as was in the seventh in to the ascendant, with, and was Lord of the Eleventh, I judged that he employed as a friend a solar man, who was false, and did rather envy than feel friendly to him. I concluded, that with some difficulty he would obtain the office, notwithstanding the opposition a pretended friend offered, and so it came to pass within three weeks, and he then discovered that his friend was false. Who had a great scar in his face, his hair of a blackish color, shown by being so near. The separation of from of, argued that he had delivered many petitions about it, hitherto without any success. Chapter 34 Of the Eleventh House, and its questions, viz. Of friends, hopes, property of the king, etc. If the lord of this house be strong, fortunate, and well aspect, it foreshows the obtaining the thing hoped for. Also the love and concord of friends, and k, if that be the question. Whether any one shall have the thing hoped for. Observe whether there be any good aspect or reception between the Lord of the Ascendant and Eleventh, or translation of light, or that the Lord of the Ascendant be in the Eleventh, or the Lord of the Eleventh in the Ascendant. All or any of these give reason to expect it. But if there be none of these, note the, and if she be not well qualified with the Lord of the Eleventh, nor any benefit, or in the Eleventh, judge the contrary. The Lord of the Eleventh in an angle, received by the Lord of the Ascendant, you may judge in the affirmative. If the receiver of the be in a common sign, judge that he shall have but part of the thing hoped for. If in a movable sign, he shall have but a little, a mere sign of the thing, but if the receiver be in a fixed sign, he shall have the whole or complete thing. Yet, if the receiver of be unfortunate, the matter shall get some injury or hurt, and after he is in possession of it. If there be mutual reception between the receiver of the and the, he shall obtain the thing, and more than he looked for. And if the Lord of the Ascendant be also received, he shall obtain whatsoever he hoped for, that is feasible or possible. If the querent significator or apply to a fortune, not cadent, he may expect the thing desired. N.B. If the querent name the thing hoped for, then judge of it by its own proper house, and k, 
as, if it be money the 2d, if it be children the 5th, and of the sincerity of friends. 123. Good planets in the 11th, or there, or good aspects between the lords of the 11th and ascendant, denote the friends of the Kerent to be sincere. And if they throw good aspects to the cusp of the 2d house, its lord, or circle plus, it denotes gain thereby. Evil planets, and evil aspects in like manner, denote false friends and losses. The lord of the twelfth in the eleventh, denotes a secret enemy under the guise of friendship. In the eleventh, shoes wavering, unsteady friends, unless he be in a fixed sign. Chapter 35 Of the twelfth house, and its questions, viz. Of imprisonment, great cattle, private enemies, banished men, etc. If a question be asked regarding secret enemies, who are not named, observe the Lord of the Twelfth, and planets therein, how they aspect the Lord of the Ascendant. And from what houses, and k. If the Lord of the Twelfth behold the Lord of the Ascendant from the Sixth, Eighth, or Twelfth, or from the Fourth, Seventh, or Tenth, then there are some who privately wish ill to the k rent. To know who a private enemy is. Observe how the Lord of the Twelfth is affected, and whether he be with good or evil planets, and how he behold the Lord of the Ascendant. If he be in the sixth, or joined to its Lord, it spews the secret enemy is afflicted with some secret disease or malady, if the Lord of the sixth be in the twelfth, he is also sickly. If the Lord of the twelfth be in the tenth, or with its Lord, he is in favor with the king or some person of rank. And if he be strong, it will not be well for the Kerent to meddle with him, especially if he aspect the Lord of the Ascendant or Bayor. If the Lord of the Twelfth be with the Lord of the Fourth or Eighth, or in those houses, he is sickly or near dying, or is repining, and very miserable. Consider and judge farther, as in former cases directed. Whether a person committed to prison shall be discharged. First learn your Ascendant exactly, by knowing what relation the Quesited bears to the K rent. If be swift in motion, it denotes a short stay in prison. If she aspect a planet in the 3d or 9th by or, or by, if with reception, he shall soon leave the prison, the same, if she aspect the lord of the 3d or 9th, and be not in an angle. As you judge by, judge also by the lord of the ascendant. But these aspects must be by application. The lords of the angles being in angles, is an ill testimony and so much the worse if the Lord of the Ascendant be in the fourth, or if either he or the Lord of the Twelfth dispose of each other. It is still worse if the Lord of the Ascendant be disposed of by a planet in an angle, especially a malefic, and worst of all if that malefic be in the fourth, and if he be the Lord of the Eighth, he may expect to die in prison. The disposed of by the Lord of the Twelfth, or any malefic, is a sign of a long stay, and it is still worse, if her dispositor be in an angle, and especially in the fourth. If, however, the disposing planet be in a movable sign, or swift in motion, it shortens the time, but a retrograde planet shews a long detention. If the Lord of the Ascendant, or, be combust, it shews a long imprisonment. The an immovable signs, when is Lord of the Ascendant, shews speedy enlargement, especially if they aspect a fortune. If ascend, or be in with, or female sign be in the ascendant in with, or be in with, and aspect the, or apply to or female sign, he will be discharged. The dispositor of with a fortune denotes the same. Whether a prisoner of war shall escape or be exchanged, and k. If the lord of the ascendant separate from the lord of the fourth, and apply to a fortune, or if the lord of the ascendant be cadent, or leaving an angle, he shall escape. Also if he separate from combustion, or get from under the beams of. If at the time of being taken, or of the question, a fixed sign ascend, or the, or lord of the ascendant, be in a fixed sign, or in Pisces, it denotes long imprisonment. The same if a fixed sign be on the twelfth, or its lord be angular, and in a fixed sign. The, or lord of the first, in Taurus or Leo, and in to male sign, shews danger of being slain by the sword, or by quarreling. If in two, it shews irons or severe punishments. If it be an ordinary prisoner, these may shew sickness, want, and ill-treatment, or accident, and k. 
and in fortune in Aquarius, choose a long imprisonment. If the Lord of the Ascendant be in his fall or detriment, and they in Aquarius, the same, also the, or Lord of the First, in the Eighth or Twelfth. If applied to a fortune, and the Lord of the Ascendant and the cusp of the Ascendant be fortunate, it denotes liberation. Note, female sign is better than in this question, especially if in aspect to or. If be with, and behold them by, and male sign by, it denotes that, after a long confinement in suffering, he shall break prison and escape. If a felon, and k. Be imprisoned when ascends or rules the ascendant, he shall escape, the ancients declare, within a month, if female sign, within forty days, if, he has long imprisonment. If, his state will depend on and change according as she has applications with other planets, if, he has long confinement, if, short, and if male sign he shall be ill-treated, beaten, put into irons, and k. Figure 29. Judgment on the above question. The prisoner's person is described by Sagittarius, the cusp of the twelfth, and by in Leo. The way he went, and intended to go, is here shown by the cusp of the twelfth Sagittarius, and by Leo, where is, and by the sign and quarter of heaven wherein we find. All of them considered, they signify, unanimously, that the prisoner would go eastward, or full east, and so he did. The closeness of to the ascendant shewed that he was not yet out of town, or, at least, that he would not be far from town. And as was in the eighth, I judged that he lay obscure for a while, viz. A night, but that then he would go away, which he did. I confidently affirmed, that he should be taken again by some man of authority. For separated from of, his significator, and applied to of, both in angles. It never fails, but that if the, or the significator of a fugitive, be afflicted by an unfortunate planet in the seventh house, that fugitive, or prisoner, is again taken. In the next place, I found an inn, in his own house, and applying to. Therefore I judged that the Cairant should have news of the prisoner by letter, or by some young man, within six or seven days, or when the significators came to aspect, which was six days afterwards. The truth is, that on the next Friday he had a letter to tell where he was, and on the Sunday he apprehended him by authority. Figure 30. Question, a lady asks when her husband, who is imprisoned, shall be delivered. Judgment. The lady's husband is signified by Lord of the Seventh, he is in cancer retrograde, and had the day before been into. The applies to of retrograde, then to of with a most forcible reception. From hence I made, not many words, but told the lady she need not trouble herself to make friends to apply to his majesty, for that I was assured that either he was, or would be, within three day. Discharged from his imprisonment by means of a solar man, a commander who would release him and furnish him with what was necessary for his convenience. The truth is, he was released, and the garrison where he was prisoner taken the day before the question was asked, when was in to his significator, by an honest parliamentary colonel, who plentifully relieved him with money. And all convenient necessaries. In his exaltation, retrograde, in a movable sign, and into, shewed short imprisonment, the more so, as is Lord of the Fourth, and the so perfect. Fig. 31. The time of His Excellency Robert Earl of Essex last setting forth into the west of England. Here Aquarius, the ascending sign, well represents his form of body, for it was comely, and k. And female sign, his mind, they having all dignities in the ascendant. Has also much to do with his qualities, being Lord of Pisces, an intercepted sign in the ascendant. I first considered that the separated from a of, and applied to a of male sign, Lord of his house of substance, assistance, and k. And also of the ninth, his house of journeys. This intimated he should have but slender success, and lose much by his present march. Finding in the ascendant, I judged that he would be betrayed in his counsels. And seeing, Lord of his ascendant, Peregrine, and in his fall in the 2d, they in her detriment, and circle plus disposed of by, Lord of his seventh, signifying his enemies, and that, the general significator of wealth, casts it to the ascending degree. I gave this judgment that His Excellency must expect no success from this employment. 
that he would have no honour by the journey, that he would be extremely crossed by men of great power here at London, who pretended great friendship to him. Lord of the tenth and eleventh, being into his ascendant, that he would be betrayed wholly, and be in danger to lose all, that, in short, I was extremely sorry he had chosen so unlucky a time to set forth, and k. And k. The issue was thus, for I write to posterity he prospered in the beginning, and daily men of good quality and authority jeered at me, and derided my prediction. I was quite content to be abused, provided that he might have had success. But observe, that on the September 8th following, came sad news, that on the 2d of September this worthy man had surrendered all his ammunition to his majesty, having only quarter for his soldiers. With some other articles, which were dishonorably performed, to the eternal shame of the royal party. Figure 32. Judgment on the above figure. The above remarkable era in the life of King Charles I affords a striking illustration of the truth of the rules of the science as laid down by our author. The king is here represented by the ascendant, the, and the lord of the ascendant, because he began the war, as it were, by this act.124. Here we find peregrine, and retrograde in the ascendant, a decided testimony of ill success. There is also ascending, a sign of evil and treachery to the king. His second house is afflicted by male sign, who is in his detriment, and disposed of by, the significator of his adversaries. The king's circled plus is afflicted by of male sign, and by of, having only the of, who is retrograde, and into n, the joint significator of his foes. Then we find the ascendant into, the significator of the enemy. And also the into the, cadent and peregrine. Each one of his significators is afflicted, and, the lord of the eleventh, his house of hopes, and of the tenth, the house of honor, and dispositor of, is afflicted by the of, by being retrograde, and by being within orbs of a of. Lord of the twelfth, the house of disgrace and misfortune. Now as regards the adversary, we find in both ruling the seventh, and placed therein in mutual reception, being in the house of, and in the house of. There is also in the seventh, and female sign lady of their 2d, or house of substance and means, assistance, and k, is strong in her own house n, angular, and no way afflicted. The general significator of war, male sign, is in his detriment, and is disposed of by female sign, a benefic in the seventh. The lord of the adversary's tenth, or house of honor, is, and he is in reception mutual with the, angular, and no way impedited, except being retrograde, and he is in the term of male sign, and male sign is in his term, another mutual reception. All these things were decided testimonies that his majesty should fail in all his endeavors, and eventually be ruined. The Lord of the Twelfth being also Lord of the Ascendant, shewed that he had been himself his greatest enemy, and the cause of his misfortunes. The Lord of the Twelfth, House of Imprisonment, being in the Ascendant, shewed that he should be imprisoned. The more so from his being in Pisces. And history tells us how truly the signs of heaven spoke on this occasion, for all the remainder of his life, after this August 22 d. 1642, was a mere labyrinth of sorrow, a continued and daily misfortune. The student will perceive that his death was plainly foreshown by the applying to a female sign, Lady of the Eighth, or House of Death, from signs of long ascension, in which a, it is said, has the same effect as a in other signs. The moreover is with Antares, a violent fixed star, now in about seven degrees thirty foot Sagittarius, which is said to denote a violent death, which is farther shown by the of two, the latter being in an angle. The Lord of the Fourth being into the Ascendant, was also a token of his death, and perhaps Scorpio being in the Eighth, and male sign, its ruler, approaching Caput Algal, which is said to denote beheading, might intimate that. But all such minute points must be left to posterity to decide, when the science will be better understood. The hour of the King's death was 4 h. 4 m. p.m., 30 th. January, 1648 to 9, when the heavens were as represented in the following figure. The student will see that, Lord of the Ascendant in this figure, had exactly gained the aspect of the at that time, being in Gemini 9 degrees 25 foot, and that was just transiting the Ascendant of this figure. And that the cusp of the tenth, which denoted the king, 
is there the place of in this figure. There is in the twenty-ninth degree, of Capricorn, a aspect to the cusp of the eighth, in this also. And, part lord of the ascendant here, is in with the place of female sign, lady of the eighth. All these coincidences must be considered by the genuine searcher after truth as strong evidences of the truth of planetary influence, as evinced in horary astrology. The consequences and final result of the mad attempt of this unhappy king to make war upon the nation were here plainly depicted. And it is for the opponents of astrology to shew, that these things are merely accidental coincidence, or the fruit of chance, the deity they so fondly worship. Figure 33 Observations on the above figure. King Charles I. Was born at Dunfermline, in Scotland, about 15 miles from Edinburgh, on the November 19, 1600, at which time was in nine degrees of Sagittarius. Hence, at the period of his death, was exactly into the place of at his birth, and male sign nearly into that place. The of two will ever be found to bring trouble, sorrow, disgrace, and often death, to the native. It will be seen that at the time of the king setting up his standard at Nottingham, the was exactly transiting the of his own place at birth, a decided cause of failure, discredit, and c. But although we mention these circumstances, we would remind the student that such transits can have but little effect unless evil directions be operating at the time. Which, there can be no doubt, was the case in the nativity of the unfortunate and ill-advised King Charles I. If we regard this figure as that of the exact commencement of the Commonwealth, we shall find that it will point out the result of that change in the government, as it would of any other thing which might then have commenced. There is Lady of the Ascendant, and she is in her detriment and peregrine, hence the Commonwealth was not successful. Her being in a movable sign, and movable signs on the Ascendant and Seventh, and such signs intercepted in the other two angles, shewed that it would not be permanent. The Lord of the Fourth being also Lord of the Twelfth, shewed that it would come to an end by means of the exertions of its secret enemies, and as is also Lord of the Seventh, and rules there, it shewed that its enemies would overthrow it at length. The end of it was clearly pointed out to be when came to of the Lord of the Fourth, and to the in signs of short ascension of the Lord of the Eighth, who is very powerful, as being in reception with, and with, and ruling both in. And being also with. If we calculate from the place of the to the of, we shall find eleven degrees and a quarter, which would be equivalent to eleven years and a quarter, which, it is well known, was the exact duration of the Commonwealth. Aphorisms, by Tzadkiel. First. In all cases of hearing rumors or reports, receiving letters or messages, and if you erect a figure for the exact minute of hearing or reading the news, and the Lord of the 3D in good aspect with the cusp of the seventh, or a planet in the seventh, shews that the news is true, and that you are not deceived, if he be in evil aspect, either semi-square, sesquiquadrate, or, the news is false. 2D. Whenever any person applies to another on any business whatever, either by letter, message, or personally, the first house represents him who is the first mover in the matter, who either goes or sends to the other and the seventh represents the person applied to. Therefore, when a person reads a report in a newspaper, or elsewhere, the seventh shews that person, because the report, and, comes, as it were, to him. 3d. If you apply to a person for goods of any kind, and they are promised, the application of the Lord of the 2d to the Lord of the 8th, or a planet therein, shews the time when they will be received. Fourth. If you receive a bill of exchange, the figure for that time will shew whether it will be paid. If circle plus receive a good aspect of the Lord of the First, it will be paid, but if circle plus receive any evil aspect of the Lord of the First, it will not be paid. Probate est. The circle plus always denotes money, whether in cash or bills, but property, whether in goods or lands, houses, and k, is always shown by the Lord of the 2D, or a planet therein. Appendix, Explanation of the Hieroglyphics Facsimile of the Hieroglyphic of the Great Plague in 1665, published by W. Lilly, in the year 1651. Facsimile of the Astrological Hieroglyphic of the Great Fire in London, September 2d, 1566, published by W. Lilly, 
in the year 1651. The first of these curious cuts, which have been exactly copied from our author's tract, entitled Monarchy or No Monarchy in England, is intended to represent a great mortality, in which the vast number of deaths should so far exceed the supply of coffins, that the dead must needs be buried in their shrouds, or merely stitched up in sheets, and as therein rudely represented. The second cut is an astrological hieroglyphic, as may be understood by the horoscope being introduced therein. And the two children or twins are intended to represent the sign Gemini, which, in astrology, is known to rule London, and the twins are, therefore, intended to denote that city. Their falling headlong into the fire, describes the extensive injury to be done to London by that element fifteen years afterwards. The manner in which this was foreseen by the author has been explained in our remarks on his life. These two hieroglyphics, even if there had been only these, whereas there were several others equally pointing out future events, published with them, would ever remain undeniable monuments of our author's skill. And of the substantial truth of the science of astrology. Description of persons according as the significator may be found in each of the twelve signs. Saturn in the twelve signs. In Aries. Gives a ruddy complexion, a spare, raw-boned person, full-faced, dark hair, not much beard, addicted to boasting, resolute, quarrelsome, and very ill-natured. In Taurus. Gives a person in no wise comely, but a heavy, lumpish, awkward appearance, dark hair, middle stature, not well-made, rough in carriage, sordid, vicious, and in Gemini. Represents a person of rather tall stature, dark, sanguine complexion, oval visage, dark brown or black hair, ingenious but unpolished, perverse, and generally unfortunate in most of his undertakings. In Cancer. Denotes a person of middle stature, rather short than tall, sickly and feeble, meager face, dark hair, languid eyes, the body sometimes crooked, jealous, malicious, and deceitful in his dealings. In Leo. Gives a person of moderate large stature, broad, round shoulders, wide chest, lightish hair, large boned, surly aspect, eyes sunk, apt to stoop. Qualities tolerably good, generous but passionate. Not over valiant or courageous when put to the test. In Virgo. Represents a person of a tall, spare body, swarthy, dark or black hair, and it plentiful, a long head, solid countenance generally unfortunate, inclined to melancholy, retaining anger. A projector of many curious matters to little purpose, studious, subtle, reserved, inclined to pilfering and indirect dealings. In Libra. Describes a person above the middle stature, comely brown hair, oval face, large nose and forehead, clear complexion, one opinionated of himself, prodigal of expense. They are given to debate and controversy, and seldom leave any wealth at their death. In Scorpio. Represents a person of a mean stature, squat, thick, trussed body, broad shoulders, black or dark hair, which is usually short and thick. Quarrelsome, mischievous, one who will undertake violent and dangerous actions, though to his own detriment. In Sagittarius. Gives a large body, brown hair, good make, tolerable complexion. Obliging disposition, not covetous, moderately frugal, rarely profuse, but somewhat choleric. One who will not bear an affront, yet willing to do good to all, a lover of his friend, and merciful to an enemy. In Capricorn. Personates a lean, raw-boned body, dark or black hair, middle stature, dark complexion, small leering eyes, long visage, and a stooping awkward posture in walking. One who is peevish, discontented, melancholy, covetous, of few words, fearful, retains anger, and is of great gravity. In Aquarius. Gives a reasonable full-bodied person, a large head and face, rather inclined to corpulency, middle stature, sad brown hair, a clear complexion, a sober, graceful deportment. Affable, courteous disposition. Of an excellent, searching fancy, and generally very proficient in what they undertake in arts or sciences, a person of a pregnant genius, yet subject to be conceited. In Pisces. Describes a middle-statured person, 
pale complexion, sad or dark black hair, a large head and full eye, sometimes the teeth are distorted. A person not very comely. Active to do mischief, malicious and given to contention and dissimulation. An uncertain, fickle person in everything, though often presenting a good outside, yet fraudulent and deceitful in the end. They are not loquacious, but deliberative, and do evil with malice aforethought. They are said to improve as they grow aged. NB always gives bad teeth, and in this sign they are generally discolored and rotten. Jupiter in the Twelve Signs In Aries Describes a middle stature, but not stout, rather lean than corpulent, a quick and penetrating eye, a high nose, oval visage, with generally pimples or a peculiar redness in the face. They are of a free, noble, and generous disposition. Very obliging, polite and complaisant, especially to their friends. In Taurus. Gives a middle stature, stout, well-set body, but, though compact, not handsome, hair brown, rough, and curling. Complexion swarthy. And frequently the skin looks shining or oily. The disposition reasonably good, judgment sound, deportment good, behavior free and charitable, fond of the female sex, and very humane and compassionate to the distressed. In Gemini. Represents a well-made, compact body, plump, yet above the middle stature, sanguine complexion, though rather dusky, brown hair, and full, expressive eyes. The deportment graceful, affable, courteous, gentle, mild, obliging, and good-natured. An admirer of the female sex, and a lover of learning. But if be near Oculus Taurus, in Gemini 6 degrees 15 foot, with 2 degrees 36 south lat, he will be addicted to women. And if near Aldebaran, in Gemini 7 degrees 30 foot, with 5 degrees 29 south lat, he will be rash and unstable, inimical to himself, and disagreeable to others. If with the bull's north horn, in Gemini 20 degrees 20, with 5 degrees 22 north lat, he will be rash and violent. In Cancer. Gives a person of middle stature, a pale, sickly, and unwholesome complexion, oval face, hair, dark brown, body rather plump, but disproportioned. A busy, loquacious character, very conceited, and apt to intermeddle with other people's concerns. A lover of women, and fond of the water, whereon he is usually fortunate. Unless male sign throw a good aspect to, he is not courageous. In Leo. Represents a strong, and well-proportioned, tall body, the hair is a light or yellowish brown, and curling, complexion, ruddy, eye, fall and fiery, person, rather handsome. The disposition is noble-minded, courageous, and magnanimous, but lofty, and proud, and ambitious, one who delights in warlike actions, is a terror to his enemies, and who scorns to bend to them, fond of contending for honors, and and full of daring and enterprise. In Virgo. Gives a person of a reasonably full stature, well built, and what may be termed handsome, sad brown or black hair, ruddy complexion, but not clear or fair. One who is choleric, and given to boasting. Studious, yet covetous, and by his rashness often meeting serious losses, he is not easily imposed or wrought upon by any person. In Libra. Renders the body complete and elegant, a handsome form, and inviting face. Upright, tall stature, rather slender, clear complexion, a full eye, oval face, light brown hair, subject to have pimples or a rash in the face. Disposition and temper, mild, behavior, winning, and obliging to all. Partial to exercise and recreation, much esteemed, and honored. In Scorpio. Gives a middle stature, Stout, compact body, dark, coarse hair, fleshy and full face, muddy, dull complexion. Manners, proud and lofty. One who is ambitious, and desires to bear rule over his equals, resolute, covetous, ill-natured, and selfish. Very subtle and crafty, therefore to be very warily dealt with. In Sagittarius. Gives a fine, tall, upright body, good form and make, oval face, ruddy complexion, brown chestnut-colored hair, full beard and whiskers. 
but the hair falls off early in life, especially about the temples, a good eye, and much expression in the face. The mind is just and noble, disposition courteous, humane, affable, and agreeable, manners, polite and accomplished. One fond of horses and hunting. In Capricorn. Describes a small stature, pale complexion, thin face, little head, not much beard, weakly person, dark brown hair, said to be darker than the beard. The mind is ingenious, but peevish, inactive, helpless, indolent. In Aquarius. Persona tes a middle stature, well set, brown hair, clear complexion, rather corpulent, compact make, and one of a cheerful, obliging disposition, hurtful to none. Well conducted, and moderate in recreations, just and merciful, good-humored, industrious, communicative, inclined to be scientific, and but little given to extravagance. In Pisces. Describes a person of middle stature, obscure complexion, plump, fleshy body, lightish brown hair. Disposition harmless, studious, and possessed of excellent talents and good acquirements, friendly, kind, and inoffensive. They delight in good company, and to be upon the water, where if throw not an evil aspect to, they are found to be fortunate. NB usually gives good teeth, and frequently an apparent mark in the four teeth. In an airy sign, he gives broad four teeth, in a fiery sign, crooked, in earthy they are discolored, and in a watery sign, the teeth decay suddenly, and grow black and rotten, especially if he be in with, or in any evil aspect of or male sign. If he be in a watery sign, in, or, the party has some defect in his delivery or speech. In an airy sign, the body is more strong and corpulent, in a fiery sign more square made, and strong. In an earthy, a well-composed body, and in a watery, more fat and comely. Mars in the Twelve Signs Male sign in Aries Represents a middle-statured person, well-set, large-boned, swarthy complexion, light hair, and curling, frequently red. Austere countenance, and, if male sign be oriental, ruddy, and smooth, bold and undaunted, confident, choleric and proud, fond of war and dispute, one who often gains by those means. Male sign in Taurus. Gives a middle stature, well set, rather short. Dusky complexion, dark or black hair, which is rough and coarse, broad face, wide mouth, he will generally have some scar or other mark in the face, which is often ruddy, but never fair. He is gluttonous, debauched, given to drinking and wenching. Also a gambler, and very quarrelsome, treacherous, and ill-natured. He is generally unfortunate, but, if male sign be near the Pleiades, remarkably so. Male sign in Gemini. Gives a tall person, with black or dark brown hair, though if male sign be in the first seven degrees of Gemini, the terms of, it will be light, sanguine complexion, and well-proportioned body. He is restless and unsettled, but ingenious. Unfortunate in most things, living in a mean way, generally shifting here and there, leaving his debts unpaid, and exercising his wits for a livelihood, in short, a chevalier d'industry, or mere swindler. But good aspects of, or female sign, will mitigate this evil judgment. Male sign in Cancer Describes a short figure, and a bad complexion, without much hair, and it brown, the body is generally ill-made, and crooked. The temper is sour and bad. One who is given to sottishness, a mean, servile, unfortunate creature, usually he is employed in some low business, being incapable of better. Male sign in Leo Shoes a well-proportioned body, rather tall. Light brown hair, oval face, sanguine or sunburnt complexion, large eyes, stout limbs, and a brisk, cheerful aspect. A lover of women, given to boasting, fond of robust sports, as hunting, riding, shooting, and and ready for warlike occupation at any time. He dresses well, and is a favorite with the ladies, but it is generally to his prejudice. Male sign in Virgo. Produces a middle-sized body, and well-made and proportioned, black hair or very dark brown. The first seven degrees give lighter hair than the rest of the sign, being the terms of, 
the complexion is swarthy or darkish, and generally some scar, marks, or blemish in the face. A hasty, proud, revengeful, and spiteful mind. One who retains an injury, is hard to please, conceited, and generally very unfortunate in all he undertakes. Male sign in Libra. Gives a neat made, rather tall person, his face oval. Complexion sanguine, and hair light brown, and soft, but, if in the last six degrees, his own term, it is more wiry and reddish. The disposition is brisk and cheerful, but fond of boasting, and very conceited. One who is fond of dress, effeminate in appearance, much attached to women, by whom he is also much beloved, and frequently ruined. Male sign in Scorpio. Produces a well-set form of middle stature, rather corpulent. Swarthy complexion, black curling hair, broad and plain face. The temper is very unsociable, and rash, they are generally revengeful, ungrateful, quarrelsome, and wicked, yet of good genius and ready apprehension, excelling in mystery, and male sign in Sagittarius. Denotes a tall person, with a well-proportioned body, compact and well-made, sanguine complexion, oval visage, a quick, penetrating eye, the mind is cheerful, merry, and jovial. But disposition hasty and passionate, high-minded, and lofty, courageous, loquacious, and fond of applause, on the whole, a good character. Male sign in Capricorn. Represents a mean or small stature, thin, lean body, little head, thin face, bad complexion, being sallow and obscure black, lank hair. An ingenious mind, witty, shrewd, and penetrating. Generally fortunate, and successful in his undertakings. Male sign in Aquarius. Gives a well-composed body, rather corpulent, and inclined to be tall, though frequently not above the middle size, fair or clear complexion, sandy hair. A turbulent disposition, and addicted to controversy, and not very fortunate in general. Male sign in Pisces. Represents a mean stature, rather short and fleshy, a bad complexion, far from handsome, a debauched look, light brown hair, sottish and stupid. A great lover of women, if in his own terms or those of, sly and artful, deceitful, idle, and worthless, not friendly to any one. NB. If male sign be in, or of, or with, the disposition is very evil, especially if they be in angles. When the person he describes is very fierce and violent. He is the giver of courage and resolution, which, if he be weak and afflicted, are very deficient. If male sign be in fiery signs, he is hasty and choleric. And there is generally observed to be a falling in of the cheeks, and a lightness of feature, with an angry look, in earthy signs, a sullen, dog temper, in airy signs, more free and obliging. In watery, sottish, dull, and stupid, unless he be well aspect by, or the sun in the twelve signs. In Aries. Describes a good stature, strong and well made, a good complexion, though not very clear. Light hair, flaxen or yellowish, and large eyes. The man is noble, valiant, and courageous, delighting in warlike actions and enterprise, he gains victory, is famous, and a terror to his enemies, and in Taurus. Gives a short, well set, rather ugly person, dusky complexion, brown hair, large broad face, wide mouth, and great nose. A confident, proud, and bold man, fond of opposition, proud of his physical strength, and one who generally is victorious. In Gemini. Represents a well-proportioned body, above the middle stature, sanguine complexion, brown hair. He is affable, courteous, and kind, not very fortunate, as he is so meek and mild-tempered, that he is controlled and imposed on by others. In Cancer. Gives a mean, ill-formed body, deformed in the face, with a very unhealthy aspect, the hair brown. A harmless, cheerful person, but indolent, and not fond of employment, one who spends his time in sports and pastimes, dancing, and, and is greatly addicted to women. In Leo. Gives a strong, well-proportioned body, and a very portly person. Sanguine complexion, light brown or yellowish hair, a full face, 
and large staring eyes, very prominent, there is generally a mark or scar on the face. A very just, upright, and honorable man, who scorns to do any meanness. Punctual, faithful to his friends, and magnanimous even to his enemies, in short, a right royal disposition, a very ambitious man withal, fond of rule and authority, and given to war and dominion, conquest, and in Virgo. Makes a person something tall of stature, and slender, but very well proportioned, good complexion, dark hair, and much of it, but not black. The mind and genius, cheerful, and fond of honest recreations, especially agreeable, convivial parties, and in Libra. Produces an upright, tall, and slender body, full eyes, oval face, ruddy complexion, light hair, and frequently a rash or pimples in the face. The mind is honorable, and disposition good. But the party is always unfortunate, especially in all matters of war or ambition. In Scorpio. Gives a remarkably square-built, full, fleshy person, broad face, cloudy complexion, dun or sunburnt, brown hair. The mind ingenious, but the temper rugged and overbearing, manners disagreeable, disposition ambitious, one who will not admit of an equal, they are fortunate upon the seas, or as surgeons, physicians, and in Sagittarius. Makes a tall, handsome, well-proportioned body, oval face, sanguine complexion, or rather olive-brown or sunburnt, light brown hair, but in the first eight degrees of the sign it is darker. One who is very lofty and proud-spirited, aiming at great things, austere and severe, and one who performs some honorable exploits, and often becomes ennobled, or receives titles, honorary distinctions, and in Capricorn. Represents a mean stature, ill-made, spare, thin body, oval face, sickly complexion, brown, soft hair, not curling, and if in the first six degrees of the sign, it is light brown. The party is just and honorable in his principles, a tolerably fair temper and gains love and friendship by his agreeable conversation, one who is very hasty at times, and much given to woman. In Aquarius. Describes a person of middle stature, well-made, corpulent body, round full face, clear complexion, and light brown hair, in the term of it is dark brown. The disposition tolerably good, free from malice or deceit, but yet vain, proud, desirous of bearing rule, and ostentatious. In Pi. Gives a stature rather short, body plump and fleshy, a round full face, and indifferent complexion. Light brown hair, in the first eight degrees of the sign it is flaxen, and very soft, the party is extremely partial to female society, very effeminate, fond of pleasures, and and though harmless to others, ruins himself by extravagance, debauchery, gaming, intemperance, feasting, and Venus in the Twelve Signs Female Sign in Aries Describes a middle stature, rather tall and slender, light hair, if in the term of, dark, good complexion, a pensive aspect, and usually a mark or scar in the face, often marked more or less with smallpox. According as female sign may be afflicted or not. They are generally unfortunate both to themselves and others, unless female sign have a or of. Female sign in Taurus. Gives a handsome person, though the stature is not great the body is extremely well made, plump, but not gross. And if female sign be well aspect, they are very handsome, the complexion is ruddy, but not fair, generally females are handsome brunettes, and have much the form and figure of the Venus de Medicis. The hair is generally brown, and, if female sign be in her own term, it is very soft and luxuriant, if in the term of, it is a shining black. The eyes are generally black, and very expressive. The temper is mild and winning, the disposition kind, humane, obliging, and they generally gain much respect from those with whom they converse, and are fortunate. Female sign in Gemini. Gives one above the middle height, slender, upright, and well-made body. The complexion clear and fair, with soft brown hair, frequently brown or hazel eyes. They are good-humored, loving, liberal, just and charitable, and rarely guilty of anything dishonorable. Female sign in Cancer. 
represents a short person, a fleshy body, round, pale, and sickly face, with light hair, and if the bee with female sign, and they in the ascendant, the face will be quite white and wan, and the hair very light colored. But if female sign be in the term of male sign, the hair may be reddish, and a tinge of color appear in the cheeks. They have generally small gray or greenish eyes. The disposition is idle and dull, they are fond of low company and vicious pleasures and pursuits. If it be a female of the poorer classes, she is a frequenter of spirit shops, and they are very fickle and timid, put the best side outwards, and seem to be in earnest when they are not, ever mutable and inconstant. Female sign in Leo Gives a person reasonably tall of stature, well-composed body, clear complexion, round face, full eye, freckled and fair skin, hair reddish, or if in the term of female sign, it may be flaxen. They are petulant and passionate, soon angry, and soon pleased again. Free, generous, sociable, and good-humored, but rather proud, and frequently indisposed, though not seriously. Female sign in Virgo. Shoes a tall, well-proportioned figure, oval face, dark hair, or, if in her own term, sad brown, and a dusky complexion. They are ingenious, eloquent, active, and clever, of an aspiring turn, but rarely successful in their pursuits. Generally unfortunate. Female sign in Libra. Describes an upright, tall, elegant person, extremely well made, with a genteel carriage. The face is oval, and rather beautiful, having pleasing smiles and beautiful dimples, but they are frequently freckled. The hair is brown and soft, but rather grows long than plentiful. They are kind, affectionate, and very obliging, and generally well beloved by all with whom they have any dealings. If female sign be in the ascendant, and there be no afflicting aspects, but Casta from Aquarius, the party, if a female, will be a perfect beauty. Female sign in Scorpio. Denotes a short, stout, well-set, corpulent body, broad face and dusky complexion, and dark or black hair, unless female sign be in the terms of male sign or female sign, one who has nothing very pleasant in the countenance. They are envious, debauched, and vicious. Given to contention, and if female sign be afflicted by or male sign, to very disgraceful actions, and if both and male sign afflict, and there be no assistance by or, they are possessed of very evil propensities. Female sign in Sagittarius. Represents a person rather tall than otherwise, well made, clear or sanguine complexion, fair, oval face, and brown hair. They are generous, spirited, aiming at no mean things, rather proud, passionate, yet, in general, good tempered, kind, and inoffensive. They delight in innocent recreations, and are, in short, very obliging, fortunate persons. Female sign in Capricorn. Describes a small sized person, short stature, a pale face, thin and sickly, dark hair, but if female sign be in her own term, a sad brown. They are generally persons who love their belly, fond of enjoyment, not fortunate, subject to sudden changes in life and strange catastrophes. Female sign in Aquarius. Gives a handsome, well formed person, clear complexion, rather corpulent or large body, brown hair, if she be in her own term, flaxen, a good disposition, quiet, affable, courteous, not at all inclined to vicious actions, peaceable. Obliging to all, fortunate in his affairs, and respected by his friends and acquaintance in general. Female sign in Pisces. Persona tes a middle stature, a fleshy plump body, a round full face, with a dimple in the chin, good complexion, between pale and ruddy. Good-humored, just, kind, mild and peaceable, ingenious, but somewhat unstable, yet moderately fortunate in the world. Mercury in the Twelve Signs In Aries Gives a mean stature, spare and thin body, oval face, light brown and curling hair, dull complexion. A mind rather ill-disposed, addicted to dispute, to lie, steal, and many tricks and unworthy actions, in short, a mere knave. In Taurus. Gives a middle-sized, corpulent, thick person, strong and well-set, swarthy sunburnt complexion, dark short and thick hair. 
He is idle, slothful, one who loves ease and gluttony, and who ruins himself among the female sex. In Gemini. Shoes a tall, upright, straight body, well-formed, brown hair, good complexion, and a very intelligent look. An ingenious pregnant fancy, a good orator, a cunning lawyer, or clever bookseller. One who perfectly understands his own interests, and, if female sign be not afflicted, one who is a subtle politician, not easily deluded by the most cunning knave he may encounter. In Cancer. Persona tes a low, short stature, or squab figure, an ill complexion. A thin sharp face, small eyes, sharp nose, dark hair. One who is given to drink, light-fingered, ill-natured, dishonest, and very deceitful and changeable, a very mean little wretch, if female sign be afflicted. In Leo. Gives a full large body, and good stature, dull, swarthy, sunburnt complexion, light brown hair, round face, full eyes, a broad or high nose. A hasty, proud, conceited, ambitious, boasting, and contentious troublesome character. In Virgo. Denotes a tall, slender, well-proportioned person, dark brown hair, or if be in the terms of or, black hair, not a clear complexion, a long visage, and austere countenance. A very witty, ingenious, talented mind. And if be free from affliction, a profound scholar or linguist, and capable of any undertaking which requires great ability. In Libra. Persona tes a tall body, well made, but not thin, light brown, smooth hair, a ruddy or sanguine complexion. A just, virtuous, prudent man, a lover and promoter of learning, and having great natural abilities, and many acquired accomplishments. In Scorpio. Gives a short, mean, stature, full and well-set but ill-made body, broad shoulders, swarthy, dark complexion, brown curling hair. Not any way elegant or pleasing, yet ingenious and studious. Very careful of his own interests, fond of the female sex, and partial to company in merry-making. In Sagittarius. Denotes a person of tall stature, well-formed, not corpulent, but rather large-boned and spare, an oval face, a large nose. And ruddy complexion. A man who is hasty but soon reconciled, rash in many things to his own injury, yet well disposed, striving after honorable things, but seldom attaining them, not very fortunate. In Capricorn. Gives a mean, small stature, often crooked make and bow-legged, a thin face and figure, dusky complexion, and brown hair. A very peevish, discontented, dejected, sickly, feeble person, yet active. One who is unfortunate to himself and disagreeable to others, owing to his suspicious nature and ill temper. In Aquarius. Shoes a person of middle height, rather fleshy and corpulent, a good complexion and clear skin, with brown hair and full face. An ingenious, obliging character, inclined to study, fond of arts and sciences, very inventive, and remarkable for his talent, as well as being a humane, kind, charitable person. In Pisces. Gives a short, squab, dumpy figure, though if in his own term or that of, rather thin, pale face, brown hair, sickly look, and very hairy body. A very peevish, repining, foppish person, addicted to wine and women. Very effeminate and contemptible. The moon in the twelve signs. In Aries. Describes a person of indifferent stature, rather fleshy or plump, round face, tolerably good complexion, light brown or flaxen hair. The mind is rash, angry, ambitious, and aspiring, often changing, and he undergoes various mutations in life, not often fortunate. In Taurus. Gives a strong, corpulent, well-set body, rather short, pretty good complexion, dark brown or black hair. A gentle, obliging, kind, sober, just, and honest man, one who gains esteem, is much respected, and attains preferment according to his situation in life. In Gemini. Describes a tall, well-formed, upright, comely person, brown hair, good complexion, between pale and sanguine. The mind is ingenious, yet crafty and subtle to excess. Not of the best disposition, 
nor very fortunate, unless other good testimonies by aspects of, or female sign concur. In Cancer. Represents a middle stature, well-proportioned, and fleshy person, around, full face, pale, dusky complexion, sad brown hair. The mind is flexible, given to change, a merry, easy, pleasant, disposition, very harmless and peaceable, fond of good company, one who is generally well-beloved, and fortunate in most affairs unsteady, but free from passion or rash actions. In Leo. Denotes a person above the middle size, well-proportioned, strong, and large-boned, sanguine complexion, light brown hair, large and prominent eyes, and full face. A lofty, proud, aspiring person, very ambitious, and desirous to bear rule. One who abhors servitude or dependence, and is generally an unfortunate person. In Virgo. Describes a rather tall person, dark brown or black hair, oval face, rather ruddy, but tolerably clear complexion. An ingenious, reserved, covetous, melancholy, unfortunate person, not in general very well disposed, and one who seldom performs any very commendable actions. In Libra. Gives a tall, well-composed body, with smooth, light brown hair, handsome and pleasant cheerful countenance, fine red and white complexion. They are merry, jocund, and pleasant, and much admired by the female sex, very fond of amusement. And, if a female, she is courted by numbers, but yet unfortunate, unless female sign, the dispositor, be very strong and well aspect, and. In Scorpio. Denotes a thick, short, and ill-shaped person, a fleshy obscure complexion, dark hair, often black, especially if be in the term of ore. They are sottish and vulgar, malicious, brutish, and treacherous. And if it be a female, she is generally infamous in her desires, and if be afflicted by the or of or male sign, she is openly scandalous. In Sagittarius. Represents a handsome and well-proportioned rather tall person. Oval face, sanguine complexion, rather bronzed, and bright brown or shining chestnut hair. The disposition is good, open and generous, but hasty and passionate, yet forgiving. One who aims at great things, is fortunate, and much respected by those with whom he associates. In Capricorn. Gives a person of low stature, a thin, small, weak body, bad health, and feeble, especially about the knees. The complexion bad, black hair, and small features, one who is inactive, dull, not ingenious, generally very debauched in his con. Ducked, and held in low esteem by his companions, and in Aquarius. Represents a middle-sized person, well-made, and rather corpulent, brown hair, clear skin, and sanguine complexion. They are ingenious, affable, courteous, and inoffensive. A lover of curious and scientific studies, having much invention, and a person rarely guilty of unworthy actions. In Pisces. Describes a person of a mean or low stature, but plump or fat, pale and bloated face, light brown hair, and sleepy eyes. One not inclined to action, unless of the worst kind, unfortunate both to himself and others, given to drink. N.B. If be well aspect, and in a good house, the disposition is much improved. Effects of the aspects between the significators. If be significator, he gives the carent inheritance of estates, and profit by means of agriculture, his disposition is extremely moral and grave. He may gain a fortune by merchandise, or, probably, by preaching. If be significator, the disposition is not so good, the carent seldom meets with much success in the world. He is very niggardly, and generally acquires property by some selfish and unusual means, though he seldom enjoys it like other persons. He generally lives hated by every one for his mean and deceitful ways, and dies in obscurity. If male sign be into the significator, and in aspect with, the carent is generally duped of his property, and dies a miserable death. Male sign. If be significator, the carent is of a rash, turbulent disposition, and generally very unfortunate. Very often engaged in some public calling of the lowest order, and frequently ends his days in prison. 
If male sign be significator, the disposition is equally bad, but not quite so rash, being more sly and cowardly. Sometimes he gains favor from elderly persons, who assist him with their property, which he generally loses in the end, and becomes very unfortunate, especially if the significators be under the earth. Signifies losses to the carent by fire, especially if they be in a fiery sign, or by men in power, who persecute him, and confine him within the walls of a prison for some contempt of the law, and he is seldom healthy or of long life. If be significator, the carent is generally very disagreeable, deceitful, mistrustful, and unfortunate, always losing his property by some speculation, which in the end often brings him to ruin. Particularly if the carent have anything to do with the government, or persons connected with the state. Female sign. Shoes gain to the carent by means of ladies, to a considerable extent. He is much attached to them, greatly addicted to pleasure, and very fortunate where females are concerned. If he be a man of property, he often wastes most of it by gaming or pleasure. If female sign be significator, the carent is very artful, sly, unfortunate, destitute of friends, often disappointed by death, and he loses considerably by persons older than himself, especially if he be in trade. If be significator, the carent is subtle and crafty, fond of researches into antiquity, one of much gravity and considerable learning, though not always of the most agreeable manners. If be significator, he is dull, suspicious, mean, cowardly, calculating, and covetous. Should he turn his attention to literature, he may gain some knowledge, although with great labor. And should he become an author, his writings may bring him into some disgrace. If be significator, the person is restless and unsettled in his purposes, and often changes his residence. He is not very fortunate, though he may sometimes benefit by the populace, and by the lower order of females. If be significator, he is poor, miserable, and dejected, of unpleasant manners, and sullen disposition. Extremely unfortunate, and uncommonly covetous, though possessing scarcely any property. With much suspicious caution, he frequently commits the most unaccountable errors in affairs of the greatest consequence. As, through excess of prudence, he is very likely to doubt and deliberate in the moment of action. Male sign. If be significator, the carent is bold, proud, and ambitious, fond of martial exploits and enterprises, a good soldier or surgeon. Though he may lose much by strife and contention, and sometimes receive wounds in quarrels. If male sign be significator, he is good, pious, and just, he is eminently successful in the law or the church, and often makes a fortune by those means. If be significator, the carent is weak, servile, and credulous, he incurs the displeasure of men in power, by whom he is much oppressed, and often ruined, he has bad health. And is generally a vain, loquacious character, indulging in fanciful speculations about religion, and other matters, for which he is totally unqualified. If be significator, the power of is so much destroyed by the power of, that he has but very little effect. Though the party will, in general, be very much given to religion, which, if be well dignified in other respects, and not ill aspect, will be sincere, otherwise it is fanatical or hypocritical. Female Sign If be significator, it promises the greatest happiness, the carent is highly favored by the female sex, by whose means he gains great advancement, he is rich, prosperous, and fortunate, very healthy, and greatly admired and respected. It shews great personal beauty. If female sign be significator, it denotes great beauty of person, unless female sign be in Scorpio or Capricorn, riches, honors, ecclesiastical preferment. The person so represented is truly virtuous, pious, kind and beneficent to all, with the greatest goodness of heart, and a disposition that will command universal love and esteem. If be significator, it denotes a person of great learning, a good lawyer or divine, of excellent abilities and much information. If be significator, he is mild, humane, religious, fond of literature. Possessing an elegant mind, and a gentle, engaging disposition, he is raised to eminence, and protected by powerful patrons, he accumulates great riches, and is, in general, 
extremely fortunate. If B significator, the person so represented is restless and changeable, and seldom sufficiently settled to procure much wealth. He is, on the whole, very fortunate, often gains considerably by marriage, and is a general favorite with the fair sex, he is a great traveler, and is eminently successful in maritime affairs and among seamen, shipping, and if be significator, he is fortunate in ecclesiastical affairs, or among mercantile men, magistrates, and he obtains great wealth, though he is liable to losses frequently by canting, hypocritical persons, who impose upon his natural kindness and generosity of disposition. He has, however, too much good fortune to be injured by those persons to any serious extent. Male sign. If male sign be significator, the K rent is in danger by fire, lightning, or infectious fevers. It has been said in this case, with great truth, he has the favor of kings and princes, and it may be their frowns too, to his utter undoing, he may rise hastily, but, perhaps, to a precipice. If be significator, the K rent is brave, but headstrong and violent, he will probably attain some considerable rank in the army or navy. But he will be frequently wounded, and most probably die in battle, or be killed by some accident, or fall a victim to some contagious fever. Male sign female sign. If male sign be significator, the K rent is kind and gentle upon the whole, though at times rather hasty. He is moderately fortunate, extremely fond of women, and not always very particular as to their respectability. If female sign be significator, he is wicked and debauched, a companion of prostitutes, from whom he generally receives great injury. A drunkard, frequently brawling in taverns or low public houses, though he may sometimes meet with good fortune, he will quickly dissipate whatever property he may possess in the company of the most worthless of mankind. Male Sign if male sign be significator, it represents the K rent as possessed of considerable ability, a skillful mechanic, or a good mathematician, one of an acute sarcastic wit. If he be in the army or navy, for which he is well qualified, he obtains great reputation for his bravery, and is distinguished still more for the policy of his measures. He is never very scrupulous as to the means he employs. And will pay but little respect to the persons or possessions of others, when he can gain any advantage by sacrificing them to his own interest. If be significator, he makes a cheat or swindler, a thief, robber, or treacherous miscreant. A frequenter of gaming houses, rash, furious, and bloodthirsty. And dot be any evil aspect of increases these evils, and a good aspect of, or female sign, will much diminish them. Male sign. If male sign be significator, it shews one of an unsettled life and temper, and a favorite of females, he is frequently a wandering adventurer, more remarkable for the variety of his fortune than his success or abilities. He is likely to die in a strange country. If be significator, he is a bold, enterprising character, frequently in great danger of a violent death, quarrelsome, and given to dueling, and he may be a good surgeon or soldier and is seldom noted for much humanity. If a female, she is extremely likely to be seduced. Female sign. If be significator, it denotes one of soft and effeminate manners, a pleasing address, a great admirer of the ladies. He is too much given to extravagance and dissipation. If female sign be significator, he is of short life, unfortunate, and oppressed, too sickly to make much exertion, very proud and extravagant. If be significator, it gives some ingenuity, but not much sound judgment. If be significator, he represents a person of mean and shallow abilities, one addicted to fraud and deception. Incapable of learning anything which requires memory or judgment, and extremely superstitious. He may succeed well in trade or business, but for study he is wholly unqualified. If be significator, it represents a restless and changeable person, who aims at great things, but seldom accomplishes them. If be significator, the K rent is extremely unfortunate, and generally sickly and unhappy, dejected, and oppressed by men in power. He is rash and violent, subject to burns and scalds, and has frequently some defect in the eyes. And if the happen near the Hyades, 
Pleiades, or Presby, he is likely to be nearly blind. If the bee applying, he is in danger of death, especially if it happen in the eighth house, or be lord of the eighth. But if be separating, the danger is not so great. Female sign. If female sign be significator, it represents one who is polite, mild, and courteous, fond of the elegant branches of literature, a pleasant companion, a favorite of females. And one of an excellent disposition. If be significator, he excels in any pursuit that requires taste, a good painter, an excellent poet or musician, of a very humane disposition, and of the most prepossessing appearance. N.B. It must be most carefully observed, whether these planets have any other familiarity at the same time, for should, or male sign be in, it will make a most remarkable difference. Indeed, this must be scrupulously attended to in all cases, but especially, where female sign, or may be significator. Female sign. If female sign be significator, it renders a man very mutable and uncertain. Often promising, through goodness of disposition, much more than he is capable of performing. If be significator, he is of an easy, happy, disposition, with little care beyond the enjoyment of the present moment. A great proficient in all elegant amusements, and of an easy and genteel address. If be significator, the native is possessed of great abilities, though generally very unsteady in his pursuits. He frequently travels in some literary capacity. If be significator, the effects are not very different, his intellectual powers are of the first order, he is much attached to learning, and gains great reputation by his abilities. Of the and aspects between the significators. Or. If be significator, it gives riches by means of agriculture, and he is of a sedate and religious disposition. If be significator, he is extremely grave, and frequently gains riches by legacies or mining concerns. Or male sign. If be significator, it increases the courage of the person so signified, and renders him more open in his resentment. If male sign be significator, he is prudent and cautious, bigot in religion, and, should other aspects befriend male sign, he may gain an estate. Or. If be significator, he is generous and noble, though somewhat austere in his behavior. If be significator, he is ostentatious, boastful, and conceited, he may be expected to gain by legacies, or to be successful as a farmer. Or female sign. If be significator, he is prodigal and extravagant, wasting his money among females. If female sign be significator, he is modest, shy, and retired in his manners, he gains the favor of elderly people, and sometimes inherits their property. Or. If be significator, it gives ingenuity and subtlety, though his talents are mostly employed to little purpose. If be significator, he is very cautious and prudent, and is addicted to the study of arts and sciences. Or. Of be significator, the carant is changeable, jealous, and mistrustful. If be significator, he is vain and conceited, mean in his actions, though without the excuse of rashness, as he does nothing without much deliberation. Or male sign. If be significator, it gives bravery, and the spirit of military adventure, he is a good soldier, surgeon, or chemist. If male sign be significator, he is noble, generous, and ambitious, and will rise rapidly in the army. Or. If be significator, it makes one extremely fortunate, and very noble and courageous in his disposition. If be significator, he gains money rapidly, is always respected, and possesses a most excellent disposition. Or female sign. If be significator, it causes beauty, love, riches, and real goodness of heart, this is the most fortunate aspect that can be formed. If female sign be significator, the person is virtuous, amiable, of a noble disposition, incapable of fraud or malice. Or. If be significator, it gives great learning, sound judgment, and excellent abilities. If be significator, he possesses solid sense, an open, generous disposition, and real good fortune. Or. If be significator, it makes a man very fortunate, 
beloved by females, and much respected by the poorer classes of society. If be significator, he is just and charitable, sincere in his friendships, and generous to the full extent of his means. Male sign or. If male sign be significator, it gives a very noble disposition, and great mind. It causes one to rise rapidly in the army, he are uncommonly successful in war, and will gain much by the patronage of men in power. If be significator, it confers great bravery, and a high spirit. He rises to grandeur by means of his courage and invincible military talents. Male sign or female sign. If male sign be significator, it causes lewdness and dissipation, his disposition is not radically bad, but he is extremely thoughtless and improvident. He may gain by females, for he seems to possess a fascinating influence, which he never fails to exert to the utmost with the female sex. If female sign be significator, he is handsome, but proud, rash, and inconsiderate. And neither remarkable for prudence nor principle. Male sign or. If male sign be significator, this aspect gives great acuteness, penetration, and learning, the carent, however, is crafty, rather hasty, and extremely confident. If be significator, he possesses great courage, is very ingenious, in any mechanical trade, a good engraver or mathematician, and will succeed in anything that requires presence of mind, acuteness, and ready wit. If receive any aspect of, he is extremely fitted to become a good astrologer, especially if assist. Male sign or. If male sign be significator, it makes one restless and changeable, servile and talkative. He travels much, and receives much assistance from females. If be significator, he is very passionate and changeable, with a high spirit and good abilities. Or. If be significator, it confers riches and honor. The carent is fortunate with women, and is much respected by the multitude. If be significator, he is proud and aspiring, he is generally successful, but his fortune is not permanent, unless both and be in fixed signs. Female sign or. If female sign be significator, this aspect gives ingenuity subtlety, and good nature. If be significator, the carent possesses a refined and accomplished mind, he is neat in his person, and elegant in his manners. A lover of music and the fine arts in general. Female sign or. If female sign be significator, it is a very fortunate aspect, it shews a person who is much assisted by female friends, and one who, though unstable, often obtains considerable property. If be significator, the carent is gentle, obliging, amiable, and genteel in his manners, and is much admired by females, whose condition in life depends on the strength or debility of female sign. Or. If be significator, the person signified is witty, ingenious, subtle, easily learning anything to which he applies, and frequently acquiring many sciences without any assistance. He is somewhat reserved, and a little melancholy, but, from his extensive knowledge, he is always a useful and sometimes a pleasant companion. If be significator, this is the most favorable aspect for learning or scientific speculation. The effects of the or aspects between the significators. Or. If be significator, it shews much trouble by lawyers or the clergy. If be significator, he is always wretched and miserable idle, unfortunate, and beggarly. Or male sign. If be significator, it is the aspect of cruelty and murder, and the person so signified is extremely unfortunate, he generally lives a most dejected life, and dies a violent death. If male sign be significator, the person shown by him is very malicious, treacherous, and bloodthirsty, one delighting in the most evil deeds, yet very cowardly, sly, and much addicted to suicide and secret revenge. Of a cruel complexion, in short, such a character as Don Miguel of Portugal. Or. If be significator, it is the aspect of infamy and contempt. The person is prodigal, ambitious, overbearing, hating control, very disagreeable in his manners, extremely unfortunate, subject to the frowns of persons in power, and often meets a violent death. If be significator, the person is cowardly, spiteful, treacherous, malicious, unfeeling, 
covetous, repining, always despising anything of kindness and humanity. One who generally leads a life of wretchedness, and frequently meets with a bad end, and sometimes dies in prison. Or female sign. If B significator, it shews dissipation, and the person leads a most detestable life, connected with the lowest order of prostitutes, by whom he is eventually brought to ruin and disgrace. If female sign be significator, the person is generally of an evil complexion, and not very handsome, very sly, artful, full of mischief, and much addicted to dissipation, though not suspected, mostly unfortunate. Or. If be significator, it indicates a thief, cheat, or swindler, a low, cunning fellow, sly, envious, treacherous, and malicious, one who is always planning some scheme to deceive his most intimate friends. Generally forming a bad opinion of every one, and not at all particular as to speaking the truth. If be significator, the person is very artful, always involved in strife and contention, and much given to vilify the character of others, by whom he is tormented with lawsuits. It also indicates pettifogging attorneys, who very seldom act honestly towards their clients. Or. If be significator, it shews a wandering, unsettled and changeable person, not of a genteel form, but one who is down-looking, and inclined to stoop forward, always very fretful, and appearing full of trouble. Not a good disposition, nor to be depended on. He seldom attains any high situation, but, if he does, he soon falls into disgrace again. If be significator, which in some measure she always is of the querent, the person is extremely unfortunate, always in trouble with the lower order of mankind, from whom he receives many injuries, he is mean, cowardly, and very dejected. Is rather unhealthy, seldom living a long life, and generally dying a miserable death. Or male sign. If be significator, it denotes violence, ingratitude, a furious temper, and danger of death by malignant fevers. If male sign be significator, it shews pride, ingratitude, insolence, and the hatred of the clergy on account of theological opinions. Or. If be significator, it gives arrogance, prodigality, and much vanity, with a great desire to be distinguished, which is but very rarely gratified. If be significator, the person represented wastes his property by riotous living in all kinds of extravagance. Or female sign. If be significator, it shews extravagance, dissipation, and all kinds of debauchery and intemperance. If female sign be significator, the person has many enemies among the clergy, and the legal profession, magistrates, and, and he is equally void of virtue and prudence. Or. If be significator, it gives trouble, contention, perplexities, lawsuits, and, in consequence, indigence. If be significator, the person is frequently persecuted for his singular religious opinions. His understanding is weak, and he is often involved in strife and contention. Or. If be significator, it shews one of many words, though of poor abilities. He is weak and foolish, and, if in a public capacity, is execrated by the multitude. If the he significator. He is injured by faithless friends and deceitful relatives, and his property is impoverished by hypocritical fanatics. Male sign or. If male sign be significator, it denotes a man of great ambition and violence, but his fortune is too evil to allow him to succeed. If the be significator, he is restrained by no principle of honor or gratitude. His affairs are always deranged, and he makes use of the most violent means to retrieve them. Such a one frequently becomes a footpad, murderer, or house weaker, and is either killed in some contest, or falls a victim to the laws of his country. Male sign or female sign. If male sign be significator, these aspects cause lust, excess, prodigality, disease, and injury by loose women, and complete waste of fortune. If female sign be significator, he is very treacherous, mischievous, base, and inconstant. Or if it be a female, she is a prostitute, or very shameless. Male sign or. If male sign be significator, it shews one of some ability, but his talents are applied to the most dishonorable purposes. If be significator, 
it denotes a thief or assassin. One whose most solemn protestations are not to be believed, who will desert his benefactors at their utmost need, he is violent, furious, contentious, and despised by everyone for his infamous life. Male sign or. If male sign be significator, the carent described by him is a fit companion for the lowest and most unprincipled of mankind, he is very unfortunate, and is probably a wandering vagabond, who travels over the earth without a friend or a home. If be significator, he is excessively abusive, malicious, and treacherous. He may travel into foreign countries as a sailor or soldier, amidst innumerable dangers and hardships, and die by pestilence, dysentery, or the sword. Or. If the be significator, the person suffers losses, trouble, and much anxiety. If be significator, he is obstinate and quarrelsome, he is exceedingly ambitious and prodigal and is sometimes marked in the face, or his eyes are affected, the latter is especially the case if be afflicted by male sign, or either or are with the nebulous stars. Female sign or. If female sign be significator, it shews a changeable, unsettled life, great troubles in marriage, and much ill fortune. If the be significator, it shews a dissolute, extravagant life, attended with indigence and poverty, and much trouble from females. Or. If significator, it no doubt gives some abilities, but such persons are too unsettled to apply very closely to any subject. They are continually shifting their situations, especially if be an immovable sign, nor are they very sincere in their professions of friendship, nor very scrupulous in the method by which they may attain their ends. If be significator, they have a defect in their utterance, have but little ability, except a kind of low cunning, which they apply to dishonest purposes. But as is acted on by every planet having an aspect to him, it will be necessary to observe each aspect, and allow for its influence. For if have a of, the of to will not be near southeast evil, though the person will be far from sensible, notwithstanding that they are tolerably honest and well-meaning. Observation The student must always remember, that the true character and condition of the person signified can only be correctly learned by noticing all the aspects the significator may receive, as well as observing the nature of the sign and house it is in. And the degree of strength or weakness it possesses, as well as those planets which aspect it. Thus, if the significator be male sign, and he receive the of, yet if be weak, and male sign have also a of, this benefic planet being strong, he may judge that the carent will suffer by the evil influence of, by receiving a severe wound in a duel. Or in honorable warfare. Whereas if, instead of the of, the of occurred, there would be little doubt that he would be killed by police officers, or die by the hand of the public executioner the latter especially. If was in the tenth house. List of fixed stars which may be considered in horror questions, with their approximate longitude, January 1st, 1835. These are the principal fixed stars, near the ecliptic, to which only the planets can approach. If the student require the places of the stars for the purpose of bringing them to the mid-heaven or ascendant in a nativity, he may learn their right ascension and declination in the nautical almanac for each year. And he may readily calculate their longitudes and latitudes therefrom by the rules we have given. N.B. The longitudes increase about 50 inch one-third each year, the latitudes do not vary. Rams following horn. Longitude, Taurus 5 degrees 21 foot. Latitude, 9 degrees 57 foot n. Nature, male sign. Magnitude, second. The Pleiades. Longitude, Taurus 26 55. Latitude, 431 n. Nature, male sign. Magnitude, fifth. The brightest of the seven stars. Longitude, Taurus 2750. Latitude, 42N. Nature, male sign. Magnitude, third. Oculus Taurus, or the bull's north eye. Longitude, Gemini 611. Latitude, 236S. Nature, female sign. Magnitude, third. Aldebaran, or the bull's south eye. Longitude, Gemini 731. 
Latitude, 529s. Nature, male sign. Magnitude, first. The bull's north horn. Longitude, Gemini 2017. Latitude, 522n. Nature, male sign. Magnitude, second. Bright foot of Gemini. Longitude, Cancer 646. Latitude, 648s. Nature, female sign. Magnitude, second. Castor. Longitude, Cancer 1748. Latitude, 104n. Nature, male sign female sign. Magnitude, first. Pollux. Longitude, Cancer 2059. Latitude, 640n. Nature, male sign. Magnitude, second. North Acellus. Longitude, Leo 445. Latitude, 310n. Nature, male sign. Magnitude, fourth. Presby, or the claw of the crab. Longitude, Leo 50. Latitude, 114n. Nature, male sign. Magnitude, nebulous. South Acellus. Longitude, Leo 626. Latitude, 04n. Nature, male sign. Magnitude, 4th. Hydra's heart. Longitude, Leo 1943. Latitude, 732s. Nature, female sign. Magnitude, 2nd. Silar Leo, the lion's heart. Longitude, Leo 2733. Latitude, 027n. Nature, male sign. Magnitude, 1st. Vendemiatrix. Longitude, Virgo 738. Latitude, 1015s. Nature, female sign. Magnitude, 3rd. Arista, the virgin spike. Longitude, Libra 2133. Latitude, 22s. Nature, female sign male sign. Magnitude, 1st. South scale. Longitude, Scorpio 1248. Latitude, 022n. Nature, female sign. Magnitude, 2nd. North scale. Longitude, Scorpio 170. Latitude, 846n. Nature, male sign. Magnitude, 2nd. Franz Scorpio. Longitude, Sagittarius 054. Latitude, 12n. Nature, female sign. Magnitude, 2nd. Antares, or the scorpion's heart. Longitude, Sagittarius 729. Latitude, 432s. Nature, male sign. Magnitude, 1st. Right knee of Ophiuchus. Longitude, Sagittarius 1541. Latitude, 718n. Nature, female sign. Magnitude, 3rd. Capricorn's tail. Longitude, Aquarius 2115. Latitude, 233s. Nature. Magnitude, 3rd. Schiet Pegasi. Longitude, Pisces 2629. Latitude, 17n. Nature. Magnitude, 2nd. Rules to find the zodiacal latitude and longitude of a fixed star, comet, planet, or the ANC. From the right ascension and declination. First. If the right ascension be less than 180 degrees, it is north. And if it be more than 180 degrees, it is south. 2d to the logarithm cotangent of the declination add the logarithm sine of the right ascension, measured from Aries or Libra. But if measured from Cancer or Capricorn, the logarithm cosine, the sum, minus 10 in the index, will be the log. Tangent of the angle A. 3d if the right ascension and declination be both north, or both south, add 23 degrees 28 foot to angle A, and it will give angle B. 
Fourth. If the right ascension and declination be one north and the other south, the difference between 23 degrees 28 foot and angle A will give angle B. Note if angle B exceed 90 degrees, the latitude will be of the contrary name to the declination. But if angle B be less than 90 degrees, the latitude will be of the same name as the declination. To find the longitude. To the arithmetical comp of the log. Sine of angle A, and the log. Sine of angle B, add the log. Kang. Of RA. From Aries or Libra, or the log. Cotang of RA from Cancer or Capricorn. The sum will be the log. Tang. Of the longitude from Aries or Libra, or the log. Cotang. Of the longitude from Cancer or Capricorn. To find the latitude. To the arithmetical comp of the log. Cosine of angle A, and the log. Cosine of angle B, add the log. Sine of the declination. The sum will be the log. Sine of the latitude. NB. The arithmetical complement of a logarithm is found by subtracting it from 10.00000. Example. The log. Sine of 13 degrees 10 foot is. 9.35752. 0.64248. Or it may be found with equal ease, by taking each figure, beginning at the left hand or index, from 9, except the last or right hand figure, which must be taken from 10. Thus, if from 9.99990, we take 9. 35752. It gives 0.64248. The object of this being to perform each problem by addition, in lieu of the lengthy process otherwise required. Example. Required the zodiacal longitude and latitude or Halley's Comet, at noon, on the October 18, 1835, Greenwich Mean Time. Comet's right ascension, 16H 25.31 equal in degrees to 246 degrees 19, which, being more than 180 degrees, is south. The declination is 0 degrees 35 foot north. Cotangent December 0 degrees 35 is equal to 11.99219. Sine RA from Libra 6619 is equal to 9.96179. Tang. Angle A equals 89.22 is equal to 11.95398. From angle A take, 23.28. It gives angle B. 6554. Then, for the longitude. To the sine angle A, arith. Comp. 0 0.00003. Add the sine angle B, 9.96039. And tang. R, from Libra, 66 degrees 19 foot equals 10.35791. Tang. Longitude from Libra. 6420 is equal to 10.31833. Take the long. Of Libra and Scorpio from this, 60. Zero. It leaves, Sagittarius 420, the longitude. Then, for the latitude. To the log. Cosine angle A, arith. Comp, 1.95650. Add the log. Cosine angle B, 9.61101. And log. Sine of the deck, 8.00779. It gives the log. Sine of the latitude 22 degrees 6 foot equals 9. 57530. As angle B is less than 90 degrees, the latitude is of the same name as the declination, which being north, the latitude is north also. Hence the comet will be, at mean noon, Greenwich time, on the 18th of October, 1835, in 4 degrees 20 foot, with 22 degrees 6 north latitude.